All right, thanks everyone for uh, being patient here. We might actually be still just another minute or two. Uh, for some reason, our YouTube um, version of today's event uh, is not broadcasting properly. So Jeffrey's just hitting the big reset button on that. Uh, I don't want to make you guys sit through my disclaimer twice or anything like that. So if you just bear with us for just one or two more minutes here, we should have everything up and running uh, and then we'll be good to go. Um, yeah, thanks again so much for being here and, and we'll get started very shortly. All right, Bobby, I think I was able to get it to go live. Okay. Are um, we good to go? Uh, give me just one second. I'm coming in there, uh, but I think we're ready to start. All right, everyone, thanks so much for bearing with us. Uh, of course, when something goes wrong, it happens right at the very last moment, but, oh, and I hear myself in the background, let me mute that. Okay, so we're good to go. Uh, good morning to all of you in the APAC region, and good evening to many of you uh, tuning in from around the world. Uh, today we have a really special event. We've, we were able to put together a lot of wonderful speakers, a lot of great partners from Metastock, a lot of fantastic traders, and they're all going to hit on different topics today. And to, it should be just a great learning experience for everyone. Uh, apologies if you join in later, found some confusing links there on YouTube. Uh, everyone hanging out in GoToWebinar, thanks so much for being with us as well. Uh, I'm Bobby Hiller. I'm going to be the host of today's event. Uh, we also have Jeff Gibby, thankfully, here as well. Uh, he's in the studio back there. He was able to get us fixed and up and running on the YouTube side. Uh, I know we're cutting into the time a little bit, so I'll go ahead and kind of jump into things here. Uh, just real quick, we do have to read through our disclaimer. 
So this demonstration, it's designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are, are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Um, so just to kind of kick things off here, I, I wanted to say, you know, we had Stocks and Commodities Magazine help to uh, sponsor this event, and we're really thankful for that. Uh, they have actually rated us, or their readers have rated Metastock as the number one analysis software uh, in the world for over 30 years in a row in our price category. So we just hit that uh, 30 year in a row mark, very proud of that achievement. Our more recent platform, the real-time platform has won that for over 10 or maybe even 11 years now uh, as well. Um, let's go ahead and kind of just jump over and hand things off to our first speaker. Uh, I don't want to cut into your time too much, Steve. If you have to go over just a little bit, that's fine. I can also speed up my portion at the end. Uh, but hi, Steve. Uh, Steve Bigelow. from uh, He is a, a partner of ours for many years now. He has one of our, the most successful systems that we offer in the Metastock platform. And we're, we're really glad to have you here with us today, Steve. Microphone, oh. now I'm unmuted, okay. Yep, there you go, okay, perfect. Um, thank you for the invite, Bobby and Jeff. Um, welcome everybody, I guess it's pretty early over where you're getting up, so I usually ask the first question, just so I know how much time to spend on each uh, chart. Uh, how many people have seen my presentations before? Obviously a Y for yes, and then for no, that would give me an idea of how much description to do on the. Uh, showing the signals. Well, nobody yet. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, we have some no's coming in on the YouTube side. Okay. Somebody saying they don't have any audio. That might be the problem. They can't hear that, what we're saying. I think That's... that could have been earlier. All right. Looks like we have also some had some users uh, that have seen me in the past as well, Steve. Okay. All right. I'll start Here, on I'll the make basics. A presenter. Oh, that's right. You don't even see my screen yet, right? Okay. Yep, they just see a picture of you that I have up. Um, All right. Show my screen. Show screen. I think it is this one. Did that come up? Yeah, All right. we see Metastock power patterns set up. That's it, okay, good. Perfect, well, I'll go ahead and hand it off to you from here, Steve. All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Steve Bigelow. I ran across candlesticks by mistake a little over three decades ago. Since then, I've written three books on how to use candlestick analysis. They're not difficult reads. Um, but the most important factor that I discovered through the years was out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals, there's only 12 that you really need to know. The rest of them don't occur often enough to spend mental time or energy trying to learn them. So as we're going along, if you have any questions, make sure you just type them in here. I'm watching the, the question box. So these 12 major signals, are the ones that if you just learn six basic bully signals and six basic berry signals, the uh, the benefit is that they ha these have been researched for 400 years by the Japanese rice traders. So not only have they shown us the visual signals, but they also explain what investor sentiment is that created those signals. Once you learn that, you've got kind of the same grasp of what moves prices as somebody that's been investing in the market for 50 years. So there's one basic rule. Prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's what the graphics, the candlestick signals do for us. So everything that is built into a candlestick analysis or a candlestick chart the Japanese rice traders just kind of applied very simple common sense. And basically, if you see a 
candlestick sell signal in the overbought condition, they're, they're uh, professing is the probabilities are pretty strong you're in a downtrend. And on my charts, as we go through this, I'll, there's the 50-day simple moving average. On some of the other charts, you'll see the 200-day simple moving average. The reason we have those on our charts is because every sing, every major money manager around the world uses those to make their decisions about their portfolio. We don't use them to make decisions. We use them to see what everybody else's decisions are at those levels. Um, we also have the T line. The T line is the most effective trend indicator when you're applying it with candlestick signals. The T line acts like a Fibonacci characteristic. And there's a very simple rule that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Now, the reason that is important is because of human nature. I learned this myself many years ago, that if I happened to have been lucky to be in a bullish trade, what was my biggest fear? Boy, I'd hate to have this go back as a loss and I'd sure look stupid. Now I know that as long as I don't see a sell signal and a close below the T line, I keep my emotions out of my decisions and follow what the trade's doing. So anytime I see a strong signal, in this case, there's your best friend signal, is one that we've identified, which is a doji, gap up, and a close above the T-line. How long do we hold this? Until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. <laughs> so there, there's one very high statistical probability. <coughs> Excuse me. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, the probabilities are extremely strong that you're now going to be in an uptrend. Same scenario on the downside. If you see candlestick sell signals and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. So there's a very simple philosophy on all this. If the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction showing what's going on in investor sentiment, and the T-line acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. When you combine those two, you've got an extremely powerful trend indicator uh, technique. The T-line is the eight exponential move and average. So I tell people, don't be scared to put this on your chart and see how it works. It works extremely well. Shoot, the first time I ever had sex, I was so scared. But then again, it was dark and I was all by myself. So anytime you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line, that tells you that uptrend is over. You wanna be taking profits. So if you're seeing an uptrend like this, you can see that it haven't been able to close this trade until there's your hanging man harami and a close below the t-line this is an extremely high probability that there's now been a change of investor sentiment the moving averages are the 50 is the blue line the uh let's see if i've got a better chart to show the 50-day moving average is the blue line the red line which isn't on here is the uh 200 day simple moving average Again, those because every everybody in the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about their portfolio. We are just being able to see what's happening at those levels, uh, what type of signals are occurring. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure these are all being recorded, TK. Now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, and the T line is your black line, your eight exponential moving average. I've also got probably the 34 EMA on here. Can't see it very well on this chart, but it acts fairly, fairly well. Now, the reason there's not a whole lot of stuff on my chart is because the most important factor 
is the signal itself and where is it occurring as far as in the overbought and oversold condition. So the simple logic of the candlestick rice traders were, if you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, you're probably seeing a reversal to the upside. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, you're probably seeing a reversal to the downside. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the overbought area, it doesn't mean anything. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the oversold area, it doesn't mean anything. It's where they occur in um, correlation to where they are in the trend. So we can identify some very high probability trade setups. For example, the best friend signal is a doji followed by a gap up and a close above the T-line. The reason we call that your best friend is not only is it gonna tell you with a very strong degree of probability the direction you're gonna move, but the magnitude of the move is gonna be fairly strong. Um, let's see, presentation was also open in another, okay. So whenever we see that doji gap up, that tells you after that day of indecision, which is the doji, and gapping it up, there's a strong expectation you're gonna be in a strong uptrend. Same scenario, whoops. Uh, if they gap it up through resistance levels above the T-line, you stay long until you see a sell signal. Now, I should have mentioned there's a caveat to the T-line rule. The caveat is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's gonna come back and test it. So if you're in the overbought condition and you start seeing prices move too far, too fast away from the T-line, start being prepared for candlestick sell signals so you can start taking your profits. Everything built into a candlestick chart is just mere common sense. If you're in a downtrend, notice how you have a bearish best friend and look where it failed, right smack dab at the 50 day moving average. What did this tell us? This downtrend was still in progress. So I guess your EML today did a bullish best friend gap up. And what is our expectations after seeing a best friend signal? More upside. So what would be the trading strategy if you were doing your scans tonight and you found this bullish best friend signal? You know that if it starts opening positive and trading positive on Monday, you can be buying because this tells you there's been a very strong move to the upside. So anytime you see that best friend signal, like in your LTR, this is what you should be expecting more upside, a steady uptrend. So this is not rocket science. The Japanese rice traders over the last 400 years have identified the strong signals and patterns and told us exactly, or illustrated exactly, what the probabilities are based upon human nature of the next price move after that. So there's also the J-hooks. The J-hooks is an uptrend, a pullback, and then the next move, that J-hook pattern. So tells you that the, the profit taking's over, and this is where the, the, uh, oh, the T-line becomes very, uh, in, you know, I wanna say, relevant, that if this was your wave one, this is your wave two, there's a very simple measuring device. Wave three is usually gonna be the same magnitude as wave two. I'm sorry, wave one. So that means if I'm trading stock or options, I can put on specific strategies where I might be buying calls here and it's moving up to our expected target, I might be doing spreads to enhance that uh, option trade. So this is where the high probability entry levels are. You can see on this J hook, the T line was the relevant factor that they really couldn't close it below the T line and it started back up. So if we knew wave one, wave two, we could be buying in here. This is a doji sandwich. A doji sandwich is a very high probability uh, uh, trade result as far as human nature, a bullish candle, then a doji. And then we have a doji rule. 
The doji rule is simple. It's the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if this opened positive the next day, even if you're a day, no, I shouldn't say even if you're a day trader, especially if you're a day trader, you could be buying immediately because you know the probabilities are that this candle right here is gonna be the same magnitude as this candle right here. As a swing trader, you know, that's the beginning of your J-hook pattern. So what are we watching for the next uh, uh, indication? We wanna see whether it fails right here. If it failed right here with a sell signal, it told us we have a double top. If it goes through, it tells us wave three is now in progress. Again, this is all based upon human nature. Look how our wave one started with a best friend signal. There was our profit taking sell signals. There's your pullback. Um, and this is your kicker signal. Notice how it opened here and closed here. The next day they gapped it up and opened it above the previous day's open and went the other direction. That, that's one of your strongest reversal signals. And look where it was occurring. So if this is wave one, this is wave two, this is telling you the profit taking is over, wave three is about to start. Where do you think the next target's gonna be? About the same magnitude as this, meaning get a little bit more diligent as far as watching what type of signals uh, uh, occur at the, at the next resistance level that everybody else is watching. Best friend signal, J-hook pattern, and notice what they couldn't do. When the profit taking was over, they still couldn't close it below the T-line. That told us this was wave three on the next move. Now we also have what we call a J-hook plus. A J-hook plus is even more defined. You can see where they stopped selling it, right here at a level that everybody else could see, the 50-day moving average. Or, on this one, where they came up through the resistance level, the 50, and then they did a morning star signal bouncing right off the 50-day uh, moving average. What did this tell us immediately? They weren't going to come back down through the 50. What was our next target? Wave one, wave three up here. So again, human nature works the same way time after time. So I tell people there's a lot of technical analysis or fundamental research that tells you what could be happening, the aspect of candlestick signals is it's telling you exactly what is happening. So if we think this could be a support level, we could see immediately that it was acting as a support level. So even if we missed this move right here, we can now make a calculation that this is our next move. We could be buying options, spreads, anything that would take advantage of knowing what that next price move will be. So the J-Hook Plus, as we can see right now in Intel, came right up through the 50, pulled right smack dab to the 50, did an inverted hammer, which is one of the 12 major signals, and started trading back up. Where was the first logical target? Right here at the, uh, the 200. Now, not only was this a J-Hook Plus, because you could see it was more obvious, or it was obvious that it was supporting right off the 50, but now your next pattern is what we call a bobble breakout, which is a J-hook pattern that comes up and hits a resistance level, as we can see the 50 was here, pulls back to the T-line, but then when it comes back up through, we can see that's a J-hook pattern. So if you took the 50 out of here, you'd still have a J-hook pattern. But the fact that you have a 50 right there, where we can see where they're backing it off, when they come back up through, we can see that's a J-hook pattern, number one. But what is everybody else watching? They're waiting to see whether they can get up through the 50. And when it gets through, that's where you start getting that next ex explosive move. The identification of the J-hook pattern is just helps us to enter trades right here knowing we have an extremely high probability trade setup. Bobble breakout, bobble breakout, or here we have a bobble breakout, here we have the uh, uh, J-hook plus. So all this 
price movement is pretty well identified by based upon the candlestick signals that we're identifying and then adding it to the analysis of what the uh, what the pattern is doing so what the combination of candlestick signals do is give you high probability pattern breakout confirmation what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A fry pan bottom looks like a fry pan bottom. That's how why the Japanese rice traders named it that. What do we expect coming out of, of this? A strong price move. So if you can see this visual setup, where do you think the breakout is going to be? Somewhere right in here where the pattern started. And then notice how the additional confirmation that not only did you have a best friend that gapped up through the resistance level, of the 50 that everybody else is watching, you can see it was breaking out of this, this pattern. Now there's a difference between where your stochastics are. You're looking for candlestick buy signals when stochastics are in the oversold area. You're usually seeing a pattern breakout when your stochastics are already up in the overbought area. So what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? Strong price moves. But our rhetorical question is, do we always get in big moves like this coming out of a pattern? The answer is no, but it's putting us in much higher probabilities of being in this type of move, knowing what the, the uh, pattern setup is doing. So these patterns are occurring every single day. A couple of days ago, uh, Electronic Arts, you can see the fry pan bottom, and then you could see where the breakout level was, right about where the pattern started, and they gapped up through that level. Now, what does that tell you logically about human nature or investor sentiment? Everybody's watching to see if they can get through this level. We could see it was building up. So what do we expect coming off of this price move? Still a lot more upside potential. So everything that you can identify on a candlestick chart is just common sense put into a graphic depiction. So the fry pan bottom has expected results, big moves to the upside. A dumpling top is the same, but in a bearish direction. But if you see this rounding top and you're trading below the T line, what do we know about human nature? The more things sell off, more panicky they get. And that's where you start identifying good strong price moves to the downside. So it's not that we're showing things. I know every single one of you through the years have gotten spam emails about somebody telling you how they've got the new secret on how to make money in the stock market. So you just have to pay them to uh, learn what their secrets are. Candlestick analysis is completely different. There isn't any secrets in candlestick analysis. It's all the graphics of what human nature normally does, uh, whether it was three years ago, 30 years ago, three centuries ago. Human nature works the same way time after time. So the proven results are basically that anytime you see a strong candlestick reversal signal, like a kicker signal, opens here, closes here, the next day they gap it up. So the gap is already built into the signal and they go the opposite direction. That tells you there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment, which is usually followed by a very strong price move. I think you're seeing that uh, uh, just recently on PLS where it did a kicker signal. And what did that kicker signal also tell us? It told us this downtrend was over. Now you probably should be trading on the bullish side. Whoops, missed one. So when we see something like this, what is the, what is most people's uh, trading strategy or their fear factor? boy, I don't want to buy a stock that's already up 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30%. Well, if we know what the signal is, we know we can be buying. How do we know whether we should be buying here or here or here? 
Well, because candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, they work just as effectively on a one minute, five minute, 10 minute combination, chart combination, as they do on a daily, weekly, or monthly combination, depending on your time frame. I'm a swing trader, so I'm using the daily charts, but sometimes I day trade during the day where I might be day trading hogs, cattle, gold, uh, crude oil. And I'll use the 10 minute chart in combination with the five minute chart. They all work exactly the same way. So if I'm thinking, man, I see a breakout, should I be buying here or is this, they're gonna take it up and pull it right back? Well, you flip to your 10 minute chart. Might be buying right here, might be buying right here, might be buying right here. Whoops, wouldn't be buying here, wouldn't be buying here. Well, might be buying here again. Again, this is your 10 minute chart. So as this is moving up to the end of the day, what's it telling you about your daily chart? It's gonna be closing up as a big candle. The bulls are still there. So if you see a big breakout like this, and in our chat room, we got people who say, well, I got in, but man, I didn't get out in time. Same scenario. The candlestick signals and patterns work just as well on a 10 minute chart as they do a daily, weekly, or monthly. So if I'm buying here, if I'm buying here, I'm buying here, remember what our T line rule was. The further away you get from the T line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So when this starts showing indecision up here, what are we getting ready to do? We're starting to take profits because where do you think the next likely target's gonna be? Back here to the T-line. Now, what do we do once it gets back to the T-line? Well, if it does a J-hook pattern or something like that, we can always get back in. But until it does, what's that tell us about our daily chart? Oops, they're not buying, they're not buying, they're not buying. All right, so we got out near the, near the right time. Same scenario on a chart like this. There's your best friend kicker type gap up. Where would we be buying? And then, man, if we bought up here, we got clobbered. However, your 10 minute chart said, well, we could be buying here, buying here, buying here. Well, we wouldn't be buying here. Should we be taking profits? Well, we could be taking profits if we're day trading. But then look what's happening. There's your fry pan bottom set up. And where is it occurring? Right smack dab on your 10 minute uh, T line. We could be buying here, buying here. Now what's happening? Well, same scenario. Look how far we've, away we've moved from the T line. And where would we be trading on the daily chart? We're trading way up here. And what's the daily chart telling us about where we are compared to the uh, T line? The T line's way down here. So if we're getting in here or getting in here or getting in here, we're definitely back out here because just simple logic is that if you see a candlestick signal and sell signal in the overbought area and you're that far away from the T line, close it out. The bears are taking control. Will they crash like that? I have no idea. I just want to be out of the trade so I can go on to the next one. Let's see. So sector breakouts. We've been recommending the artificial intelligent area now for quite a while. Not because we're any brilliant analysts, it's because everybody else was talking about it. And when they started talking about it, we could see what was happening in the price movement. You can see this fry pan bottom. So what did that tell us as far as our probability factor? Well, more than likely, it could be a big price move based upon the fry pan bottom. And sure enough, we started making some very huge profits on this trade. Now there's a couple signals in this uptrend. 
first of all, you got the fry pan bottom. Then you've kind of got your doji sandwich that broke out through the 200. Then you've got a trend kicker signal. Now remember, we said the trend kicker signal or the kicker signal is one of your strongest signals. Notice how this one opened here and closed here. The next day they gapped it up again and started take, taking it pro, uh, positive. What did that tell us about investor sentiment? They're still continuing this fry pan bottom. How do you know if an explosive candle to the upside after a gap up uh, that is the peak of the move? Because you can identify where you are in the pattern, where you are in stochastics. Now, we have a training video that shows you that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a gap up in the oversold area, that's a pretty good indication that the bulls are coming in with great enthusiasm. If you see a gap up in the overbought condition, that tells you that's probably exhaustion. The simple philosophy the Japanese rice traders use is where do most people buy? They buy at the or exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Now, the reason I became so good at candlesticks was I was the worst investor in the world. I was the one panic selling at the bottom. And every time I would sell, and I was even a stockbroker for eight years. And every time we would sell out a position, I would say, how come as soon as we sold, the thing turned around and headed right back up? Or, man, everything looks good. I'm gonna be buying, it's gapping up here in the overbought area, it must be going somewhere. And then I would say, how come as soon as we bought it, turned around and went the other way? That is all graphic depiction of what the smart money is doing. When everybody's panic selling at the bottom and you see a candlestick potential reversal signal, you've got to ask yourself, who's buying down here? Or when everybody else is buying exuberantly that far away from the T-line, you've got to be asking yourself, all right, who's selling up here if everything's so great? So you can see what happens here in a price move. You had a doji sandwich breakout continuing the fry pan bottom breakout, a trend kicker signal, and then look where it started to move. Look how far away you are from the T-line, and you did a doji. So when it was trading up here, and you were that far away from the T-line, and it had just gone from 10 to, what was that, 30 in a matter of weeks, what do you think the smart money is going to start doing? They're going to start taking profits. That's gives us a little bit of a head start knowing that if they're that far away from the T-line, that's a good time to start watching for sell signals on the 10 minute chart. Well, notice what happens to human nature. Big price move and then they find an equilibrium and look what it did for the next, what, four, six, eight weeks. You can see the channel. So right down here at the bottom of the channel, Here's your morning star signal. There's where it's starting coming back up. So when we started buying again, it was on a calculated price move. If it came back up to this level and we saw a sell signal, yeah, that meant that channel, the top of the channel is working, take profits, we'll get back out. Or if they got back up to this level and they went through, now what can we calculate? Well, if this is wave one, and this is wave two, wave three is now potentially taking you into the $55 area. Now, again, this is not rocket science. Have no idea. Well, we know some of the background of this company. This is C3.ai, that they're getting very good business. And remember, when they reach, reach equilibrium like this, that's because there's people out there saying, oh, no, maybe this isn't as good or there's reasons for sellers. But then when all those reasons disappear, the buyers come back in for wave three. We saw that in, oh, about a year ago. The electric vehicle stocks just skyrocketed because everybody knew that the electric vehicle sector is going to be growing. And we made huge profits on. Uh, those stocks, but after they went way up, 
now what kind of started climbing into the uh, analysis? Well, some of the biggies were getting into electric vehicles, Ford, uh, GM, uh, Volkswagen, which meant here are companies getting into the electric vehicle sector that already had big superstructures for manufacturing, marketing, and everything else. So maybe a, a owning the electric vehicle sector wasn't as as a, uh, bountiful at that point. But we didn't have to figure that out. We could figure out where the profit taking was occurring, when it was time to take profits, and when to start getting back into the trade. Let's see where we go from here. All right, so today, we knew that they were coming back into the uh, artificial intelligence area with great enthusiasm. We've been watching SOUN, one of the artificial intelligence uh, stocks, and it had a big price move up, I think about 33%. We knew to start watching it and we were starting to add to it because we start, saw that the downtrend was over and you were back up above the T-line. Now, once again, do you always get big, huge moves like this? Definitely not. But you're putting yourself in situations where the probabilities are extremely strong that you're going to be in the right place at the right time. Now, remember, anything on Wall Street or in the investment area, if it doesn't work, it disappears pretty quick. Candlestick analysis has been around for 400 years. A lot of people don't know about it or haven't paid attention to it just because nobody investigated. About 30 some odd years ago, I came across it by accident. And the first elements that I had discovered in the candlestick charts was, this is just common sense put into a graphic depiction. And when I started reading where, where do most people sell, they panic sell at the bottom, thought, well, that's me. All I have to do is turn my trading around 180 degrees. Where do most people buy? They start buying when everything's enthusiastic. So I started learning that I want to be where the smart money is. So when we see something like today, this is GA or GFAI, it broke out to the upside. Now, there's a the old fear factor that boy, I don't want to be chasing after something. Well, the candlestick charts tell you exactly what's happening. Notice how this traded flat for three or four weeks, indecision. What did this candle tell us? They've changed that indecision. They're now, there's a whole new uh, investor sentiment built into this price move. So do I want to be chasing after this? Well, if I saw this moving today, what was my simple practice? Go to the 10 minute chart. It could be buying here, could be buying here, could be buying here. No, nah, not buying, not buying. Well, now they're taking it back up. I could be buying here, 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 and look what they did by the end of the day. They were trading way at the top end of the trading range. So I always tell people, you do not have to overanalyze candlestick analysis. What most people uh, kind of disregard or ignore is that candlestick analysis is not conjecture. It's not an estimate. It is the actual decision-making process of the bulls and the bears. Now, if you already have a trading method that works pretty well, if you overlay candlesticks on top of it, you're gonna get a much more clear indication of what's going on in investor sentiment. So I always end up telling about the, uh, oh, that's what I want to do, and say that this is the, the thing that you can do to add on to whatever your trading uh, technique is so far, or because we've got some very good speakers coming up uh, later, if you like what their trading philosophy is or their technique is, you can overlay candlesticks on top of it and help improve that decision-making decision processes. So 
I use candlestick analysis because I'm very con convinced that it's shown you the actual price, and then anything else is a confirming indicator. Well, if you're learning candlestick analysis and you have a good trading technique, overlay candlesticks on it and see if it starts to con confirm uh, what your technique is telling you. So I tell people you don't have to overanalyze. It's like the uh, the lady that brings her parakeet into the the vet and lays it down on the table and she says, can you help my parakeet? He's been my best friend for years, um, but something's wrong with him. He goes, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh no, isn't there something, please? He's been my best friend. I don't know what I would do without him. And he goes, all right. So he goes to the back of his clinic, comes back in with a big cat, lays a cat next to the uh, bird on the table. The bird sniffs the, the, or the cat sniffs the bird, looks up at the, uh, Vet and shakes his head and goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no, are you sure? Isn't there something else? Because he's been such a good friend, isn't there? He goes, all right. So he goes back to the end of back of his clinic, comes back in with a great big Labrador retriever. The Labrador comes in, puts its paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, kind of looks up at the, the vet and says, uh, uh, and shakes his head and he goes, Ma'am, I'm sorry, your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. So they go out to the front desk. He goes, all right, well, that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet's dead? He goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for 18 bucks. But then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So the nice thing about candlestick analysis is you don't have to overanalyze. And you've got some very good techniques with Metastock where you can identify the signals as they're setting up and uh, which ones are about in the breakout mode. So I guess with that, is there any questions before I uh, flip it off to Bobby or uh, uh, Jeff to explain how the Metastock scanning softwares can identify the patterns and where, so you can visually recognize when that breakout is about to occur. Yeah. Do you have any questions coming from YouTube, Jeff? I'm not seeing any extra questions on YouTube. Okay. All right. Are you going to be showing how they can use the uh, uh, the the software to? Identify the candlestick patterns, Bobby. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So I have a a couple of slides put together here uh, to show on the candle profit system. I'll go ahead and come online here. Duh. Yeah, I would like to say thanks again to you, Steve, for coming on and. Um, for going through some of those setups and, and for speaking today. You always do such a fantastic job and you're really entertaining to uh, listen to as well. I'd say I'm seeing some questions. So the moving averages are eight, yeah, the eight exponential is your T line, the 34 exponential, which works reasonably well, and then the 50 and the 200 are simple moving averages. And basically what that allows you to do is see what everybody else's decisions are at those levels. Thank you, Patricia. When you gave a gap up, why do you think it will not backfill? If you see a candlestick buy signal and an oversold in an oversold condition and it gaps up, confirming that signal, it may come back and backfill it. But it may be three weeks from now, three months from now, three years from now. And we're not interested in that. We're uh, interested in what is the price move gonna do right now? So for the next four weeks, you might have a strong uptrend. After that, markets may change and it comes back down and eventually fills that gap, but we're not worried about that. We're off uh, doing, or off on something else. 
what is the master filter for your buy or sell decision like a 200? The master filter is the signals themselves. If you take everything off your charts and just use the candlestick signals, which is probably exactly what the Japanese rice traders did, they didn't have probably the, uh, I don't know if they did or not, have the ability to do the moving averages. They were buying and selling on just what the signals were telling them and where they were in a trend. So you got to remember, the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy trading candlestick signals. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse in Japan for decades, if not centuries. And they did it with the most boringest commodity in the world, rice. So we get a lot of people asking, well, can this be used for Forex? Can it be used for option trading? Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling something during a specific time frame. It doesn't matter what it is. All it's telling you is showing you is what is going on in investor sentiment in that trading entity. No, the moving averages, the charts look exactly as the same on a one minute, five minute, 10 minute as they do on a daily, weekly, or monthly. All right. Fantastic. That's, yep. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. I guess it's pretty early over there where most of you are getting up. So enjoy the day. You're you're going to see a lot of good speakers today. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, take over here. All right. I believe you guys should be able to see my screen. I have Metastock pulled up here. Uh, so I just wanted to show everyone really quick kind of what uh, we've done with Steve. We've gone ahead and taken uh, multiple uh, different patterns that uh, he's identified and we've coded them into Metastock. And right now I have uh, the candle profit system template applied to a chart here. Uh, this is just a chart of SPY, but really this would work on any chart for any region. Uh, we have a lot of users uh, all over the world uh, utilizing his system uh, and these different candle pattern uh, candle patterns for their analysis. So one of the really nice things about uh, the system we've created with Steve inside of Metastock is you don't have to remember all of the different candlesticks yourself and exactly how they all work. Uh, because once you've applied your, our template or our expert advisor, it's gonna put those signals right on your chart and kind of explain them to you as you can see here uh, on the screen. So right here, we have a bullish engulfing, uh, we have a bobble pattern, the left right bearish combo, uh, here's a doji candle right here. Uh, and we can actually kind of go a step further with this as well. Uh, maybe you can't remember all these different patterns because there's over 30 of them built in. Well, if you turn on our expert commentary, which is what you'll see right here on the right hand side, and I just clicked above uh, this example right here for the bobble pattern, and that's gonna tell you exactly what you're looking at there on your chart. So the bobble pattern is an extremely high profit pattern setup. It is essentially the J-hook pattern, which you heard Steve talk about a lot, uh, with easy to identify added criteria. Uh, common resistance levels are utilized and the T-line acts as a support. So basically, I won't read through the whole thing, but if you go through this, it'll tell you, you know, what to do with this signal, how to uh, often trade with these different signals that are showing up in your chart. And then there's other steps uh, that you can utilize as well. Um, just to, to show you a couple of things here too, uh, maybe I'll actually go in and make sure that the advisor is attached. Oops. I just wanna show you guys, you can also go in and see the list of all the different symbols. So these are all the different patterns that it's identifying uh, with the Candle Profit System by Steve Piglow. And you can turn these off or on. Maybe you don't wanna look at for all the different patterns, maybe you do. Uh, so there are customization options available in here as well for you. And to take this another step further, one of my favorite 
uh, things about Metastock is our Metastock Explorer. And of course, we had to incorporate the candle profit system into this as well. So if I actually just type it CPS uh, in right here, you'll see it lists all these different scans. So we have the CPS major patterns. And if I highlight over that, this will tell you. Um, if I was to run this exploration, it's going to identify all the major patterns, which are the doji, the bullish and golfing, bearish and golfing, hammer, hanging man, um, et cetera. So it's really easy to just select the different patterns that you want here. And then you can come down to our instrument list. Um, and we have hundreds of thousands of securities for you guys to go through. You don't have to have them all activated, uh, but you could come in here and find, say, your region. So if I go into the public online data list, uh, right now it's actually set to just show the Americas, but you can turn on like the Asia Pacific and other regions and then just quickly run a scan across uh, whatever it is that you want to trade or whatever you might want to look for different candlestick patterns on. Is it, It's as simple as selecting the explorations you want up here. And then you can come down here. Maybe you want to run the scan on the top world indices. Uh, this is set to load. 1,250 records, that's about five years worth of data. It's as easy as clicking start right there. And now you'll see it's running these three scans and you'll see just how fast that is too. The major patterns are done. Here's the power signals, the price patterns. And now what I can do is come down in here uh, and sort. Sometimes you're not gonna get signals. That's actually a good thing about this is it takes away um, the all the different securities that don't have symbols that are generating so you're not wasting your time flipping through all these charts uh, looking for something um, that you don't really care to see i actually have my filters set differently here so it's showing them all but this makes it really easy to just go in and identify things that are giving you the different signal today and then uh so, sorry guys i know that i am moving a little bit fast here just because we got started a few minutes late um, so I, I just wanted to show you this, and then let me actually jump back into my slides so that I know that I'm hitting all the important topics for you guys. So with the candle profit system here, let's go ahead and start this back up. The CPS 2.0, as we call it. Uh, here's a bigger layout here of the different patterns that are identified uh, with it. You have price patterns, the doji dynamite, power signals, and the famous J-hook patterns as well. Uh, not only do you have the single bar signals, uh, which a lot of these were updated uh, or added in our newest version, the 2.0, but we also have multi-day patterns uh, with the candle profit system too. You get six of those different explorations. Uh, you have the expert advisor, which puts those signals on your charts. You have multiple different layouts to work from as well. Um, and 36 different patterns. So it's a very extensive system that we've added into Metastock. It's actually been our number one seller uh, for the last couple of years in a row now. So we're always happy to have Steve on and have him talk. We think he has a great system and we're so glad to have it in Metastock. Uh, and normally, if you wanted to purchase this system to make your trading a lot easier, to make identifying those patterns as easy as clicking a few buttons, it would be a $499 cost. Uh, however, with today's summit special, uh, Steve was kind enough to let us go ahead and discount that down. It would be just a one-time cost of $3.99 to buy it outright. Uh, if you're not already a user of Metastock, you can uh, get a trial of Metastock, or we have some promotions running on that too. Uh, if you have more questions about it, or maybe you want to give it a try, I recommend heading into our chat room where we have uh, people waiting to speak with you and answer your questions at metastock.com forward slash sales chat, uh, and they can take care of you there. Um, in the States, you can also call 800-882-3070, or for anyone else, plus 1-801-506-2000. And with that being said, I also wanted to let you guys know we're doing another kind of bigger offer today where we've bundled all the different speakers trading systems plus a little bit of extra stuff and discounted them even further. So you can get Bigelow's Candle Profit system and some of the upcoming speakers systems as well, like Go No Go, the Power Bundle 360, uh, three months of premium subscription training at Learn Metastock, Unleash the Power of Metastock, all of these services that you see on the screen, normally you're coming up on almost $4,000 to get it all, $3,885. But with today's uh, summit promotion, 
we're offering that for just $1,946. So you're saving almost 50% on all of these different trading systems when you buy them in a bundle. Uh, and you can take advantage of that, of that offer in our chat room, the metastock.com slash sales chat, or we put together a web page too, metastock.com forward slash APAC hyphen deal. Uh, you can see those up on your screen. Uh, and we'll be you know, showing this to you guys throughout today because we do, of course, have these other presenters that are going to showcase their systems as well. I just wanted you to all be aware of that. Uh, moving on, I just want to give a real quick shout out to some of our sponsors. We have the CMT Association, uh, which is often helping uh, promoting our systems. And a lot of our speakers are certi certified with CMT as well. Uh, uh, speaking of, we actually have Alex Cole is who, who is going to be speaking for us next. Um, let me see here. It looks like he is in, oops, let me, sorry, click back here. Uh, it looks like you're in GoToWebinar with us, Alex. Hey, thanks so much, you know, for joining us today. Sorry that I'm cutting into your time here by just a couple of minutes, uh, but we're really excited to have you here. Uh, and so, yeah, thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Um, always look forward to getting on the phone with you guys. and. Uh, different slightly different time than usual but uh, happy to be here yeah great thanks uh, i know it is pretty late for you probably about a 12 hour difference from most of our attendees today but we know that uh, you've often showcased this system all over the world and we have a lot of our international users um who follow you and and uh like what you have to say and we've always got great feedback so i'm excited to have you with us here today and I guess with that being said, you know, I think I'll go ahead and make you the presenter and pass things over to you. All right. Thanks so much, Bobby. My pleasure. I think I might have made myself the presenter. I don't know if that. Uh, oh. Let me let me try and show my screen real quick. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Perfect. No, that makes my job easier. <laughs> Here we go. Um, okay. You see my screen? Uh, yeah, we see the go no go chart. Uh, PowerPoint right. looks like. Perfect. Let me get to the beginning. How's that? Uh, yeah, looks great. All right. So um, thanks again for having me. If anybody has uh, seen us present before, it's usually a double act. And uh, my good buddy, Tyler Wood, uh, is not here today. He's actually traveling. He was presenting at a, at a different um, conference in New York. So he's sort of uh, en route, I think, back to, back to home. So it's just going to be me. So I'll do my best to, um, to entertain. And uh, what we're going to talk today about, once we get through sort of a, a couple of main concepts of technical analysis that we always like to start off with when we teach, we're going to really talk about volatility and trying to embrace volatility rather than be afraid of volatility. We've, we've had some, some up and down markets, and certainly that's been one of the uh, questions that people have been trying to wrestle with is how do we deal with the volatility that we're experiencing in the markets? And so what we'll focus on as we get into this presentation is really how to, um, to, to take that as a challenge to look for situations of high volatility so that we can be present at the beginning of, of new moves. But first, let's start with a question. Um, this is obviously online. It's early in the morning, so there's no, uh, no, nobody's asking you to actually uh, jump into the conference and answer these questions out loud. So play along at home, you know, feel free to put them in the chat or, or just, uh, just have a think about some of these questions as we go. We're gonna talk about some research that was done by a team led by Terence Odian. And the first question I'm gonna ask, out of 360,000 day traders over a 15 year period, let's start with question number one. What percentage of those day traders do you think lost money? So I'll give you a second. Um, we'll we'll watch the answers fly through the chat, and, and you let us know what you think. Um, and I'm not going to try uh, to depress people here with the answers, but I do want to uh, to make the point that it is hard to make money uh, in our markets. 87% of day traders in the study lost money. Now, before we then say, okay, well, what are we even doing here? What's the point of having these conferences? There is a good uh, outcome to this, and we're going to move on and ask a second question, which is looking at 15 currencies and 
I had to just take a double check there at 43 million trades. Uh, it always surprises me the number of trades taken in this study, but out of 43 million trades, what percentage of the trades do you think were profitable? So this comes from a retail FX broker and they studied 15 currencies, 43 million trades. What percentage of their trades do you think were profitable? So now we just know that 87% of day traders lost money over the previous study. So what percentage of trades do you think were profitable in this study of 43 million? Well, that's the answer. And that's the, the positives that we're gonna talk about today. We are, as an industry, we're correct over 50% of the time in terms of picking trades, right? So what's the problem then? We have a win-loss ratio greater than 50%, but, why do the vast majority of people lose money? Why do the vast majority of day traders uh, have to leave the, the, uh, the trading business because they've lost their money? Well, the answer is that the loss per trade on average far outweighs the average profit. So the edge is there, right? We are able to use our analysis, to use our strategy, to use our technical analysis, to use our our, our disciplined process of investment to find an edge. The edge to find winning trades is there, but we are guilty of allowing our losers to far outpace our winners, right? So that is then all to do with the discipline of money management, and we'll get into that as well in a little bit. So the expectancy formula, let's get a little bit mathematical. Um, my uh, my father was a, a math professor and uh, and he said he doesn't like numbers and I'm with him. So I became a visual uh, learner and, a, and I'm a big believer in data visualization and try to stay away from some of the math behind this, the, the analysis as much as possible and focus on the charts. But if we think about what's happening with the expectancy formula, the expectancy formula is, uh, over here on the right. And what you'll see is that it is possible to have a profitable trading strategy at any point to the right of this curve. So at any point on the curve, right, this is a break-even strategy. Anything to the right of the curve, above right of the curve, is profitable. Anything below is unprofitable. So you can see that you can live all the way on the left as long as you are above that curve, meaning you can be picking winners less than 50%, way less than 50%, as long as you are making more money on your winning trades than you are losing on your losers. If you think about some of the most famous uh, trend-following investors uh, out there, Paul Tudor Jones and others, they're quite happy to be right only 25, 30% of the time, because when they are right, they are right big time. And if you think about the four outcomes of trading, we've got small wins, big wins, small losses, and big losses. And so we're okay with three out of those four, right? Obviously, the one we aren't okay with is the big loss. We can learn to love our small losses because they get us out of losing trades. We are okay with small wins and we love our big wins, right? But it's the big loss that makes it difficult for us to consistently make money over time. So what do we want to do? We want to uh, remove subjectivity from our trading. We want to follow rules. We want to have discipline. And if we can do that, then we can overcome the, uh, the, the biases that we have as human beings, which make it more painful for us to lock in losses uh, than it is joyful uh, for us to take profit, right? So we we avoid taking a loss because of the pain it brings, and yet we are quick to close out winning trades. So we want to do the opposite of that. We want to let our winners run and cut our losses short. And it sounds so simple and so easy to say, but it isn't easy to do in practice. So we're gonna talk about how we can do that, how we can stay with winning trades, how we can find winning ideas, and also how we can capitalize on volatile situations in the markets. Okay, so 
uh, onto the fun stuff. I um, I was an athlete in college, and one of the things that we lived by was the idea that we are what we repeatedly do. If we do all of the little things correctly, and we do it right over and over and over again, we will get better. And that applies to trading too as well. If we can follow our process and follow our rules and be disciplined, uh, then we will have a much better chance of succeeding over the long run. So um, often I talk about, uh, we talk about our good friend, Dave Keller, who was president of the CMT Association for a while, who was head of the Fidelity chart room in Boston and, uh, and other places. And he, he used to always talk about flying a plane, but at the moment my son is learning to drive, which is a little scary. Uh, one, because I can't believe he's 16. And two, because it's a little scary to think that your, your son is out there behind the wheel of a car but if you think about somebody learning to drive you are going to want them to follow steps that make them safe when they're on the road right so if you think about a checklist that i would want him to to follow every time he gets in the car it might be something like check his seatbelt is fastened make sure your foot's on the brake when you when you turn the engine on or when you put the car in gear uh, make sure you check your mirrors before you pull out into the road. Make sure you signal so that anybody behind you is uh, aware of what you're doing. And then finally, you put the car into gear and, and you would drive off, right? And if you follow those steps, you're going to more likely be safer as you begin to drive. If you don't follow those steps and you just drive off, then you're sort of putting your life in the hands of other people on the road as well as your own uh, um, sort of uh, inability to control the, your environment when you're in the car. And if you think about trading or learning technical analysis, you can take the same approach and you can think about having a disciplined process that allows you uh, to make intelligent decisions, to give you a, a framework within which to invest that's based on sound reason, uh, avoiding the pitfalls of of uh, being too emotionally involved in in trading. So it might be you use Dow theory, it might, you might use trend lines, you might use moving averages, patterns, uh, support and resistance, confirmation, relative strength, technical indicators. Um, you know, we aren't here to uh, to mandate what somebody should use or to try to try to tell people uh, which process um, works best, but we do believe that there should be a disciplined process for investing. And what we want to do uh, over at Go No Go Charts is to make that as simple as possible and make the visual easy to understand and less distracting uh, and therefore avoiding analysis paralysis. So let's do that. Let's take a couple of minutes. Uh, I believe it's Saturday morning uh, over there and, and it's Friday night here, so there's no markets trading. Let's take a few minutes to think about how somebody might go through the process of building a sensible checklist for trend identification. Um, we know that trend identification is arguably the most important skill in technical analysis. Uh, trend followers consistently uh, make money. And if you can identify a trend in price action, then you can profit on the majority of the move, right? You can trade in the direction of the underlying trend. We like to say that that's simple, but not easy to do. Um, and we want to therefore give us tools and give us ways in which we can render that process easier. Now, when we can uh, identify trend, like I said, we are trading in its direction, and that sort of stacks the odds in our favor, puts the weight of the evidence behind our decision making. So what might we start with? Well, the first thing you might do is visually try to identify if there is a discernible move in any direction. For what I mean is trends, an uptrend is just a series of higher highs and higher lows. We know that the trend won't move in a straight line, but it will move higher over time, and we will see higher highs and higher lows, but that's a visual process. What if we want to automate that? Well, the first thing we could do is use an, a technical indicator, something like the Donchian channels, to find those higher highs and higher lows for us. Now, um, one of my favorite historical stories in, in the industry of technical analysis is that of the turtle traders. 
uh, Richard Dennis in Chicago, an incredibly successful trader, he believed that he could teach people to trade. He believed he could grow traders the way they grew turtles in turtle farms that he'd seen on his travels around the world. So what he did was he took people and gave them rules with, with which to invest. And he was very successful. Some, uh, some of the original turtle traders are still trading today. In fact, coming up at the, uh, at the, the CMT symposium, we've got a speaker who was an original turtle uh, in just a couple of weeks towards the end of April in New York. But Donchian channels, what they do is they just look back over a time period to identify if price has moved higher. So it compares the price to price 20 bars ago and sees if it's higher. If it is, that red line moves higher. If the low is higher as well, then that green line moves higher with it. Now, after that, you might put something like a Bollinger Band on your chart because we know from statistics that uh, standard deviations are vitally important. Bollinger Bands are based around standard deviations. And we know that if within a data set, within two standard deviations of the mean, we know that that will encompass around 95% of the data when data is normally distributed. Now, financial markets aren't normally distributed, but within two standard devi deviations around a mean, you will get most of the data staying between those bands. So when they, you see price break out of those bands, it's very important information. Um, and we know that there are multiple ways to use the Bollinger Bands, and, but the main ones that we're taught early on are that when the bands are narrow, one of the main ones is that when bands are narrow, we are going to want to trade in the direction of the break, meaning that we've got compressed volatility. When we trade outside of those bands, uh, price is likely to move in one, that direction. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that when we talk about volatility later on. We might add something else to our chart. Who doesn't have a simple moving average on their chart? Um, you know, I worked at Bloomberg for 15 years and, and moving averages were, on charts by default, it, it's just everybody, even if people didn't think they were technicians, they would say, I don't do technical analysis, but we would see that they had moving averages on their chart. Um, simple moving average, comparing price to an average of its historical prices can give you a sense of whether or not we're in a bullish environment. If price is higher than its moving average, then we're trading higher than we have in the past. And that seems like an inherently bullish uh, concept. After, after that, we might throw Something else, volume, the first of the confirmatory tools. You know, we've been talking about volume since the days of Charles Dow, talking about how volume can confirm price action. So if we see something happening in price, we might want to see volume support the, the, the move. We might throw an indicator on the bottom panel. Uh, MACD is one that, uh, that is very prevalent along, uh, on charts around the world. And what we know from MACD is that if MACD is above its signal line, and if MACD is above zero, if it's positive, then we're, again, looking at that idea of uh, price trading higher than it has in the past. And with exponential av moving averages, ones that react to price movements more quickly than simple moving averages, and then taking the difference between two moving averages, we get a sense of the speed of change of price relative to its historical price. And so we can say that when MACD is above zero, that's a bullish sign as well. So I'm going to take a pause. That's a lot of information. It's all valid. It's all valuable. And at some point over the left side of this chart, if we're looking towards the sort of 25% through the chart, we're seeing a lot of those situations line up. We're seeing a new high in Don Chin channels. We see price above its moving average. We're seeing good healthy volume as price moves higher. And MACD is above the zero line, right? And so at some point towards the left side of that chart, we're going to be fairly confident that price is entering a trend in the upward direction. Now, the problem is, though, that you can see from just that relatively simple process, we've put a lot of information on our chart and we've complicated our visual analysis and we've made price harder to see. And if you like, as I do, to look at support and resistance, to look at the way price action is behaving, then you've made it very difficult by overloading your chart with too much information. So we can go back to, to basics. What are we really looking to do? We are looking to participate in trends, not anticipate them. We like to say we don't predict, we react responsibly. 
And we want to remove all doubt and confusion and uncertainty so that we can remain objective and stick to our rules and follow that process. And if we can do that, then we can act responsibly and trade without emotions. So what we've done with Go No Go Charts is blend a disciplined checklist of technical analysis, one that I've worked on with colleagues, clients over the years that has proven to be uh, valuable, blend all of that technical information, some of the sort of most robust, tried and true concepts of technical analysis into an indicator that color codes price based on the strength of its trend. And we hope that by doing that, you can then uh, use the price chart uh, to, to further your analysis without that complication of analysis paralysis. So what are we looking at here? We've got lots of different colors, but the key things to remember are that the blues are go trends. Uh, dark, bright blue and aqua colored blue are strong and weak form of the go trend. Purple and lighter pink are strong and weak form of no-go trends, downtrends. And then amber bars are periods of uncertainty that we often see as transitions between trends. So we call those the go fish bars. We've got go bars, no-go bars, and go fish bars. And if you're familiar with Jesse Livermore, he once said, there's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to go fishing. Meaning that if the market's not telling you where, what direction we're going, then leave it alone, go fishing, and, and don't, uh, don't stress yourself out over what's happening. So I um, want to point out at this point that if you are Metastock users, we have uh, the Go No Go trend available in Metastock as a free template. You can just simply right click on a chart, click apply template, and you will get the Go No Go trend and its colors on a, on a chart. And, and we're really, you know, this is um, sort of a life's work kind of thing for me, and it's something that I believe um, has value. And so please let us know what you think. If, you, if you've got, if you're already using Go No Go Trend, uh, if you start to use it, uh, send us an, an email, info at gonogocharts.com, get in touch with Metastock, let them know whether you like it, how it's working for you, if it's a lot helping you stay on the right side of the trend. Uh, we'd love to hear from, from everybody. So. If we can do that, if we can put all of the technical trend identification information into something that does not add anything to the chart, just color codes the price bar, then we can keep our focus on price. And I love this quote, um, ultimately it's the dollar weighted collective opinion of all market participants that determines whether a stock goes up or down and that consensus is revealed by analyzing price. I mean, what does that mean? That just means that price is an accurate reflection of what people are prepared to pay for a stock. So when that price closes, that is what everybody has agreed is the price for that. And so that includes all of the information that you might want in the price in its close and in the value that you see on the chart. So uh, let's consider the trend. Um, we know that the colors are, are blue, aqua, amber, pink, and purple. And we will be able to then keep our focus on price just by looking at the colors. I believe my, my dog has just entered the, the office, so that's, uh, and she's left. So if I, I might take a moment to shut that door in a second. Uh, but let's move on and just look at an example of what the Go No Go charts can do. This is Meta, right? Meta platforms, we know it as Facebook in the past. Now. This was not the same process that we used earlier. This is a new process that I was working on with a client, and this was what he used. He looked at RSI, he looked at the percent price oscillator, he looked at the ADX and, and some and other things, right? And Bollinger Bands, and he had all of this on his charts. And what we found then was that it was difficult to still see price. It isn't obvious from this chart when the trend ends, the uptrend ends in Meta stock, uh, in Meta, sorry, Meta, the not Meta stock, Facebook, and when the new trend down begins because price panel is small and there's a lot on this chart. Um, but if we put this same time frame, the same time period uh, with the go no go chart, then this is what we see. We saw the go trend in place as price moved higher and then we saw the combined weight of the evidence approach showing us 
that it has become a no-go at this point in the middle of the chart, and then we roll over and price moves lower um, for the next several months. Now, that's a weekly longer-term chart. We're going to look at Meta again and see what's happened in more recent data, but you can see how the trend has been identified without uh, overwhelming the chart with several indicators. We also know that multi-time frame analysis is incredibly important, right? We know that we want to look at uh, these ideas over many time frames. Uh, this also comes from Charles Dow. He talked about the market as a as a, with a with a ocean theme. He talked about the major movements of the market, that primary trend, as if it was the tides, and that is sort of uh, unlikely to change, other than with changing, you know, economic fundamental data. The secondary trend around that is where a lot of technicians will be investing their time to try to buy low and sell high around the main trend, in the direction of the trend. And then we've got the, the third trend, the tertiary moves of the markets that he called the, like the ripples on the surface of the water. And, and that is very difficult to capitalize on because of how fast it moves. Now, I want to point out at this point that this might be different for everybody. You aren't necessarily stuck to using weekly, daily, and hourly, or monthly, weekly, and daily. You could be investing over different time frames, but your larger time frame can give you a good sense of the overall trend of the market. So when you have, uh, let's say you're using a 10-minute chart, make sure you're, you're uh, putting it into context of the larger time frame, which for you could be different than other people. So let's take a quick look at how we're how we're shaping up on the S&P at the moment using the go no go trend. We can see that today we uh, just entered a new go trend. Um, we have been making a series of high highs and high lows. We corrected against that go trend, and today we made a new aqua colored bar. So we are in a weak go trend on the S&P. And if we pull that into the perspective of the weekly chart, we can see that the weekly chart has been in a go now for two weeks. This is a, a go trend, aqua bars, after this long no-go trend that has been really giving us this trouble for about a year. We saw a lot of amber go fish bars. Um, we saw the go no-go trend indicator trying to rally out of these no-goes. And finally, uh, this week and last, we have been in a go trend. So now we are in a go trend on the weekly. We've entered a go trend on the daily. And so what we might do is move down in time frame to look for entry points on a shorter time frame chart. So going forward, given that our daily and our weekly charts have lined up as go trends, we might now start to look for opportunities to enter using shorter time frame charts. So whether you're using go no go trend or other technical process, um, using that multi time frame approach can be really, really, really important. Another concept that we uh, we need to talk about in technical analysis is that of diversification and looking at multiple asset classes, looking at intermarket analysis. Uh, the bulk of that work done by John Murphy, I remember when I was first reading about technical analysis, he was considered the Bible of technical analysis, John Murphy's technical analysis book but also newer works by people like Marcus Katsanas, who uh, you know, have taken that work further to talk about the importance of understanding how different markets interact and how different markets move. Um, so what we can do with something like Go No Go Trend is take a quick snapshot around the asset classes to see where the trends are. Um, I always like to, to talk about the Jimmy Buffett song where you know, it's five o'clock somewhere. Well, I like to say there's a trend somewhere. Um, and if the trends are not good or not easy to to um, to profit on, there will be a trend somewhere else um, that can be much more consistent. So if we quickly go around these. We can see that U.S. equities have entered a weak go trend. Treasuries, that's bond prices, not rates, are in a go trend. Uh, we can see. Oops, I went. Uh, let me just get back there. Sorry about that. We can see that on the top right we have um, one second. We have U.S. oil, which is in a weak no-go. U.S. oil has really been confounding a lot of people. Bottom left, Bitcoin is in a strong go trend. That's been nice to see. Gold also has been providing some opportunity for people that are considering it as a flight to, uh, to safety. In the recent months, gold has been in a strong go trend. And the U.S. dollar has rolled over again 
into a strong no-go. And just to go back to that multi-time frame uh, perspective, the US dollar rolling over into a strong no-go is lining back up with what we're seeing on the weekly chart for the dollar in that it is in a, a no-go trend as well. So putting the, the uh, trading in the direction of the large, larger time frame, putting the odds in your favor, we really need to make sure that we're doing all of these things as we do our analysis. Okay. So at this point, I just want to point out that we do put out weekly research where we go through from a top-down perspective, all the asset classes. We look at sector analysis. Uh, we look at asset classes and we look at what might be affecting the equity markets. And then we finish with some single security analysis as well of things that are uh, showing good setups from a go, no go perspective. Um, that goes out on Monday. That's called Flight Path Launch Conditions, which is a global chart pack. Uh, harks back to the days of going home on the bus with a printed out uh, chart pack to look at over the weekend. Um, that's what we do on Saturdays. That's a 14 chart pack that gives you a sense of the trends across the asset classes and around the world. Um, that goes out on Saturday. And this is just an example, you know, this is from last year and this was when we noticed that there was some rotation and we noticed that the, um, you know, that we were looking at the dollar at an inflection point as equities continued to struggle. So that's the kind of thing we put out on a weekly basis. Um, and you're more than welcome to send us a, a message at uh, info at Gonogo Charts to, to get a sense of, of our research as well. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm not usually the timekeeper on these things, but I think I might have done okay. I think we're about halfway through and we can uh, have a quick swig of uh, coffee to wake us up if it's the morning or to keep me awake if it's the evening. And then we'll move on to the second half of this presentation. And like I said, the second half of the presentation is going to be really focused on the lower panel of the complete go, no go chart. Now that's going to give us a sense of momentum, volume and volatility. And we're going to look at how embracing those volatile moves can really help us in these markets. Um, so let's go through and have a quick run through of the other tools that come with the complete go, no go chart. First, momentum, and I'm not going to take long here because we really outlined the process of technical uh, checklists of disciplined investing by going through a process that makes sense to you as an investor. And just as we did for trend identification, we can do the same thing for momentum. Oscillators give us valuable information about price uh, trend strength, about price velocity, how quickly price is moving. We can look for extreme areas of price swings and we can look for divergence um, and we can use us oscillators in trends as well as in just sideways range bound markets. But as you can see, if we add a couple more panels to our chart, imagine adding that to the chart that we had at the beginning. Now you've got a very, very complicated chart, a very good process, a very disciplined checklist that will, will be will stand you in good stead but a very complicated chart that will uh, uh, make it difficult for you to, to make decisions quickly and effectively. Um, so what have we done? Well, the go, no, go oscillator is the same concept as the go, no, go trend. We've taken several of the foundational concepts of momentum analysis and blended them into one indicator that uh, fits at the bottom panel of the chart. And with that, we get all the information. I get all the information that I wanted from my analysis or from my studies of momentum indicators, such as RSI, you know, uh, you name it. RSI is probably the most important, most used technical indicator that we have with the exception of moving averages. So getting information from something like an RSI, but not just the standard 14 period, maybe a, a quicker reacting, shorter time frame RSI. Getting that information is important to me. So I blend them all into one oscillator that works just like any other momentum oscillator, but we only need the one on a lower panel. So we can do, uh, we can look for extremes of overbought and oversold, right? You can see that the highs in the oscillator line up with highs in price. Uh, you can see that the lows line up with lows in price. And you can also identify divergence. Divergence, such an important concept in technical analysis. If price is making a higher high, as it is here over on the left side of the chart, look at the trend line, but the oscillator is making a lower high, that is bearish divergence, meaning there's less enthusiasm on that second high, which is a concern for that trend. And you can see that then that leads to a change in trend 
uh, as we correct with a no-go. And we've also incorporated volume in this chart because we want the complete technical picture in one chart that's easy to read. Now with Metastock, the way that's implemented here, we have a blue a ribbon along the bottom that goes dark blue when volume is heavier than its average. Uh, so if we're seeing a healthy movement in price on strong volume, then that's that's a good thing. So with this one chart, one price panel, one oscillator panel, we have the complete technical picture, especially if we incorporate volatility, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Okay, before we do that, um, there's one thing I want to just quickly point out, which is how powerful momentum indicators can be when used in a trend. Uh, most people are taught that they're used for sideways markets. They're used for identifying mean reversion plays. If prices move really quickly in one direction, it might come back. Think of RSI going above 70 into overbought territory and then moving back into neutral territory. That would be an indication to sell according to traditional momentum analysis. But much research has been done using um, momentum indicators in trends. People like Connie Brown have written great books about that. And what we find is that momentum oscillators range when in trend. Uh, they range from neutral to overbought in an uptrend and neutral to oversold in a downtrend. So what happens is price will rally and there'll be enthusiastic buying and then some uh, there'll be some digestion of those gains. There'll be some counter trend corrections and then price will rally again. But in those corrections, if the trend is strong, we shouldn't see any oversold conditions. That would be excessive selling. And if you think about that in an uptrend, excessive selling doesn't make sense. So what we wanted to do uh, was incorporate that idea into the go no go oscillator. The problem we have with using those ranges is that they're subjective. We have to define them ourselves. Do we use 40 and 80? Do we use 35 and 75 if we're talking about RSI? What if price comes down to 37? Does that count as a touch of support? What if it breaks below 40? Does that count as breaking support or not, right? It becomes subjective. So the go-no-go -no -go oscillator was calculated in a way that causes the indicator to go to zero when all of the inputs, remember, to, to the several momentum concepts and the differing time periods, when all of the inputs are in neutral territory, the go-no-go -no -go oscillator gives us a reading of zero. Therefore, it becomes an objective level of support and resistance when in a trend. When you have a go trend and price corrects, mm -hmm. we look to see if the oscillator holds the zero line. Tyler always talks about um, the baseball analogy that Ralph Acampora told him when he was learning about momentum, catching the ball in your glove. If you are playing a game of catch, you should catch the ball, throw it back up again. Only if you drop the ball uh, does that game end for the time being, right? Uh, and that's the same idea here. Price moves higher and it comes back down to your glove. It moves higher, comes back down to your glove, the glove being the zero line. And as long as the zero line holds as support, then you know the trend remains healthy and it will uh, gives you an opportunity to participate in the trend, to stay with the trend, which is what we were talking about at the very beginning about having those big wins and letting them ride. So based on this understanding of the interaction between the oscillator and the trend, we have uh, icons that we put on the price panel to highlight important situations. The first situation that we put on this chart is trend continuation icons, and those are the circles. So when we are in a go trend, we will see green circles when momentum is resurgent in the direction of the trend. When that catch is made and the ball is thrown again, that's what these circles will give us. Green if it's a go trend, red if it's a no go trend, but they are trend continuation icons. The second kind of icon are called counter trend correction arrows. And these are marking the end of overbought or oversold extremes because there is plenty of value in using the oscillators in their traditional sense. So when we see the go no go oscillator go to an overbought extreme and then come back into below five, then we are going to see a counter trend correction arrow. That tells us that in the short term,
price may counter trend correct. So those are the icons. But for the last 20 minutes, what are we talking about today? We're going to get into volatility and how important that can be in our trading. What we know is that volatility compression occurs at inflection points. We also know that periods of low volatility are often followed by periods of high volatility. I used to always think about the squeezing the toothpaste analogy. That's how I was taught. And then eventually that cap will pop off if there's enough pressure put on the tube. And those are those periods of low volatility. It can happen in a trend, in the middle of a trend. It can be trend continuation or it can happen at the end of a trend and we can see it lead to reversals. So how do we find these compressions without being subjective? You've probably heard of the term volatility squeeze. <clears throat> we have several indicators out there that do a fantastic job capturing this idea. Um, Bollinger band squeezes, Keltner band squeezes. The general idea is that when the bands narrow, we trade in the direction of the break. Now, let's go through just a couple of examples so we're all familiar with how to identify these volatility squeezes. And we'll do it using Bollinger bands. So we've got Bollinger bands on a chart here. And in the lower panel, we've got band width, right? So that's going to tell us when the bands are relatively narrow. So every time we see a low on this lower panel, that tells us that the bands are relatively narrow. Now, what we have to do is use our eyes to be a little bit subjective here and sort of say, okay, well, how narrow is this area? Is it narrow enough to be considered a trade in the break moment? Right now, if we're looking towards the right side of the chart here, we can see a real shrinking of the bands, and then we trade in the direction of the break to new highs up in the top right of the chart. Let's look at another one. This is UUP, and I, what I want you to look at is the right side of this chart, because we know what happened to the dollar. UUP is the ETF uh, that we use as a proxy for the dollar because it gives us volume information and it's easy to trade. But we know that the dollar rolled over. This chart is from the end of last year. But at what point do we consider trading in the direction of these Bollinger Band breaks? Was the, were the bands on the right side of the chart before we saw that rollover? Were they narrow enough for us to consider trading in the direction of the break? Now, obviously, we did move lower on the dollar, so that was the right move. But we have to be subjective and use our own uh, eyes and our own um, thought process to try to identify that situation. Okay. Then we have the problem of adding Bollinger Bands to our chart that we had at the beginning, right? We've added another indicator. We've made price even harder to see. So we have that same problem of, of complication and overloading our chart with indicators. So I want to talk to you about the final piece of the Go No Go chart main uh, set of tools and that is the go no go squeeze indicator now because we want to keep this analysis this chart as simple as possible we built it into the oscillator panel so there is nothing more to take your eyes off price but we want to identify those moments where we're in a period of reduced volatility and it comes back to understanding the importance of the zero line for the oscillator remember we said that the zero line represents a moment where all of the inputs to the oscillator uh, concepts are in neutral territory. So what does it tell us if the oscillator remains stuck at zero, right? The oscillator rides the zero line for an extended period of time. Well, it tells us that we have a tug of war going on. We have very little directional momentum. And that's exactly what the squeeze tries to identify. It tries to visualize this reduced volatility. So what we have in this panel is a grid, this amber grid that climbs for every bar that the oscillator stays at the zero line. And then it remains at a max until it's broken. And we know that after periods of reduced volatility can be periods of high volatility. So when we see a break of the go, no, go squeeze, then we can uh, attempt to trade in that direction. Now, in this chart, follow along with me for a minute. We are moving lower in a no go trend. The oscillator is below zero in negative territory and it rises to test the zero line. What should happen here? The zero line should act as resistance because there should be no excessive buying in a downtrend. 
we expect the oscillator to, to get re rejected by the zero line, move back into negative territory. It gets stuck at zero for an extended period of time. The go, no, go, squeeze grid climbs to its max, and we watch to see in which direction it breaks. Now, this is an example of a reversal, right? We, instead of it falling back into negative territory, we get a break out of the squeeze into positive territory, telling us that some of our inputs to the oscillator are triggering some overbuying, some excessive buying. And that is obviously then a concern for the no-go trend. And then we see the color change in the price panel following that break in the squeeze. Okay, so a lot of information. Um, I hope I haven't uh, gone too fast for everybody. Of course, always feel free to get in touch with us. Always feel free to get in touch with the, uh, the wonderful chaps at Metastock who can explain any and all of this. Uh, but now let's go through a couple of examples. If you remember that first chart of the Bollinger Band squeeze, this was the area we were looking at where the bands narrowed and we saw the break and we were saying, let's trade in the direction of the break. You see the climbing grid of the go no go squeeze this amber grid rising to its max gets broken into positive territory that tells us trend continuation continue to trade in the direction of the trend which is in a go trend and we saw new higher highs the second example we used on that bollinger band chart was the chart of uup remember the dollar and here it is with the go no go squeeze added to our go no go chart we were looking to the right side of that chart and we were wondering if the bands were narrow enough, if we should trade in the direction of the break. Well, we saw a max go, no, go squeeze as the climbing grid rose, every bar it stayed at zero, and then it was broken to the downside into negative territory well before the go trend gave way to a no go. So an early warning in terms of the oscillator breaking the zero line out of a max squeeze. And then of course that led to the rollover that we saw in UUP and the dollar. So let's go back now, just to reinforce that idea. This is that UUP chart with our trend identification process with Bollinger Bands to try to identify the squeeze. And then this is our chart using go, no, go. We know the trend has ended. We saw an amber bar as we transitioned. We'd previously seen a breakout of a max squeeze into negative territory that probably allowed us to exit our, our trade in the, in the go trend. And then we now knew we were in a no go moving lower oscillator in negative territory, confirming what we saw in price. Okay, let's look at another one. This was Meta, the chart of Meta. Uh, we saw um, Meta stock, uh, I did it again. I'm sorry, Bobby, I'm sorry, Jeff, wherever you are. Uh, the chart of Meta, Facebook, um, we saw it come out of this no-go trend towards the left side of the chart. We saw a max squeeze build, and then we see that break into positive territory. Go trend continuation green circle as we moved higher and then of course higher and higher again. Um, so let's just take a second now to, to bring it back to basics and to wrap this up before we show some current examples. There's only three things to consider when we're looking at a go no go chart. We want to know what the trend is. Remember we've done all that, that checklist of technical analysis in the background to, to color our chart to tell us what the trend is. We want to know where the oscillator is. Is it confirming the trend by being in positive territory if it's a go trend, confirming the no-go trend if it's in negative territory, or is there anything interesting happening around the zero line, right? We can be uh, looking for support at the zero line in an uptrend. We can be looking for resistance at the zero line in the downtrend, or we can be identifying periods of reduced volatility with the go, no, go squeeze. So if we can answer those three questions, we can give a competent overview of the technical analysis on any asset over any time frame. Another thing that we do is we do research every day that goes out to our subscribers that is just single security setup. So I'm just gonna uh, show a couple of these from recent weeks. Uh, this is a chart of Apple. Um, we will look because of the fact that there is nothing else on the chart. We're able to do some pattern analysis. We're looking at a uh, sort of a you know a slightly unusual continuation reverse inverse head and shoulders. Uh, we saw this neckline and we saw this break of the neckline uh, lining up with a break out of a max squeeze into positive territory. So this was an idea that went out on the 17th of March. Apple Apple breaks out of max go no go squeeze in a go trend, and Apple has moved higher since 
and has actually retested the zero line and found support again. So if, what do we, if we answer our three questions, um, what's the trend right now? The trend is a strong go, we're at new highs. Where's the oscillator? The oscillator currently is at four or five, um, approaching overbought territory. Is there anything interesting that happened around the zero line? Well, yeah, we recently broke out of a max squeeze and we found support again at that zero line. Um, so good trend in place for Apple, Tr continuation um, icons telling us that the trend is likely to remain in place in the near, in the short term. Another one, this is a chart of PWR. PWR is in a max uh, squeeze. This was from just a couple of days ago while in a go trend. We can see it just breaking out of this max go, no go squeeze into positive territory. And then we, uh, we see that we've moved a little bit higher over the last couple of days. So where are we right now? We're in a strong go. The oscillator is at a value of three, which is confirming the go trend. And we've just broke out of a max go, no go squeeze. Um, before I finish this, and I, I've got a couple more examples that I can show, but I want to make sure that I touch on some of the incredible implementations that we have in Metastock. Um, one is the expert commentary. I think it's absolutely fantastic. At any point on the chart, you can click on a bar and really be given the go, no go interpretation of what we're seeing from a trend perspective, momentum, volume, and volatility. And it's just like the way we've been uh, looking at these past few charts. What's the trend? What's going on with the oscillator? Are there any icons, continuation icons, or counter trend corrections? And is there a squeeze at present? No, you know, in this case, no squeeze present. Uh, this is what you'd get if you clicked on this. Um, strong go, oscillator in positive territory, but not overbought. No current icon, and the squeeze is not uh, present as volatility isn't compressed. So that's a fantastic, just looking over your shoulder, being told exactly what, what these charts are telling you. Um, the second thing, and of course, you know, Bobby was showing you on, on uh, Steve's uh, candlestick um, program, how powerful that is to be able to search for that information. Um, and the same is, is, is a possible in Go No Go as well. We can search for Go No Go icons, trend continuations, counter trend corrections. We can search for squeezes, right? That periods of reduced volatility. And of course, we can search for new goes or new no-goes, you know, when the trend is being identified for the very first time. So the explorations in Metastock, absolutely fantastic. You can open a chart from this list. As Bobby showed, there's so much you can do from the explorations, but I just wanted to, to highlight that that can be done here with every go, no-go situation as well. Super powerful, super time saver. Um, it's how I get a lot of, of, of work done, right? So that you don't have to go through 3,000 charts of the of whatever index you're looking at, you can just quickly filter to the charts that you want to spend some time analyzing. So just to leave you with a couple, um, interestingly, we're seeing uh, some max squeezes in healthcare stocks at the moment. Um, this is Pfizer. The trend is a strong no-go. The oscillator is obviously at zero and we've got an extended max squeeze. So we're going to be watching to see in which direction the squeeze is broken. Right, we know that in theory it should break to the downside because we're in a no-go trend. If you look at this chart, since that no-go was in place, we've been using the oscillator, the zero level, as resistance. We've been able to see trend continuation icons, these red circles, as the no-go has been in place because the oscillator has held as an objective level of resistance in this no-go trend. So we're going to be watching to see what happens as this max squeeze breaks whether it breaks in the direction of the no-go or if it breaks out to positive territory, which would give us some early signs that this no-go trend is perhaps in trouble. Um, another one, because technology we know has been um, a relative outperformer. We do a lot of relative strength work, a lot of sector analysis and the tech sector has been outperforming recently, has returned to leadership. Uh, this, in, in, when we're looking at sector, uh, relative strength, we know that technology is, is a relative outperformer at once again. So if we're looking at a, a stock in the tech sector, this one is ADESC, in a no-go trend, why would we be looking at that? Perhaps it's ready to play catch up. Perhaps it's ready to fill this gap that we can see on the chart because there's nothing else on here. 
perhaps it's ready to participate in that outperformance that we're seeing from the tech sector. And why do we think that might be the case? Because we're seeing a break of the max squeeze in the positive direction against what we'd expect, given we're in a no-go trend. So perhaps we're seeing a reversal coming from this break of the go-no-go no, go squeeze. Um, so I wanted to say at this point, I think I just about wrapped up in time uh, for Bobby to, to come in and have a couple of minute chat, perhaps to, to show you some things. Um, but we want to thank Metastock and um, it's been a great, it's been a great uh, relationship working with, with the guys, building the tools. Uh, we've enjoyed the feedback that we've been getting from people using it in Metastock. So like I said at the beginning of the presentation, feel free to shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from anybody that's using Go No Go Trend or the complete uh, suite of tools. Um, but with that, Bobby, if you're there, uh, Bobby, Jeff, I'm not sure who's on the call yeah. at the moment. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for having me. Hey, thank you, Alex, so much uh, for coming today. You know, outside of your normal hours, we're happy mm -hmm. that you are here. Uh, I do have just a quick question to ask for you that came in on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Hannah Levi wants to know, do you use or incorporate anchored VWAP in your indicators? Um, yeah, we can't uh, sort of give away too much of what's in there, but uh, but that's it isn't, it, uh, anchored VWAP is not, one of the uh, components of my checklist. Now, it, it's it's a fantastic indicator. Uh, VWAP itself, um, I've worked with a lot of people over the years that you know just you know just using VWAP right gives you gives you a real uh, leg up if you're not using anything and understanding where price is relative to the to the volume weighted average price, especially if you're doing some um, shorter term trading. Uh, but it's not a component of the Gonogo charts. Okay, and then she uh, had a follow-up as well. She's interested in knowing if there are any independent, independently audited profit loss statements from people utilizing Go No Go charts, or she wants to know how she can know they'll work in real time rather than just on, you know, examples in a presentation. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, of course, a uh, couple of things. I'll preface this with saying that this was designed to give anybody an understanding of the technical analysis on any asset over any time frame. So an understanding of the technical analysis, um, not designed as a, uh, as a straight up trading system. Now, having said that, we have uh, clients using it. Obviously, uh, that's what we're all doing here to give us better information and better trade trading. We are working with some partners at the moment. Uh, to provide some back tests. Um, and so, you know, shoot, shoot me an email. Um, we're, we're working on getting some of that information. Um, I've done obviously tons of back testing myself, but we're trying to put together uh, some uh, back testing results on some sample strategies um, to make that available. So yeah, if, if you want to shoot me an email and I'll let you know how that's going. Perfect. I, I think I'll maybe touch on that a little bit too for everyone watching and listening in. Sure. Uh, because we have created this wonderful system in Metastock uh, with Alex and his team, um, You, if you were to decide to you know, take advantage of today's offer and purchase Go No Go, we give you a 30-day uh, money-back guarantee, no questions asked. So if it's not working out fantastically for you like it has for so many of our other users, uh, just return it, give it back, and we'll give you your money back, no problem. So I think that in itself kind of speaks volumes. And um, yeah, it looks like that was kind of the rest of the questions that came in, Alex. So I might just kind of take over from here, touch on a few things, yeah. and then get our next speaker on. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Bobby. And um, hey, like uh, Steve said, enjoy the rest of the day. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up. Yeah. Cheers. All right, guys. Well, yeah, what another great speaker. You know, I always love when we have uh, the go, no, go. Uh, I was going to say, guys, come on. We have Alex and Tyler's often with him, too, but they both do great. Uh, we are happy to have him. Uh, just so that you guys know a little bit more about the system that we've put into Metastock, I mean, there's multiple tools within the go, no, go charts uh, add-on that we've created here in Metastock. You get the go, no, go trend, the oscillator, the icons, the squeeze. Uh, 
uh, he did a really good job of kind of going through these components and showing you guys a lot of great examples. So I'm going to skip over that part so that I'm not bleeding too much into the next presenter's time. Uh, I would like to you know, mention some other highlights though. You can get like icon change alerts uh, with the system in Metastock. Uh, he did show the expert advisor in there, which gives you those crystal clear explanations of everything that's going on on every single day. You also get uh, the trend identifications and explorations. Now, normally this system uh, sells for $1,495 and that's just a one-time cost. And honestly, that in itself is a really good deal. Uh, however, with the webinar special for everyone watching today, uh, we are doing a $500 discount on that. So it's just a one-time $995 webinar special. It does come with a full, uh, a full boot camp training session. Um, you can get a trial to Metastock with that as well if you don't already have our Metastock platform. And then of course, like we just mentioned, there's a 30-day money back guarantee. So if it doesn't work out perfectly for you, uh, then go ahead and return it. We'll get you your money back, no questions asked. If you're interested in learning some more about this or you want to take advantage of the offer before it goes away, uh, we're available right now at metastock.com forward slash sales chat to answer further questions for you directly. Uh, or if you know you're already good to go, there's also metastock.com forward slash APAC dash deal. And that's going to let you um, sign up for actually a complete bundled offer of the Go No Go charts and the other systems from today which I actually have highlighted here. So the Go No Go, Steve Bigelow's Candle Profit System 2.0. Uh, you'll also have the Power Bundle 360, three months of premium training, pretty much a package of everything we have today from all of our fantastic presenters, uh, discounted at almost 50% off. Um, that's just $1,946, and you guys could take advantage of that deal there. The last thing I did just quickly want to touch on uh, before we get to the new presenter, most of you have all, probably already taken advantage of this, uh, but today is the very last day to opt in to our free bonus offers from today's event. All of our different speakers uh, kind of put together a deal that you could have signed up for when you registered to attend. If those of you found us on YouTube that haven't actually registered, I recommend going to metastock.com forward slash APAC dash summit, and you can sign up for some of those bonus offers. You know, the Go No Go research offer in here uh, is actually to sign up for their newsletter and get a month's access to that for free. And I read that newsletter every single Monday. Uh, so it's really, it's a great thing. Um, you know, so we are happy to have them on. And if you guys haven't yet, or if you skipped over these when you first registered, you can go back uh, and there's still time to register until the end of the event today. Um, all right, so yeah, now we're gonna get ready for our next speaker. Uh, you know, someone who I've been working with a lot lately and one of my favorite presenters here, Daniel Sinig. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen some of his past presentations. He always does a fantastic job uh, and we're really excited to have you here uh, with us today, Daniel. Hi, hi guys, hi Bobby. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. I did hear you loud and clear, and then you cut out for uh, Oh, man. what about now? Is it better? Oh, yep, sounds good. Okay, perfect, all right. Okay, I'm all good right. to go, yes. Great, so hey, I like the contrast. I'm all black here, and you yeah. have the all white background and shirt. <laughs> Very nice, yin and yang. Um, yes. All right. It's the, it's the innocence of me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, right. I know that uh, you know what you're doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand the reins over to you. Uh, I'll make you the presenter. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this amazing event. I I can't believe uh, how great the speakers have been so far. There was Stephen on. There were the uh, Go No Go charts, on which are really cool, and I actually have um, something to say about this. Uh, in just a second, we're going to cover one of the examples because uh, one of the um, you know charts that they brought up, I'm going to bring up too. And guess what? We're going to come up to the same conclusion, which is quite exciting. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if I can figure out how. Give me a second. There we go. That should be fine. Bobby, can you confirm that you can see my screen? I see your desktop. Okay. Sorry for that. Now it should be good. Okay. Yep. There, there we go. All right, so the topic of today's presentation 
it's quite of a mouthful. It's how to find promising traits in minutes with artificial intelligence or with AI. And I know AI has been the buzzword probably of the last couple of months with you know, chat GPT, open AI, and all these amazing, incredible tools out there. And with what we've done actually as um, the starter way before all those tools came out, we took a very similar approach, which is how can we leverage machine learning, optimization, learning from the past to come up with what I would call trade signals, which are tuned into the market, which have the power of being predictive. And this is exactly what this topic is all about, because we've wrapped up the logic that we came up with within a set of, uh, of tools, which allow you to find trade signals and promising trades in literally, literally minutes. For example, using Metastock. And what I will show you today, I uh, just did the research myself after the market closed today, and it took me perhaps an hour, but I also had to prepare for this presentation to come up with all these examples. And how I've done this, and why this hasn't taken me much time, I will discuss with you today. So please be comfortably seated and let's get started. But before, about, before I talk about trading, I want to give you, um, you know, a small analogy from the world of actually poker. Now, poker used to be quite uh, popular back in the day. It's still being broadcasted on TV here every, one, every once in a while. And typically, a poker broadcast looks as, as follows. So you have on uh, this hand two traders or two, tra two players. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the market. Two players left. Um, four cards have been dealt. The fifth card has not been dealt yet. And before this card is opened up, each of the remaining players has the chance to wager. And you know, depending on how confident the player is to win this part, he may wager higher or less, or perhaps fold altogether. But what is not visible, not known to the players, is what are the actual odds of winning the hand? Because the players do not know what the other players' hands are. But if they would know, and if they could calculate these odds, wouldn't you agree with me, that you are a card cheat and you would know this, wouldn't you agree with me that you would probably have a, a very good way of playing poker because you would probably only uh, wager if the odds are in your favor? And you would fold if the odds are not in your favor. And if you keep this up, in the long run, you will probably win uh, this poker tournament. It doesn't mean you're going to win the next hand because it's still odds. There's still a chance. But in the long run, with higher odds and better chances, you will have a leading edge and you probably win this poker tournament. So what we've done, and this is Metastock popping up on me, what we have done is, uh, well, we have um, come to um, the idea is what if we could bring the very same concept to the world of trading? And what if, if it was possible to estimate the odds of winning your next trade before placing the trade? Imagine something like this, that perhaps you know that the odds are around 70% of winning the next trade. Well, you would probably be very confident in taking this trade. Or vice versa, if the odds were not in your favor, what would you do? I believe the answer is fairly clear as well. You would simply stay out of this trade. And oftentimes, not taking the trade is the best trade advice that you can get. And whether this is possible to calculate these odds using artificial intelligence, if the odds are actually meaningful, this will be the topic of this talk because it has the chance to really revolutionize the way you trade. Because you know, imagine having these statistics at your disposal, it can really change the way you take trades and give you very valuable and insightful information whether you should take a trade or you should stay on the sidelines. All right, so before I get started, um, before I will talk about our indicators which have this intelligence built in, let me quickly introduce myself. So. As Bobby said, my name is Daniel, and I am a managing partner of tradingindicators.com. Tradingindicators.com is an online store for, as the name suggests, trading indicators. And we offer trading indicators for all kinds of, uh, of platforms, such as Metastock, of course, but we also offer them for TradingView, NinjaTrader, TradeStation, uh, NinjaTrade, and so forth. So 
all the our main platforms are covered. But um, perhaps what is a bit surprising if you don't know me yet is that my background is actually not in trading at all. I am a software engineer by training. And uh, for the longest part of my career, I was on a path to become a professor in software engineering. I went through all the, uh, the levels. I did my master's, my PhD, I had a postdoc uh, completed. I started teaching at uh, universities and so forth. I even have a professor, uh, I even have a profile at rate my professors if you want to look me up. Uh, but uh, throughout all this time, I was always very fascinated by, by trading. So I was doing this on the site. And, you know, after having done all the mistakes that everybody does in the beginning. I overtraded. I uh, took too much risk. I revenge traded. I traded when the odds were simply not in my favor. And after I've donated quite a fair amount to the market, I, I came to the conclusion that, wow, trading is hard and I need help. And back then, for me, needing help meant I need better tools, which helped me make better trading decisions. So as a software engineer, I started coding. And most of the tools in the very beginning, they were written for my own purpose, just for to help me make better trading decisions. And only at that point, when I realized, wow, they actually work. They allow me to make better trades. We then decided to create the online store trading indicators. And this is really how our story behind trading indicators started. And uh, by now, it's not just me anymore. I have a wonderful partner, Homa, who is, um, uh, also here today, and he's, she's manning the chat, and she's helped me develop all these great tools that we've created over the years, together with uh, our great developers, our mathematicians, traders, and our whole team behind trading indicators. All right, so, and I should also mention real quick before I get back to the topic that we not only build indicators, we also build trading dashboards, we build fully automated strategies, uh, trading scanners, and so forth. So this is uh, really a, well, a fully rounded approach. Okay, now back to the topic at hand. And um, before I get into this, just real quick as a reminder, if you trade, keep in mind that trading contains substantial risk and uh, you should only use risk capital, which is capital that if you lose it or should you lose it, it will not affect your lifestyle. When it comes to hypothetical performance or backtest results, we're going to see quite a few of them today. Keep in mind that these are not necessarily indicative of future performance. All right. Now, a small preview of what you're going to see. I'm going to give you, at the end of this talk, my trade of today. Actually, a trade I'm going to take next Monday when the market reopens. So it's going to be a long trade entered at 97.20 as part of a buy stop order with a target and a stop loss of the equity Duke Energy, which is in the S&P 500. And I've chosen this trade purposefully because it had all the components, at least in my book, which um, makes a promising trade entry. And I have used the tools which we have developed along with Metastock and specifically the great scanner of Metastock to identify this trade. And you know, it, took, it didn't take me more than a couple of minutes to come up with it. And how I did it and why I've chosen this trade will be the topic of this presentation. I'm gonna build up to this, so please stay tuned. And I'm gonna give you all the details of how and why I have chosen this trade. All right, so back to my original um, claim that is it possible to calculate some kind of odds before entering the trade, which basically will tell you uh, what the odds are of winning this trade or losing this trade. Now, the answer is, uh, can this be done? Well, the answer is it can be done. And this is thanks to a technology which we have developed uh, in the last years, and we call this the instant efficiency technology, which is a real-time which is real-time information projected directly on the chart, or in case of Metastock, as part of the expert commentary, which will tell you what have been the odds, historically speaking, of winning the long trades based on our signals and winning the short trades based on our signals. Now, you may say, hmm, 
you know, these are based on backtest results. Even though they're shown in real time, they're still based on historical data, they're based on backtest results. What is the meaning of that? Because, you know, if you remember, I just uh, told you guys that backtest results, as part of my disclaimer, are not necessarily indicative of future performance. So am I contradicting myself here? Are these odds actually meaningful? Well, we asked ourselves the exact same question. Because, you know, I've, I've read this disclaimer millions of times myself before we got even into this topic. So I was skeptical. We all were skeptical. So we've done something to um, basically get to the bottom of this. Is there any predictive power in having historical backtest data? So what we've done is to um, oh, basically did a really big case study to verify if there's power in these odds and if, if there's any truth in there too that the odds will help you make informed trading decisions. Well, let's see what this uh, intense study was that we performed. So here it is. Uh, starting from the beginning of 2022, we ran an intense back test. It wasn't just for one symbol, it was an entire portfolio test across 84 big US stocks, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, and so forth. It was based on a swing trading system, and the average trade duration was about one week, and I was trading long and short. And over the period of this back test, 6,827 signals were generated. Okay, so we had the system, and then we looked at the performance of the system. And this was the, well, the outcome. And you may say, now, wow, this is really underwhelming. This is not really great. This is quite awful, actually. And you're right. So that was the, what we call the unfiltered performance. The performance where every single signal resulted in a trade. So 6,827 signals resulted in 6,827 trades. And as you can see, the performance was not very good. So it was, uh, it was pretty bad. All right, so we said that's not very good. Let's see if we can improve on it. What we've done then is to filter our signals and only take the signals if the odds at the time when the signal occurred were in our favor. So this was the resulting performance. As you can see, there's a big, big difference. Now, all of a sudden, our losing system is not so much losing anymore. It's quite the opposite. So we only took a subset of the signals and only if the odds at the time of the signal were in our favor. So for example, if we had a signal, let's say in April, 2022, we were looking at these stats as of April, 2022. And if the stats were in our favor, we took the signal. And if not, we just, just we disregarded it. We didn't take the signal. So in the end, we only ended up taking about one third of the trades. And we call these the sweet spot trades because these were the trades which where the odds were in our favor. Now, this was very encouraging to us. It was like, wow, maybe there is some truth in looking at back test results. Maybe there's some value in it. So we took this as, as motivation and we developed a set of indicators based on that observation. All right. So and this is what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you what these indicators are and how they look like on Metastock. All right, so we call these uh, a set of self-aware indicators, which have predictive power to tell you what the odds are before entering them. Okay, so we have bundled up these indicators, and these are three indicators, so not too many, three indicators as the what we call the Power Bundle 360. So Bobby already mentioned it that Metastock is currently having a special about this. And yes, the Power Bundle 360 will be part of the special. So this bundle consists of three indicators and purposefully chosen three indicators. So and we had, there had some reasoning behind this. We have one indicator in the bundle, which is for trend trading. One is for finding pullbacks or reversals. And one indicator, the last indicator is for trading breakouts out of the sideways market. And by having these three different types of indicators, we believe we're giving you everything you need to have to trade all market conditions. You can trade trends, you can trade counter trends or reversals or breakouts, which happen often in sideways markets. So you're all set. And real quick, before I show you, show you examples, um, 
let me introduce these three indicators to, to you. So the first one is called one, two, three strike. It's our trend indicator. And it will give you a signal if three things come together. First of all, we need to have directionality. So price must move into one direction or the other for quite some time. The second uh, factor is that we need to have an increase of volume. And the third factor is an increase of volatility. And if all three things come together, an entry signal is generated. Okay, this is for trend trading. For counter trend trading, our indicator is called divergence cloud. And as the name suggests, it is based on divergence. If you remember, divergence is you know, a disagreement between price move and an underlying indicator. If they disagree, typically it's a telltale sign that, well, something is out of line, perhaps the price move will not continue for much longer and the reversal may be in place. And there are many forms of divergence out there, uh, RSI divergence, MACD divergence, and so forth. We've taken a slightly different approach. So we didn't take any of the common forms of divergence. Instead, we came up with a unique form which we call volatility divergence, which contrasts price move with underlying volatility. And if there is a disagreement, we either have bullish or bearish divergence. And as you will see, there's quite strong evidence that a pullback or a trend reversal may be in place or may be coming up very soon. So this is our second indicator. And the third one is for trading breakouts. And it is designed to identify what we call strong breakouts, which are breakouts which where the price will continue to move in the direction of the breakout for quite some time after the breakout has occurred. And of course, you as a trader can take advantage of that because you would simply enter in the direction of the breakout in the anticipation that price will continue. All right, so these are our three indicators and I know I've covered a lot of theory, so let's look at some charts. I'm gonna switch over to a meta stock. All right, so I'm gonna quickly move this in. There we go. All right, so this is meta stock and here we see a daily chart of CarMax, symbol KMX. And I went ahead um, before this presentation and I have applied our one, two, three strike indicator to this chart. All right. And probably the first thing that you can see, if, if let me zoom in a little bit, is that some bars are colored greenish and other bars are colored reddish. All right. And this is one thing that the indicator does it will color your price bars. And it will color bars greenish if the indicator detects that we are on an uptrend or reddish if the indicator detects that we are on a downtrend. So that's the first thing it does. I'm going to tell you what kind of trend are we in. The other thing that you can see is that every once in a while we have these bigger red arrows here or perhaps, if I can find one, these bigger green arrows. These are our, are our entry signals. And the indicator basically will tell you every once in a while when everything comes together that to either enter short or perhaps to enter long, which are entry signals that you can follow. All right, so now we have an entry signal, that's great. But uh, you know, once you're in a trade, what do you have to do? Well, you have to manage it. Eventually you have to exit the trade. And this is really just as important as entering into a trade. This is why all of our indicators they not only give you entry signals, but they will also give you exit suggestions, as you can see here. So basically telling you to you know, book partial profits along the way as price unfolds in the direction of the anticipated price move. So here for, for short entries, we have one main entry, a partial exit here, a partial exit here, here, and then a final exit here. And the number of partial exits can be configured in the parameters of the indicator. And the same for, uh, for long entries. Here we had a long entry, one partial exit here, and um, at some point uh, an entry signal in the opposite direction occurred, which is a sign for you to close your long position or the remaining long position at this point and to go short. All right, so this is basically how our trend indicator works. But this was really, ju really just the beginning of the story because you know, I haven't even talked about any odds yet. Uh, these are just signals. How do I know how good these signals are? I could 
I guess, look at them and manually guess how well they would have turned out. But you know, it's, it's quite hard to see if I have to scroll through all the chart to figure this one out. This is why we have built in statistics into the indicator itself. And then Metastock, you can open up these statistics by going to the Expert Advisor tab and then go to Commentary. And this will open up a sub panel, as you can see here. And the first thing that you will see is what have been, historically speaking, the success rates of this indicator applied to this particular chart, which is CarMax on the daily time frame. And we can see that uh, we had a long efficiency of 74%. Basically, our win rate for long trades or for long sequence was 74%, and for short trades, it was 75%. So it was quite similar both in the long and short direction. Now, what are these odds telling me? Well, first of all, they will tell you uh, how successful the sequence have been in the past, which I guess is important important information to know, but they also sometimes tell you if there is a big discrepancy between long trades and short trades. Sometimes you have a scenario where the long efficiency is perhaps at 80%, and the short efficiency may be at, I don't know, 30% or 40%. What does this tell you? What, does this, what kind of insight does this give you as a trader? Well, I think it is quite obvious. If the odds are so different, means that short trades have not really been working out, but long trades have been working out great. So what can you do? Well, you would only follow the long entries and ignore the short entries in such a scenario. Again, it will give you some insights of what to do and what to expect from your next trade. And as a logical person, you would only take the trade if it makes sense from a statistical point of view. All right, so that was one use case of the odds. But there's actually another one. Uh, like every other, like every indicator out there, also our indicators, they come with parameters. And you may think, hmm, maybe I can play around with my parameters a bit to see if I get a better signals. All right, let's try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the parameters for this indicator, which is here. I'm gonna go down to our power bundle, if I can find it. There we go, power bundle one, two, three, strike. This is the indicator. And I can now perhaps edit my settings. So there are a bunch of settings that I can manipulate. I'm not gonna explain what they mean. We have a whole masterclass and bootcamp record on this topic, but let me just play around a little bit, perhaps change the vol volume period parameter from uh, 52 to perhaps 25 and volatility period from 14 perhaps maybe to 30, maybe increase this, increase this a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna click OK, close it and reload the chart. And let's observe how our statistics will change. Right now it's at 74 and 75. So I'm gonna refresh. All right, and after a little time, uh, the refresh will be complete. And we can now see that the statistics update right away. With this parameter change, our success rates have increased actually to 76% on the long side and almost 80% on the short side. Oh, nice. Cool, that was pretty cool. So I get instant feedback as to whether a parameter change was beneficial to me or perhaps counterproductive. Huh? Otherwise, without these odds, without these statistics, you would not know, you would guess. You would base it on your gut feeling and your intuition, which oftentimes is not the best way to do it. It's better to use hard evidence. Okay, so you may, you may now think, well, this worked out in our favor. Perhaps let's change them one more time. All right, let me go back to the settings one more time. Uh, I decreased the volume period, so maybe let's decrease it even further, maybe to 15. We started at 52, then it was 25, now 15 perhaps. And maybe let's increase our volatility period perhaps to 45. It was at 14, then we had 30, now 45, let's see what happens. I click OK and I close it and refresh my chart. Let's see if this you know, has improved or will improve my situation with this indicator. So I do this, hmm, no, I made it worse. And this can happen as well. So sometimes you know, you know, a parameter change will make the, uh, the indicator perform worse. 
but at least now you know um, when this is the case or when it is not the case. Yeah. Um, all right, I already can uh, foresee what's your next question. Let me quickly go back to see if I can uh, anticipate this. Um, you probably agree with me that there is some meaning in having these odds because they will tell you, for example, whether the signals are working or not working, which is important to know. And they will also tell you whether a parameter change was beneficial to you or not. But at the same time, you may think, oh man, if I have to change the parameters one by one and you know, click OK and refresh the chart and see what the odds are. This is going to take too long. This is going to be so, so tedious. I'm not going to do it because I would need to, do, need to do it for every symbol. If I change symbols, I have to start from the beginning. If I change time frames, I have to start from the beginning. Man, it's too tedious. I give up. I will just use the default settings, which oftentimes are not the best ones to use. And I hear you, I completely agree. I would not do it myself either. It's, it's out of the question. It is too tedious, too tiresome, just not fun. Well, we've come up with a solution for this. We have developed a feature in our indicators which will take this tediousness away. It's called auto-optimization. And as the name suggests, auto-optimization is a feature which will find the best parameters for you. Wow, okay, let's see how this feature looks like. So I'm gonna go back to Metastock and let's enable this feature. So I'm gonna replace this indicator with the auto-optimizing version. So I'm gonna go to Expert Advisor, attach to find the new one, and I'm going to use the AO, auto-optimized version of one, two, three, strike. I click OK. It will reload and automatically it will now, it will take a little bit longer, but not too much. And once done, it will first of all show you what were the optimal, what are the optimal settings. So a volume period of 30, volatility period of 20, and these values for the other settings. So these are the optimal settings. And it will also tell you what are, after the optimization, the success rates. We can see here that in the optimization period, which are by default 1,000 bars, we had a success rate of around 85% for long trades and 88% even for short trades. And across all the bars on the chart, which are more than 1,000, we had an overall long efficiency of 80% and 88% for short trades. All right. So this is, I believe, uh, a feature which will make your life as a trader so much easier because it will do the tediousness, the tedious work for you so you don't have to. And guess what? Whenever I change symbols, whenever I change timeframes with this auto-optimization feature, it will run the auto-optimization right away, right there. So you don't, have to, don't even have to click anywhere. It will be done automatically for you. Okay, so. This was one, two, three strike uh, applied to CarMax, but this is really just the first example. Let me quickly show you, um, and I'm very excited about this one because you know, it relates to what uh, the go, no-go presentation was all about. Let me open up Pfizer. So I'm gonna go here and find Pfizer in my list. There we go. And also to this symbol, one, two, three strike, our trend trading indicator is applied. And once this is opened up, uh, you can first of all see let me just hide the, uh, the commentary here for a second. All right, so we can have a full view on the chart. And as you can see, well, the, it gives you all these nice entries with a short entry here, which worked out nicely, a long entry here. And this is all based on automated, um, on optimized signals. We had a short entry here and we took our, you know, our exits, one, Exit here, one exit here, one exit here, and our final exit, SFE. It's hard to read, but it's SFE here. So we are out of the short trade. And remember what the go no go conclusion was? Well, this short trend may be coming to an end and may reverse to the upside. There's a chance. And this is exactly what this indicator shows us as well. Our short trade finished. We have a final exit here. And on top of this, our oh, bars now turning green. Now, which is an indication to you that, well, this short trend may indeed come to an end. We don't have a long entry signal yet. 
uh, which you know it's not an end a trade yet, but at least it's a telltale sign for you to at least be careful and maybe not further engage into a short trade which you may have open at this point. Uh, so I found this fascinating that you know we came to the same conclusion, probably two very different indicators based on very different logic, but the conclusion at the end was the same. So that's that was a nice nice side story to uh, to this indicator. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up our next indicator, which is called Divergence Cloud. And for this, I'm going to open up a chart of OGN. And I want to explain how this indicator works. If you remember, Divergence Cloud is based on the principle of divergence. What you can see here, and let me just drag this up a little bit so we can see our ribbon down here as well. What you can see here is that some bars, again, are reddish or greenish. But unlike with a one to three strike, in this case, a reddish color indicates bearish divergence and the greenish color is bullish divergence. And our entry signals, they can only occur in phases of bearish divergence, if it's a short entry signal, or if it's a long entry signal in phases of bullish divergence. And we have exactly this on this chart. Let me just maybe zoom out a little bit. Here we had a nice long entry signal. Now, which turned out quite nicely until our exits here. Here we had a short entry signal, which was followed by a price move to the, to the downside. Here a long entry again, and which happened quite early on at the onset of the trend reversal, because this is exactly what this indicator is designed to do. Uh, we exit here at the opposite signal, then we are currently in a short trade with this indicator. And this is how our divergence cloud indicator works. And of course, also this indicator, it comes with our statistics. Now, you may think, oh, this only works for equities. I've shown you only equities and only on the daily time frame. So this is also a daily time frame. Well, actually, that is not the case at all. Our indicators, they will work on any asset class and any time frame. And so let me switch it up a little bit. Let me open up something completely different. Let me open up Bitcoin. I'm going to go here to my window. I'm going to open up Bitcoin on the five minute chart. So it's quite different. It's completely intraday. It's a five minute chart. And as you can see here, the indicator is applied to this intraday version of, uh, of a Bitcoin. And we can see we have our entries here, uh, short entries. And oftentimes they're really spot on at the onset of a price move. If you look at this one here, a short entry here, another short entry here, here a long entry which worked out beautifully and we are still currently in a long entry scenario as well with Bitcoin on the five minute chart, a market which is actually still open because it trades 24 seven. And if we go to our expert commentary, we can see that, um, or we will see in a second, we can see what are the success rates and you can see that they are fairly high here as well again this is an intraday time frame at 79 percent on the long side and 68 percent to the short side um, for the last 1000 bars now let me switch from the five minute time frame to the one minute time frame all right so i'm going to do this as you can see here everything updates so of course the entry signals will update yeah Let's see what we have here. So we have our entry signals, they updated. Uh, our statistics will update and also our parameters chosen will update because now the time frame has changed. The underlying price data has changed. Therefore, also our optimal configuration of the indicator probably will change. But luckily, our auto optimization feature will take care of that for you. It will automatically find the best parameters for you. And maybe one more time, let me change to the 10 minute time frame. Again, everything will update. And let's have a look at what we have here. We, for example, can see that we had a beautiful uh, long entry signal just a few uh, hours ago, which would have worked out quite nicely uh, on Bitcoin on the intraday time frame. And again, we have updated statistics because now, um, you know, we use a different configuration. We have different entry signals and uh, everything is updated. And thanks to our auto optimization, um, you know, the indicator will find the best parameter itself. So you don't have to. 
Okay, so real quick, and I know I'm running a bit out of time, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. Let's look at our last indicator, which is volatility crusher. Okay, for this, I'm going to open up Starbucks. Again, we're going back to the equities. Starbucks on the daily time frame. I'm going to explain this indicator to you real quick. All right, so here we have Starbucks. And again, you can see that uh, we have these bigger arrows every once in a while, which are either long entries or, if I go back a little bit, which are short entries. Unlike the other two indicators, we have for this indicator exactly two profit targets, target one and target two. So you can see here, and the same for the upside. Sometimes we get stopped out. So here, for example, we had a long entry, we hit target one, but then we get stopped out. Our stop is being hit, and you can see this here. And what these levels are, where our two targets are, and where our stop level is, you can see this in the expert commentary. So if I go here to expert commentary, you will be able to see exactly uh, where these levels are, along with all the other information about the indicator. It's just opening up, I believe. Oh. I think a pop-up just came up. Give me one second. <laughs> Metastock sometimes opens up uh, on a different screen. So let me go back here one more time. Expert commentary. It's going to open up the commentary and we can see exactly like with the other indicators, what have been our um, optimal settings? What has been our success rate? And this is my favorite indicator because it has the best success rates of all of them. And if we have an entry signal, you will also see here where are my two targets and where is my stop level. And let me just quickly comment on why this is my favorite indicator. So let me hide this commentary because, you know, it doesn't give you entry signals very often, but if it does, oftentimes it is really spot on. So here we had a, here we had a short entry, another short entry here. Here we had a long entry, it worked, it worked out. Here another long entry. It hit the first target, then we get stopped out. Another long entry, another one there, a long entry here, which I guess stopped out because we didn't hit the target. But as you can see, it doesn't give you many signals, but if it does, the success rate is quite high. And it is my favorite indicator because I always like to go for quality rather than quantity. And guess what? With the Metastock scanner, even though signals might be rare, you will always find symbols which currently do have a signal. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So this is how volatility crusher works. And perhaps real quick, one more example. I'm going to move on to um, another exciting topic. Here's AON. As you can see here again, it you know it picks up signals very nicely. So here a long entry signal which hit. It's both targets, a short entry signal, which hits the targets, long entry, and so forth. And none of these indicators are repainting. So these signals, they occur and they stay there forever. So they don't repaint after the fact, which of course would be some form of cheating, which is not the case here. Okay, so let me go back to my slides because I want to conclude something together with you. Now, we've seen how our indicators work and I'll give you the demo. Now, let me quickly uh, summarize real quick. What you've seen is that all our indicators, they give you clear entry signals and exit signals. They will literally run on every time frame and every asset class. So whether you're a day trader, a swing trader, or an investor, it will, um, yeah, you can use these indicators. They all come with these statistics, which will help you to make informed trading decisions and they all come with auto optimization, which will find the best parameters for you. So you don't have to. So this tedious work goes away. But you may wonder, and I maybe alluded at this already, um, how do I know which symbols currently have signals? Well, the answer is scanning. That's easy. But there's a second question. How do I now know, what, now I know that we some symbols have signals, how do I know which of these signals are the most probable one to follow? Well, let's see how this can be done. The answer lies in, lies in using a very sophisticated scanning technique, which we call third generation scanning. I'm gonna get back to this in a second. So let me go back to Metastock real quick. And I'm going to open up the Power Console, which opened up right here. And when you 
have access to our indicators, you will also have access to our predefined explorations, which will allow you to scan for symbols with signals based on our three indicators, based on one, two, three strike, divergence, cloud, and volatility crusher. So I've run these scans uh, this after or this evening after the market closed, and here are the results. Let me quickly find them. I'm not going to run the scan right now because we don't have enough time, but these were the results. Let's just pick divergence cloud as an example. So I ran them on different time frames, but let's use divergence cloud signals on the daily time frame. And this was the result of the scan I was seeing. So I see all the signals here, all the symbols that I scanned through. And I also see, just simply by sorting these columns, which of these signals have, for example, long entry signals. And I can see this by this one written in the cell. So DT, DTE Energy had a long entry signal. Duke Energy, as we know, this is my trade of the day, has a long entry signal. And many others as well. You can see it here. So we probably had maybe 25 long entry signals. Yeah, everything with the one here, and then it stopped. All right, so that's quite a lot. That's 25 signals, and I only scanned through roughly 1,000 stocks. Now, imagine I would have scanned through 10,000 stocks. I maybe would have had 200 entry signals. So how do I know which of them I should further investigate? Which of them have you know, the best chance from the get-go to be successful? Well, what we have done is we have integrated our success rate into the scan results. You can see it here right away. It's this column here, auto-optimized long efficiency. There's some other columns here as well, which don't worry about it. This will all be explained in your uh, in the masterclass, in the bootcamp. What you can do now is by simply go through this column here and focus on the one with the highest statistics. So 79%, 74%, 85%. So it's very easy to, for you to find the one of the highest statistics. And what I've done is uh, I did exactly this and I identified Duke Energy as the one with the highest statistics. So this allows you to rank your signals by their quality. And again, it's a very powerful tool to make your life easier to save your time. Because that way you can sort your signals by their quality. I could have sorted it to find this one and focus only on the ones with the highest efficiency. So let's say I'm trading equities, maybe I can only go long. I would only consider the long efficiency. I will identify Duke Energy as my best bet. Then I can focus then on that particular symbol. I can open up the chart, do my um, additional technical analysis to see if that signal actually is, um, is a good signal or not. And this is exactly what I have done to find my trade of the day. I ran the scan and I looked at all these results for divergence cloud, one to three strike and volatility crusher, these three. I sorted by the efficiency rating. I focused on the highest one and I looked at all three winners and I eventually picked Duke Energy based on some additional analysis of what I have done. But at least this way, I was able to focus on symbols with signals with the highest success rate from the get-go. Again, eliminating a lot of other symbols uh, which are not as promising automatic me, automatically for me. Yeah? And if you open up the chart of Duke Energy, let me just do this right here, we can see, I move this away, that in fact, Duke Energy does have a long entry signal of divergence on its last price bar. Again, this is a daily chart. Yeah? And what I've done now is I, um, you know, I like this chart. I like the how well-timed the entry signals have been. So here, a short entry worked out beautifully. Here, we had a long entry. Again, we picked up the swing of that market very nicely. Here, we had a short entry. Again, the market followed through. And now we have a long entry. And I anticipate, based on this, um, that you know the market timing will be accurate again, and the market will further swing up. And uh, since we are on the weekend, uh, I do require that uh, price needs to follow through on Monday when the market reopens. This is why I will enter into this trade with a buy stop order at this level here of this yellow bar, which is just a bit above the high of the previous bar. So if I double click this one, we can see I set it at 97.20. I set my 
profit target around this level of resistance here. So I don't want to trade into resistance at 900, uh, 104. And my stop loss just below the sw recent swing low at around $91. And I was able to identify this trade as a promising trade using our indicators and the Metastock scanner very quickly. Typically, this would take hours to find because there's so many symbols, but I could do this in less than one hour using these tools. All right, so let me quickly go back to my slides. So this is how the scanner works. And just one reminder for the scanner. Uh, a typical scanner just scans for entry signals with no indication of what, that, what is the quality of these signals. So we brought this one step further. We also indicate by showing the statistics in the scan results, how well the sequence have been working out uh, so far, directly in the scanner. But it didn't stop there. There's one more thing we've done. We actually also use an, the optimization within the scanner. So we're not using the same setting for every symbol that we scan through. We are using the optimal setting settings on a per symbol basis within the scanner. And I believe this is really the next generation, generation 3.0 of scanning. So in plain old scan, scanning 1.0, we use the same settings for all the symbols, and we don't differentiate between the signals. Generation two, we differentiate between the signals by um, giving them quality numbers or success rates, which allow, allows us to rank them. And generation three is we use an optimized set of settings on a per symbol basis. And this is what you've seen right now. So I really think this brings it to the next level. And this is how I was able to identify this trade of the day. Now, you may wonder what's next. So, whew, we've done a lot. Uh, are we done with our research? Are we giving up, not giving up, but are we satisfied now? Well, as a, as a former scientist, you will never be satisfied, you're always going to be curious. And one thing that we're currently investigating is what we call is super signals through confluence. I'm gonna spend one second on this. Uh, confluence is a phenomena if, which occurs when multiple indicators forecast at the same time, the same move. So basically when the stars align. And we've tried this out and the results were quite astonishing. We have created in our research lab just recently a super signal version of our power bundle indicators, which looks for confluence, for agreement of all of our three indicators. Yeah? And real quick, just for one second, I'm going to give you a preview. This is really just a preview of it, how this looks like. So let me open up, let me look up, open up uh, pool.o just to, so you can see how it looks like. So here, again, we have errors on the chart. Sometimes they have different sizes and they indicate how much confluence do we have. So a Bronx entry error, error like a Bronx to the short side, means in our definition that you know two indicators agree and the other one doesn't disagree. A gold signal, for example, means that all three indicators need to agree. And we have even more rare signals, which are our platinum signals. And you can see it here. So this is where we're heading next with our research and of our development, looking for confluence between our indicators. And of course, auto optimization will be part of this as well. All right, now, if you're wondering uh, if these indicators are for you, well, the answer is quite simple. Uh, probably yes, because it doesn't matter whether you are a day trader, a scalper, a swing trader or investor, it doesn't matter because our indicators, they will work on all time frames and chart types. Yeah, they will also work, work on every asset class. On, we've seen equities here, we've seen uh, cryptos. They will also work on FX, on futures, uh, on indices and so forth. So no problem there. Uh, if you treat any of these, uh, you are all set with these indicators. Or if you're like me, and if you believe that sophisticated tools can make your life easier, well, then these indicators will definitely make your life easier because they will auto-optimize for you. They will do the sophisticated scanning for you and they will give you entry signals and exit signals and these success statistics. So everything you need to know to make an informed trading decision. Now, we have put together 
a special offer for you. As a, as a big thank you for being here at this great Metastock event. And you will get four live and for a limited time as we're moving to a subscription model, but right now we're still offering it for live. You will get our three indicators, which are one, two, three strike, divergence cloud and volatility crusher with the auto optimization you've seen and with the statistics module, which you've also seen. So you get all these. You will also get our masterclass and bootcamp, which will tell you all you need to know how to configure them, how to run tests and so forth. Yeah, we get all this. You will also get, and this is only, only for this event, got, this is gonna go away, our current version of the super signals indicator, which is still in development. You're gonna get it, and once it's completed 100%, you will also get that version for life. And this will go away as this is going to become a separate product. But for now, as a special offer, you will also get our super signals version. And there's one more thing. We will also add to this mix our trend radar indicator. I didn't have time to talk about it in this presentation, but let me just give you a quick preview. It's this indicator down here, which will allow you to see at a glance what the medium, what the short, medium, and long-term trends are doing. <clears throat> and tool to easily identify pullbacks, strong trends, and overextended trends. Uh, again, we have a tutorial around this as well. We're gonna throw this into the mix as well. So if you want to take advantage of this, um, simply uh, yeah, go to the uh, link that Bobby will give you in a second, and uh, he will, or his sales team, will hook you up with our power bundle with auto optimization and with all these extra goodies uh, in the mix. Again, the Super Signals AO, uh, this will definitely never be offered like this again, as this will become our separate indicator. All right, Whew. I've done a lot of talking. Uh, Bobby, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, let me take a look here. So let's see, we have, sorry, I'm reviewing some of them here. Jeff has been answering a lot for us. Uh, Hannah wants to know if you utilize uh, Anchor DWAP in any of the indicators. I'm going to give the same answer <laughs> as my previous speaker. Uh, I can't give away the logic, but uh, no, we don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the same answer. Uh, uh, that's totally fine. Great. Thank you. Um, and then I'm looking in our go-to webinar here. Uh, Vincent wants to know when the super signals will become available with Metastock. Very soon. So, and then it's going to be a separate product. So this is uh, really an offer only available for this event. Um, wow, fantastic, yes. Okay, great. Um, and someone wants to know, what if they already have the Power Bundle 360? Then you can just reach out to me and we can work something out, yeah. Okay, sounds great. That'll be on the, we can deal with this on a one-to-one -one basis, depending on what you have from the Power Bundle 360. And one thing I forgot to mention, Bobby, is that uh, for these super signals, this also comes with a scanner to scan for super signals. And we have these different, four different levels, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, and the ability to define your own super signals. So lots of exciting stuff coming up there. Yeah, hey, well, I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, with that said, I, I guess I will say to anyone, Daniel mentioned uh, the link, so if you're interested in just the Power Bundle 360 and getting this offer that you see on your screen, metastock.com forward slash, oh, sorry, I realized my mic is kind of far away, metastock.com forward slash PB360. Uh, and that'll get you the Power Bundle 360 as just that system. I know it's fantastic and you would uh, likely love it. Um, or we have the, the full bonus offer where, where you get everything from all of the speakers today. That's an option as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I think that kind of rounds things up. Here, well, is there anything else? No, that, that's it for me. I'll, I'll thank you so much for um, listening to me. I know it's not always easy because, you know, as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm German. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I thank yeah. you for staying on and being patient. And 
yeah, listening to hear me and hopefully you found it interesting and uh, be happy to um, do, yeah, get all of your course. questions. If you have questions, uh, simply, uh, I forgot to mention this, you can also go to our tradingindicators.com. There's a contact form uh, on the side. Drop me a note. I'll read all of them and your feedback is always welcome. So, Great. Guys. Yeah, Enjoy I definitely recommend checking yes. out his website, everyone. Uh, and also, I'll say on the contrary, we actually get a lot of feedback that uh, you yeah, say because you're German, I know you're referring to your accent, but a lot of people say that you make things so easy to understand. Uh, so I <laughs> like having you on for all of our presentations. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Bobby. That's awesome. <laughs> thanks, of guys. Course, Daniel, have a nice have a conference. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep. All right, everyone. I will take back over here. <laughs> I, uh, someone's mic is not muted. The conference, sorry, my page closed down here. Bear with me, guys, for just one moment. Hey, Jeff, can you make me the presenter? I'm not seeing my GoToWebinar options. Thank you. All right. So uh, here's actually the web page here for uh, metastock.com forward slash PB360, if you are interested in learning just a little bit more about the Power Bundle 360 and getting that add-on uh, and the promotions from today's event, uh, you can come and find that here and save the $500 on it. Uh, or if we jump back over into my slideshow, there's Daniel. So. I mean, he always does such a great job of covering this and going over everything. Um, and his slides are superior to mine, I would say. But just to kind of recap, I mean, it has multiple methods in there. And now there's even more included because they're constantly adding on to this program. Um, so you have the divergence cloud, the volatility crusher, one, two, three strike, plus so much more uh, with it. Uh, another thing that I like to touch on to make everyone aware of, not only with the PB360, but with all of our different systems, or if you're just on a Metastock subscription, uh, we also give you unlimited free white glove setup and installation service, uh, meaning we reach out to all of our customers or when you first sign up, you know, we can schedule a session to do a one on one uh, where we'll walk you through the platform. We'll help get everything set up for you, show you kind of how everything works and customize it to your style. If you don't want to look at the hundreds of thousands of securities available in Metastock, maybe you only care about your specific uh, market, whether that be country or continent, uh, we can kind of help customize that for you. We also offer you free unlimited support and you have that support available uh, not only on the phone, uh, but also online via like a live chat room uh, and as well as through email too. So whatever suits you best, we're happy to help. Uh, and we have tons of recorded content as well. So with the Power Bundle 360, we have some great uh, boot camp materials from Daniel where he goes really in depth into how everything works and how exactly to utilize all of those different tools inside of Metastock. And then on top of that, uh, here at Metastock, we've produced a lot of content just to help you in general. So if you want to know just how our charts work, how a scan works, the basics, or the more uh, in-depth things like how custom formulas work and things of that nature, we have tons of recorded content uh, available for you to go through, or of course, our support team um, is there for you too. Yeah, as he said, uh, normally over $1,500, but it's just uh, 997 or 995, I believe, during this uh, promotion, you do get a 30-day money-back guarantee with that. So if you're not entirely happy with it, uh, go ahead and give us a call or or send us an email and say you want to return it. We'll give it back to you, no questions asked. We believe in our products, um, so so we're not afraid to put that out there for you guys.
Uh, and if you're interested in ordering or you have more questions, we have somebody waiting on standby right now. Metastock.com forward slash sales chat is going to give you uh, access to one of our experienced representatives and they're happy to answer all your questions. They can help set you up on a trial of Metastock. They can answer your questions about all the different products that you've seen today or about you know anything in general. Feel free to join in to that chat room uh, and let them help you out. All right, and then now we've actually seen all of the main products from today's bundle. Uh, and so I really wanna let you guys know just how great of a deal this is. You've seen uh, those different products, like $1,500 normally for PV360, as well as the Go No Go. Um, Steve Bigelow's Candle Profit System, you know, one of our top rated systems, the best seller of the last few years. So all of these, some of our best, most premium packages that we offer, um, you're looking at saving about 50%, and this is only available during this event right now. So uh, metastock.com forward slash APAC hyphen deal to order online or visit our chat room, metastock.com forward slash sales chat and take advantage of that. Uh, the other benefits up here, so I've told you how much free training that we have. Uh, we are also offering as part of this deal, a three month premium subscription to learn metastock.com. It's actually a separate company that has dedicated itself towards teaching metastock and the ins and outs of how everything works. And he also has uh, training videos that are in depth on many of the different add-ons, including some of those from today's presentation. Uh, that's Kevin Nelson, who you see on the top right of your screen here. And he does a great job he also does three live weekly sessions where you can join these sessions live and talk to him and go through everything. Uh, or if you have uh, interest in like coaching, or sorry, not coaching, in learning Metastock specifically, he also does some one-on-one -on -one programs that are separate from Metastock. So a little different style, just to give him a plug. Um, there's that too, and we include three months access to his learnmetastock.com service as part of this bundle to make sure that you're up and running with everything that you need. I mean, you're not gonna look at saving a better deal on this at any time, and the fact that you get the 30 days money back guarantee, no questions asked, there's really hasn't been a better time uh, to jump on board for these systems. Well, now that uh, we've kind of gone through all of that, uh, it's time for my portion of today's presentation. So as many of you know, if you've been hanging around today or come to some of our other like international events, I'm Bobby Hiller. I'm the international business development rep here at Metastock. I've got my backup, my boss, my leader, my friend in the studio behind me, Jeff Gibby. Uh, he's helping out today with everything we need. He's been my mentor through a lot of this. So uh, props to him. Thanks, Jeff, for being here, uh, you know, on your Friday night with us or for a lot of you on your Saturday morning. Uh, and today, you know, I'm going to do a demonstration just kind of on Metastock, showing you guys some more of the basics in there, and then also getting into um, Zenith as well, as that is uh, something I feel that we don't really share enough. And I think you guys would really enjoy uh, a lot of the things that we have to offer in there. So I'm going to show you just kind of a common workflow you could go through uh, if you're using the Metastock software, kind of what that would look like and, and how to combine that with our Zenith service. Uh, as well. So with that being said, I am actually going to take off these headphones because I'm getting some static in there. Oops. Apologies if my hair is a bit of a mess from wearing those, but we'll go ahead and just run through, uh, run with it. So today's demonstration, I got to read my disclaimer real quick again before I jump too far into things. It is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. I'm not giving you any recommendations to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any strategies or information provided in connection uh, with the company. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and kind of get into things here. So yes, the Metastock Power Tools and Zenith, that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, I know some of you are joining uh, and might not have heard of Metastock before. I also know that a lot of you are already Metastock customers and we're happy to have you. Well, just to give you guys a little information 
you know, Metastock was initially founded uh, in 1982. So we've been around for over 40 years. And in that, I mean, you can see the floppy disk up there. So really we kind of help pioneer a lot of technical, excuse me, analysis software. Uh, and we've really, you know, we've been in the business for a long time and we'd like to take our customers feedback uh, seriously. And so there's a reason that, you know, we're so well known in the industry and there's a reason that we've been around uh, for so long. And I'm hoping to show you some of those reasons uh, today. So we were purchased by Reuters back in 1995. I'm sure almost all of you are familiar with Reuters. Um, they are now known as Refinitiv, but they're one of the world's most reliable um, and as I said, well-known <laughs> providers of data and news. And so we're happy to have been partnered or sorry, I guess even purchased by them back in 1995. Uh, but then we we released our first real-time data feed based on the Reuters technology for Metastock uh, in 2005. And then we released Metastock Zenith back in 2012. So it's been over a decade uh, that we've had the Zenith product released now too. Uh, and I should say we did actually divest from uh, Thomson Reuters back in 2013. As mentioned, they're now known as Refinitiv but we are still partnered with them. So they, uh, our data still comes directly from them. So you know you're getting a trustworthy, reliable feed from us. Uh, also the Zenith service that I'll be showing you guys later on today. I mean, that comes from their uh, billion dollar, literally over a billion dollars went into the creation of it, uh, Icon platform. And we offer that service via Zenith at just a fraction of the cost for private uh, retail traders such as, your, uh, such as yourself. Uh, also, I want to, you know, plug, this is one of our sponsors today, Stocks and Commodities Magazine, and, you know, we're glad to have them as a sponsor, and one of the big reasons of that, too, is all of the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine have rated us as the best analysis software for over 30 years in a row now, um, so, and that's in our in our price category, and then for the Metastock Realtime and Zenith, you know, which just came out uh, just over 10 years ago, we've also been rated number one for over 10 years uh, with that platform too. So uh, that should give you a little background information on Metastock. You should know that, hey, we've been around, we're a trustable, reliable source. Um, and and yeah, we're happy to, to have those as some of our partners. So the main topics we're covering today, and um, I, I know I'll maybe be moving through these a little bit fast, uh, so apologies, but I'll try to make sure that you're still able to understand me and what I'm kind of going through today. But I want to show you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, let me actually get a drink here. I have something in my throat. So I'm going to show you guys, how do I find securities to trade? What systems should I use? How do I test these systems before I get into a trade? And how can I learn more about, say, like a company uh, before I place my trades or get some news or information on them? So we're going to cover all those topics today. Uh, all right. And so this means we're going to jump into Metastock. Oops. Let's get that opened up here. All right. So I have kind of a lot um, on the screen here. This is actually something I would have transitioned into. Normally, what I like to do is let people know, hey, uh, Metastock can be a very basic charting platform, like you've probably seen in many other places, but I'm going to build it up a little bit and show you guys why it's unique and why it's something uh, you should have in your toolkit. So here we are with just a really standard um, chart. You know, you have your pricing over here on the right. Uh, you have the date down here on the bottom. Nothing too fancy. You've probably seen this all over. And yeah, that's that's totally fine. Well, what makes Metastock unique is how you can customize it to meet your specific needs and also um, just to meet your personal appearance um, ratings, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can make it look good uh, or customize it to be however you want it to be. That's what I'm getting at here. Uh, and, and to show you a few things about it here, so I'm gonna just double click on this bar chart here real easy and show you guys all the different types of uh, pricing styles that we have built into Metastock. So maybe you like candlesticks. Okay, so I can uh, go ahead and apply a candlestick here. Uh, well, maybe you wanna get even more information out of your chart. A lot of people uh, you know, think with the candlestick, you can 
you can get a lot more than you can with just like a bar chart or a line chart or something of that nature. Uh, and so really these different types of pricing styles and tools are just to make reading your chart easier. And we have a lot of things incorporated into Metastock to really make reading your charts um, a lot easier for you. Uh, one of those being um, some of these customization techniques. So what I'm actually gonna do is put this, oops, back at defaults. So candlesticks, so how I like to look at my candlesticks is like this. So you're able to set like the up color, the down color on these, the up fill and the down fill. And you can also change like your transparency on this. So now I'm getting even more visual data on my chart with these different settings. And it's set up the way that I like to view data uh, as well. And I can choose like on the up down mode, uh, whether that's uh, based off of the open to the close price or the close to the close price. Maybe, um, you know, that varies for a lot of different people. So we give you the option of how you're maybe used to seeing it in your broker or other platforms, however it may be there or however you may want it to be, likely that option's here in Metastock for you. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys that. But I know even still you're like, okay, well, hey, my broker also lets me change the color and, and choose my different, um, price styles, even if I bet your broker probably doesn't have these other options like the Heiken Ashi or three line break and things like that. But still, there's more tools here in Metastock. So one of the great things is just built in right out of the box, you get access to hundreds of different indicators. So here's a big list of many of those with some of our most used up here at the top, such as the MACD histogram. That's a really um, you know, popular indicator and this is in a histogram format. So what I'm gonna show you guys so I'm just gonna drag that and drop it here onto my chart. Of course, it gives me options to customize it however I may like. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. It was smart enough to know that, hey, when you're looking at a MACD histogram, normally this goes kind of into its own separate window. So it did that for me. And now what we're looking at uh, is that histogram. And I can see here, um, you can see when there's different crossovers. And just to talk a little bit more on this, I know it's a common indicator, the moving average convergence divergence, but just in case you didn't know, when you get a crossover with your signal line, that's often generating like a buy or sell signal. There's also um, options in here to look at to see if the market may be oversold or overbought and look at uh, different trending uh, indicators as well. And so, yeah, a, a lot of people might have this on some of their other charts or other indicators, but still, you know, they're finding that they're having to take a moment to really review it to understand what they're looking at. Well, this is where Metastock kind of starts to take a unique turn that you don't get with many other platforms or where really any platforms. Nowhere else are you going to find the expert advisor. Now, um, we can access that expert advisor in a few ways, but what I like to do is just click the little man with the hat here. Do you have to have a nice fancy hat like that to be an expert advisor? I don't know, but that's okay. We have it on our guy here. Uh, and what I'm gonna show you guys is if I come down and find the MACD in here by Metastock and I attach this to my chart and I'm gonna hit close, now you'll see something unique just happened. And what that is, is it populated uh, signals onto my chart. And let me maybe zoom in here to make this a little, easier to see. So when I zoom in, you'll notice where these come in at. I'm gonna grab a line here to show you guys. So when you have a cross over here on the MACD histogram, it's telling me that right up on my price chart. Hey, this just crossed down, excuse me. So we have a sell signal and uh, here's a cross up. You know, that's pricing's kind of a little hard to see. So this is another reason it's nice to have this up on the chart here because you might not know exactly what's going on when your lines are so close on the histogram, but it's very easy to read and see on your chart of Metastock up here saying, hey, there was just a MACD sell signal. Right here, we had a buy signal. You'll also notice that it put this nice little trust uh, trust trend ribbon uh, onto the chart as well, telling me, hey, uh, this is in a bullish zone utilizing uh, the MACD and this is in a bearish zone, et cetera. Um, so it gives you all of that information just right up on your price chart, makes it really easy to see. Uh, but that's not all, there's more than just that. Oh, I'm trying to turn off my line here, actually. Let's click on that arrow, the correct one. Uh, and that is with these expert advisors, you often get um, expert commentary as well. Oh, I already attached the advisor. What I was meaning to do was turn on my commentary here. Uh, so that's what I've done. 
And you'll notice once I open this up, the MACD by Metastock, <coughs> uh, it's giving me some information on it. This triangle right here means I'm on this day. So this is saying th for 331 on the um, SPY here, it's telling you the close price, the change value, the MACD value, uh, and where the signal line is at. It's also giving you information on this indicator. And keep in mind, we have hundreds of these built into Metastock. I'm just using a real basic example, um, but also like these, uh, this expert commentary, you're gonna find this on all the different add-ons that are in uh, the bundled package that we offered today. So the Steve Bigelow's Candle Profit system has this. Um, the Go No Go trading system has it, as well as Power Bundle 360. This is the reason so many uh, experts, individuals, just traders in general choose Metastock is because you get unique tools like this uh, where you can come in and, and learn about these different trading systems. So currently the MACD is bullish since it's trading above its signal line. That's what it's telling me here. It let me know uh, that it crossed above its signal line eight periods, uh, or sorry, eight periods ago. And since the MACD crossed its moving average, uh, the price has increased by 2.63% um, and has ranged from, it's telling me the high and low. I won't go through all of this, but it'll also tell you like uh, information on over bought and oversold uh, conditions as well as divergence. Now, let me actually go ahead and just move this indicator. I can do that by clicking up here and it'll jump from day to day. So maybe you wanna get information about a system, what it's saying each day, or you're trying to go to a different candlestick pattern in the chart or sorry, in the Candle Profit System 2.0. Another really easy option is just to click onto my chart here once uh, it knows that I'm trying to look at a different day for my commentary. So what I did is I moved over to this um, uh, and it's giving me information on it for that day. Uh, so if you wanna come in and look at the different signals specifically and see what they're saying that day, it's really easy to do so and jump through and look at the commentary. Uh, so that right there is one of the great unique tools that we have in Metastock that expert advisor, the expert commentary, the easy way to customize your chart here to make it look just how you wanna do it, uh, want it to look, and to give you this additional guidance on your, on your trades and on your charts that you're not gonna find elsewhere. Uh, but that's not all that Metastock does that you're not gonna find in very many other places, and we do it better than most too. Uh, but let's answer some of those other questions I said I would help you to answer today, uh, such as, all right, well, you know, how do I find something to trade. Okay, maybe I know that I wanna use this MACD system uh, to buy and sell, but well, am I supposed to look at a thousand different charts every single day to go in and find which ones are giving me signals that day? Well, no, we don't expect you to do that. We have a really uh, easy way for you to be able to go in and find those trades. And I'm going to demonstrate that here with our Metastock Explorer. So I've just opened up our Power Console here and I've jumped into the Explorer to show you guys this tool. And uh, what we are going to do here is come into the search. I'm gonna type in MAC so that it knows I'm looking for the, the MACD. Now, hey, I wanna maybe find a security today that's generating a buy signal. So how might I do that? All I have to do is click on this here and it even says, uh, I'm pointing at my screen, my monitor over here, but uh, this is the uh, display securities that just generated an MACD buy signal. Well, that's exactly what I want to do. So now what we can do is we can jump down here into our uh, indicator list, and we have tons of different instruments and things that you can access in here. You can also kind of customize this to just show the data that you want. Uh, let's go ahead and just look at top world indices. This is gonna be a really fast, quick scan here. Uh, I'm going to turn on this filter because I forgot to do that earlier today when I was demonstrating this. If we're going to load 1,250 records, uh, that's about five years worth of data uh, for traders. And let's go ahead and click uh, Start Exploration. Now you'll notice just how fast this goes. So you can scan through hundreds or thousands of securities uh, in relatively a very quick amount of time. And you'll also see that it has rejected 94.2% um, of the securities and that's okay. Rejected just means that, hey, this uh, has rejected here specifically 82 out of these 87 charts. So I don't have to waste my time looking at 82 of those charts uh, if I'm only interested in finding a buy signal for a specific system. In this example, it's the MACD. Maybe for you, it's the Power Bundle 360 uh, or 
the Steve Bigelow Candle Profit system or the Go No Go system, or maybe you want to set up explorations for all three of those to see securities that are only giving you options on a buy criteria for all three of those add-ons at the same exact time, which is something you can do uh, with Metastock. It gives you unique tools and ways of doing that. And actually, just to kind of demonstrate that here, uh, if you were to go into here, so you could add, hey, we want to look at the go, no go. We want to look at the CPS only major patterns in there. And we want to combine that with the 360, um, one, two, three strike. And then I could say, I could run an exploration for all three of these at the same time where all three of them run their own unique scans and give me results for that. Or I could also choose the option to use the results from the preceding exploration, meaning if it if my criteria is filtered from one and it gives me a list of results, then the next scan only runs on those results. That's going to make the scan faster and meaning that's only uh, matching up to what you had results from on the previous one. Just make sure that the types of scans that you are running are all, you know, what you want them to be for that combination to work because, uh, uh, yeah, you don't want to select like a short scan on one and a long scan on the other to find results of those combined. Uh, so maybe in those types of cases you would do um, use the selected instruments for all explorations. But I know I'm kind of jumping around here, so let me get back into the, the flow of things. So we'll just keep with this example for now, uh, our MACD buy signal. So this was the results that came from that scan, and now it's giving me a, a lot of information here. I should clarify the Explorer, it's not designed to only give you buy and sell signals, but it can also give you a lot of other criteria. You can run like performance scans, any sort of scan really that you're, uh, if you're wanting to get information out of a set of securities, the Explorer is going to allow you to do that. So not only does it tell me what has a buy signal for the MACD, but this specific scan, it also tells me what the close price is, uh, the value of the MACD, the previous, it lets me know the value on the moving average and the percent above the MACD. You can also do scans like telling you, okay, hey, this security has increased in value over the last three days. Um, in order, you can search for a scan like, okay, I only want to see things that are in between $5 and $10 a share, or I only want to look at things that have over 200,000 average daily volume on them, um, or things of that nature too. So there's lots of different ways that you can utilize the Explorer. One of the most used ways often, I would say, at least for me, is searching for like buy or sell signals though. So that's what this is an example of here. And uh, you can also simply double click on one of these securities to open up a chart. So I actually have the default chart here set as uh, a magic trader. So I open that signal up and it's giving me the magic trader background here, but that is also actually really easy to change. You can just come in uh, to your charts here and that's applying the magic trader uh, template. If I come in here, I could change this though to let's say a MACD histogram. All right, and now I always get confused because I don't keep the toolbar on this screen here, so I have to click into it this way. <laughs> but now if I open up a security from my list, it'll open up my default, which is the MACD. So you can also set it up to make it really easy, have your charts opening up on the type of scan that you're looking for, or just have them open up on a clean chart, and then you can apply your templates, whatever you wanna do. So uh, with that said though, so that, signal. Let me zoom in. This actually opened up a wide window of data. Maybe it would be easier if I just drag this little tool here. Man, and just look look how nice those charts look, guys. Come on. That's a reason right there to choose Metastock. So uh, we're zooming in here, and you can see on that, uh, we had that buy signal right here uh, on the 29th, which is what I had the scan set for. So I didn't have to go searching through all of those different securities that were in my scan. I can just open up the ones that have the result for the day that I set it to. <coughs> so that's why you're seeing uh, that right there. It's as easy as that. And now um, to maybe move on to the next step. Okay, maybe you have a question here of, all right, I see the MACD. I see it that you can pull it up on these charts and you can easily find the buy and sell signals for it. Well, maybe I don't want to trade the MACD, or how do I know that that's a good uh, system to trade, or really how do I find the best system for me? 
and there's an easy way to answer that question for anyone uh, watching today or just anyone in general, uh, you can use the Metastock system tester. So what I'll do is open back up our hub here, jump into the system tester, and show you some of the tools in here. There's a lot of different ways too, I should say, to use Metastock, which means there's a lot of different ways to look at your charts and use the Explorer and using the system tester. I'm just showing you guys some real kind of common basic uh, uh, things in here, but know that you're not limited to what you see now. There's a lot more uh, potential for all the different tools. Uh, we're just doing, or at least just trying to show you some of them. So with this system tester, what it allows me to do is take different systems uh, within Metastock or maybe even a system that you've created yourself if you wanna back test your own strategies and then apply them to different markets uh, and see how, would, how they would have performed historically. But not just how they would have uh, performed historically, you can also set it up to how it would have performed for you specifically. And the way that you'll do that is you can come into the trade options here uh, and I'm gonna go into like the account and say you have $10,000 uh, initial equity in your trading account, or maybe it's $100,000. You can put those parameters right into here. You can also kind of put in your level of risk or, or maybe just you know your style of trading. Uh, maybe you're willing to risk 50% of your available equity per trade off of this initial equity. Uh, and, you, and you can change it around too, but however you want for demonstration purposes, we'll keep it at that. You can also come in and set your own broker settings. So maybe your broker charges you, uh, you interest rate because you're trading on margin, or uh, maybe you get charged a commission on your entries and exits or things of that nature. Whatever it may be, you can customize it in there for yourself. You can also come in here to set up uh, your trade execution. And so basically what that means is, um, you can have it say, all right, when I'm performing this test of this trading system, did it buy at the close price? Did it uh, sell at the close or uh, or maybe at the open or the high or the low, et cetera? Uh, oftentimes people use this realistic market prices. It really depends on how you're trading. But basically what this says is like, say you're looking at a daily chart um, and you get, have a signal generated on the close, right? So that means uh, if it just closed, really when you buy in, you're buying at the open of the next bar. So that's what realistic market prices means. So we're just gonna leave that checked uh, for our demonstration purposes today. Uh, and what we're gonna show you guys is just keeping current with the times, we'll look at the MACD to keep it basic. Uh, so I'm going to look at the MACD expert system. One thing I'd like to point out, you may see this MACD with optimization. Now let's say you wanted to take a, uh, the MACD and optimize some of the variables in it. Like say, okay, what if I used this but adjusted um, my signal line or my moving averages within the MACD, which ones would have performed the best? And you can use tools such as this uh, to give you answers to that. But without trying to get too technical today, we'll just keep it at the, its default uh, parameters in here, uh, You know, utilizing the nine period exponential moving average, uh, and, and just the basic MACD as it's set up within Metastock. And now let's say I want to test this on, uh, so one you, one thing that I really like is, uh, so from our last exploration, we had a list of five results generating a signal. I could select to run the system test just on those. And maybe I'll actually do that today, uh, just to kind of show you how that works. Say, okay, well, of all those results, and maybe, for instance, we had scanned 3,000 stocks and we had a 500 results. Uh, I did a much smaller scan for demonstration purposes, but whatever it is, you can select that here and say, okay, well, I know I'm, maybe you know you want to trade the MACD, um, but you don't know if you should be trading it on these things you have signals for. So you could come in here and select this option and we're going to back test it off of, uh, you know, let's keep it the same as the charts we're looking at, 1,250 records. How would this have performed over the last five years? with the settings that I had input. I'm gonna click start system test and you're gonna see it just blaze through that and it's done instantly because there are only a few results. Now I'm doing this live, so I don't know what this re these results are gonna be, um, but here they are. So we can see, you know, there was actually um, some 
very profitable things and then some not so much. This one is skewed so heavily that it's really uh, made the results small here. I'll, I'll do another quick test uh, for other demonstration purposes. But so you can see here, if you would have traded the MACD over the last five years on these systems, uh, well, some of them wouldn't have even taken trades on those examples. So uh, I guess there's not results for those, but you can see how it would have performed on the HNXI. You can double click into it and look at the plethora of information that you have access to here. Uh, so you can see with this specific security uh, or index, I should say, the dot .HNXI, uh, the profit for this off of my account size would have been $3,246.59, or maybe more importantly, it would have been 32.47%, uh, uh, which the annualized performance on that was 6.5%. Now, here's a great thing to compare that to. If, say, you had just bought this security and held it, uh, it would have had a 25.96 performance versus 32. So this is saying, hey, trade this index using the MACD and over the last five years, it's performed you know, 7% better basically. Uh, or here's the buy and hold annualized performance was just at 5.2 versus 6.5. Another really nice thing you can see is, uh, okay, how many profitable trades did we have? 102 here. Uh, how many of them were long? How many of them were short? It can tell you average price uh, and all sorts of other details here. Um, so you know like, hey, this is a security that I think I would like to trade the MACD on. Uh, but there's other ways of doing, of using this too, kind of as I mentioned, um, looking at the time here to see uh, how much I could really show you guys. But other ways people use this, just so that you know, another option is say, maybe you think you know you wanna trade one of these five securities, but you don't know which system to use. What a lot of people like to do is they'll come in here, um, we have some really great indicators in Metastock from uh, the Performance Systems Plus uh, is an add-on that is now included for free in Metastock 18, uh, which added like a $400 in value. All these different systems here. Just as an example, you could select multiple different trading systems, um, such as these, along with the MACD, uh, which I still have selected on a list of these five. And I'm gonna start this scan. Now this is unique because it's it's actually significantly more data, even though it's still not very much, but because we're trading, it's running the scan on multiple systems across multiple securities. So this can really add up to a lot of data being analyzed depending on uh, what you're looking at. But now this is gonna give me a, a list of different results. So this looks uh, quite interesting here. So now what I can do is maybe sort this by the average net profit based on those trading parameters I selected. And you can see, okay, well, of all of these trading systems I just tested, the performance system three-day range switch has had the best average percent gain with that being 26.8%. Uh, it's actually surprisingly to me, all of these trading systems that I selected, well, actually, maybe it's not that surprising because the performance systems are designed to be some of the best performing systems out there. And then the MACD is a pretty popular, well-known um, you know, system that, that often performs well, but it's maybe not the best trading strategy, which is why it's ranked down here actually at one of, as one of the lower performing. So it is good that it, it performed well, um, but not as the best. Uh, I think that's some unique data, but let me go ahead and, and double click uh, into one of these and get some more info on it. <clears throat> You know, I think there maybe actually weren't a lot of trades on uh, some of those items that I pulled up. Uh, however, this is showing, you know, where there was some of the best performance on these different securities, uh, and I can rank them in here and then go into the individual uh, reports within the test in here. So that's another way to use it. Uh, to, so not only can you use these tools to help you find, you know, what securities to trade by searching for them with the Explorer, but you can also uh, use the system tester to see what trading systems perform the best on these different types of securities. And that really kind of goes to help answer a lot of those core questions, uh, which maybe I'll even jump back into um, to make sure that we're covering them all. If we look here, so how do you find the securities? Well, you can run the Metastock Explorer and that's gonna help you find them. What system should I use? Well. Why don't you test quite a few systems and see which ones perform the best 
on the markets that you know that you want to trade. And then you can utilize one of those systems. Um, how do I test my systems before I get into a trade? Well, with the system tester, as, as I kind of just mentioned. Uh, so that's how you can do all of those things very easily with the click of just a few buttons uh, inside of Metastock. And kind of as I've mentioned before today, uh, you can also uh, get some serious customer support for doing this too. If maybe I'm moving a little bit fast for you, uh, keep in mind, we have lots of really easy to follow videos uh, and things of that nature for you to go through as well to help teach you. We have specific videos for every single one of these different power tools inside of Metastock and the white glove support from our team where we can actually you know, go through the platform with you and someone uh, just one-on-one -on -one with you can go through and show you all of these tools. So it's basically like having me sitting right by your side, but it would be someone even better. It'd be one of our support gurus that know all the technical ins and outs of Metastock uh, to really teach you how everything works in there. And that's included for free uh, as long as you have a Metastock subscription, which you can get a trial of it, uh, or say you're interested in our special offer today where you can get all of those extremely well-performing systems like Go No Go, the Power Bundle 360, and the Candle Profit System 2.0, uh, our team can help you kind of set those up and help kind of show you the basics of how they work as well. But of course, all of those systems also have like a manual and uh, all of those have a boot camp as well because they are some of our, our best rated systems. So there's really everything you need for them right inside of there. Now, with all that said, uh, I want to show you guys a little bit more. I, I normally, I'll spend a little bit more time in Metastock, but there's another thing that I think is left out that uh, I really wanted to share with you guys today, and that's our Zenith platform uh, that you can pair with Metastock, because Metastock, uh, the real-time version, which I'm showing you everything on today, uh, utilizes uh, Zenith, or really it's a retail version of, of Refinitiv's icon. That's that's what I have to pull up on my computer, <laughs> is icon, E-I-K-O-N, when I'm searching for it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I thought I already had it open, uh, but it's just loading here in the background. You'll see it pop up here in just a moment. Okay, this is uh, even loading on here from the last time I did my presentation here. Oops. Okay, so, yeah, sorry, ignore all that. So, uh, yes, there's a lot on your screen here. Let me actually uh, kind of jump out of that, just go into the home page so we can take things kind of easy. So just to let you guys know, once again, <coughs> this is Metastock's Zenith, which uh, uh, our partners over at Refinitiv, they have their billion dollar icon platform. It's basically the biggest competitor to the Bloomberg terminal. Uh, and they charge their, uh, their customers, which are professional traders and you know banks and institutions, pay up to thousands, multiple thousands a month for access to this data. And we have this Zenith version designed for you, designed for the retail trader that we offer at a fraction of the price, but still with a plethora of information included. Um, and I just wanna do a quick kind of demo on that today uh, and, and show you guys some of the tools in here. So they're really some great tools. So this here is my homepage. That's where we're gonna start out. Uh, and on the homepage, you can see, I just have a lot of, like news listed here. Uh, I have some uh, right here, you can see there's politics, policy and risk and uh, different information in here. And just so you know, this is one of the most intuitive platforms I've ever uh, had a chance to utilize. I'm always so impressed each time I come in here. So pretty much anything that you see on your screen, uh, you can click on and get more information on. So if I wanted to learn about anything in here, I could go ahead and just click on it. Oops, and it's gonna give me more information. I close that out. I'm gonna open back up my home page. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and once again, like you saw on Metastock with this platform, you can also fully customize it to your needs as well. Uh, so you could come in here and click on edit. And yeah, you can have this listed as the politics, policy and risk, or maybe uh, you want like some front page news information to be listed here. Uh, oh, I just clicked on the header, so that's commodities. You could change the commodities to maybe you want Forex to be on your front page, but we'll let the software kind of guide us here. So if I went into the commodities uh, 
page further or Forex, whatever it may be that I have set up because it's what I want to look at, uh, at which we can help you set up whatever you may need um, as soon as you sign up for the service. So looking here now, it's giving me all the top commodity news. Uh, and there's quite a bit of information here. Each one of these stories, I could click on to get more information on them. Um, you're also seeing all these different uh, headers, which provide a lot of unique information. And, and often, if you're looking at commodities, uh, you want to know like the asset performance for different regions or key commodities, index performance, et cetera, et cetera. And once again, customize this to however you may need it to be. We're going to go ahead and click back here and back into my home page. Another thing I really like about this is it's giving me a list of top equity indices, which I can see right over here uh, on the right hand side on this computer. I don't have all of the uh, indices set up, but uh, most of them are this account, I should say. Uh, and then it's really easy to simply jump into one of these. So if you wanted to look at the Hang, um, Hang Seng index, I can click on that and it gives me uh, all the information I need for it here. Actually, to keep this more concurrent with Metastock, uh, .hnxi. So let's go ahead and look at that. So this is one of the ones that was giving me a buy signal today. So .hnxi, let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so of course, a plethora of information to look at or maybe more specific things after you've done your analysis in Metastock. Maybe you want to come and check out an index before you trade it, or maybe look at the index before you could trade one of its constituents. Uh, so here, once I've opened this up, you guys can see uh, there's a lot of information being just right uh, shown to me right on the overview page. I can see the top movers right here, the percent that they've changed and everything, as well as the bottom movers and how they've changed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you're also seeing the events tab here. So this is going to let me know about any major events uh, that are upcoming uh, related uh, to this index. I can also come in and look at some of the past events as well. Uh, and then, of course, click on something if you want to get more information on it, uh, and it's going to pull up another page. Uh, you'll notice this works. It's really uh, how I like to describe Zenith to a lot of people is it's basically like uh, an internet browser just for traders. Uh, it's like if you were learning how to use your internet browser for the first time or something is, is kind of how I related to it, but for uh, traders resources. You can come in here and search for whatever you need uh, and it's going to give you all this information and just put it together so well uh, and always kind of keep you on the path of uh, information for traders. So let's let's dive into here a little bit more. So one of the things I said is, okay, maybe you're trading like a specific stock and you want to learn a little bit more about a company before actually trading it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe this is one of the securities that came up with my buy signal today after my exploration, or maybe this is one of the securities that showed up uh, as performing really, really well on one of my system tests. Well, we can come in and look at all of the individual companies too. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these here. This is uh, cmc.hn, CMC Investments. Um, now, uh, this is the overview page here, which is going to let me learn a little bit more about this company, which is good because, you know, I'm doing this on the fly here uh, and, and maybe I didn't have a lot of info on them. So this will let me look at the overview like of the price performance. One of my favorite tools to use in here too are the Starmine models. So with these star mine models, this is giving me really useful information on the company and ranking it across other securities to trade. Uh, so if I actually hover over this little question mark here, it's going to tell me more information. So for this, or actually I'm not sure which one I hovered. Okay, yeah, the relative valuation. So the current regional 1 to 100 percentile rank of a, of a security in the overall relative value model. Higher scores indicate stocks with the best value when considering all relative value model components uh, that are relevant for the stock. So basically what this is saying is based on these, on the star mine models, which are really reputable, well-known models, this is ranking very poorly for its relative valuation. It's also ranking very poorly for its smart holdings and earnings quality, et cetera. So, you know, um, let's just say, for example, if I got a buy signal on this security today and I pull this up and I saw this, um, 
I would not want to take a trade on this. However, let's say maybe I received a short signal on this. This is something I might want to trade because not only uh, this is giving me several bearish indicators. Well, if I look here on the left hand side, there's no bullish indicators from the star mine model even populating. Um, so maybe some of you guys have some more information on this security, uh, but this is not something that I would want to take a long trade on, that's for sure. And maybe you can't always see that on a chart. Um, looking at this chart, it looks like um, a couple of years back, it was performing really well and it's been on quite a downtrend. You can actually see it's had a little bit of rebound lately. So just really in the very recent past here, there's been a bit of a rebound. Um, so looking at the long term, I wouldn't normally want to take that long, but this is actually kind of interesting that now it's starting to come up. This is telling me based on the star mine models, though, it's still not a very positive trade. So maybe not something I would want to take. Uh, however, you know, maybe there's more information that I still want to learn that I don't know about here. Uh, and that could be found under news. So let's go ahead and click into my news tab for this security. Oh, and it looks like there actually weren't results for this specific one. There might be more uh, than one sees here with this security. I don't know if it's uh, being de delisted or something of that nature. Uh, so that could be why, but in almost every single case, you can just click into the news and get more information for the news. Uh, one thing that I like to do, you guys actually kind of saw on the background when I first opened up Zenith is create my own kind of workplace in here where I can go through and look at everything. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys how that works and a little bit more about it. Now, first off, uh, this here is a monitor and the monitor is kind of for me personally where I, I like to put a lot of things. So say there's just securities I'm trying to model. Maybe I want to copy that list from my exploration in Metastock uh, and excuse me, uh, paste it into my monitor here because I want to look at all those different securities. So that's what I can do with the monitor. And then it's actually really unique in that it's not just giving you price information in here, but you can actually add all sorts of criteria, which you'll see I've done here. Like uh, I've put in analyst recommendations, whether they recommend a buy, a hold, or a sell on these securities. So I've put that in here. You can also pull up things like uh, the beta, if you wanna look at that. Uh, you can even get unique things, like you can get Bollinger Band values and add that as a column um, within within your monitor. So all sorts of things you can put in here. I really like to have the 52 week range listed in here as well. So it can even put little uh, image or, or graphics uh, within the monitor. And then you'll see, I've actually attached a lot of other tools to this. So Zenith has tons of different apps. You have a quote app, you have a charting app, you have the news monitor, uh, whatever it may be. So you can open up all these apps like this one here is the charting app. And what I've actually done right here is I've placed the monitor and then a charting app, a sidebar, my quote app, as well as a news uh, application, all kind of on the same screen. And then you'll notice these all have purple right here selected. So by default, it's not selected and each one of these windows are operating uh, in their own environment or individually of one another. But what I've done is connected them all with just the click of a couple buttons, turning that on and selecting the same color for all of them. Uh, and then when I come in here, you'll notice if I click on uh, security within my monitor, now my charts updated to that same security, my sidebar with important information and upcoming events, uh, the quote with all the quote info on it and news have all populated to this same security. So this is a fantastic way of kind of taking your next step once you've maybe done all of your technical analysis within Metastock, well now you can check out the news you can look at the fundamental uh, details and things of that nature within Zenith and make sure that uh, you know, you're comfortable uh, placing a trade with a specific company uh, before doing so. So tons of different ways to use this. And I know information overload here, uh, but those are the things that I wanted to primarily show with you guys today. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I, I'll take some questions. If you guys have any questions, and I realize I actually should have been doing probably a better job of monitoring those, but I have Jeff with me, who's so good at answering them before I even get a chance that I've maybe made a bad habit of not looking. So let's take a look here. Um, okay, so most of these questions have been answered. Okay, yeah, looks like nothing new on that side. Um, 
let me open up my other window here. All right. Sounds like something's going on outside of our office here. I hope you guys can't hear any of that background noise. That sounds like there's a gathering of some people. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey, let me just jump back into my slideshow. Oh, are you good, Jeff? Shutting the door for you. Oh, thank you. Shutting my door. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, guys, maybe you have the question here. Well, how much does Metastock cost? Of course, that's a great question. So I've been using Metastock real time, but really, I've only been looking at daily charts for the most part. If you were just wanting uh, the Metastock portion for your technical analysis, your charts, this is all you need is just Metastock DC if you were interested in using the Power Bundle 360 or CPS or GoNoGo. -No -Go. That's just $59 a month. Um, uh, and that includes a data link end of day subscription for like one region, like the Asia Pacific region. We have a package designed specifically uh, for you guys. So just $59 a month for that. Uh, if you wanted to bump this up to Metastock real time, which includes the bill, uh, basically billion dollar Zenith real time market data and news platform too. So everything I've been showing today uh, during my demonstration here, that's $265 a month if you're leasing it. There's options to break that down considerably, like uh, you could do a lifetime purchase of Metastock. Uh, we also have annual plans or, or other, excuse me, data packages uh, to help reduce your cost. With this, I've touched on this several times. Uh, I don't think I can touch on it enough because it really is such a benefit that you're not going to get elsewhere. You know, you can go with other services and you might get charged $100 to sit down for an hour or two uh, to speak to somebody uh, and get hands-on, one-on-one kind of guidance on how to utilize a trading software. Well, we'll show you guys how to do that for free with Metastock, with uh, any of your subscriptions to our service. So that's a fantastic offer. Uh, and hey, if you were just interested in, in trying out Metastock and, and you didn't want any of the additional add-ons or things that we offer, you can do that. Uh, and, but you know, we have someone sitting right now waiting to help you out in our sales chat, metastock.com forward slash sales chat. They can answer your questions. They can let you know about other indicators in there or if the platform can do this or that, et cetera. Jump in there, uh, get talking to them, and they could, you know, help set you up on an extended trial. And we'll give you three months access for the price of one month as part of uh, a promotion here today uh, for this event. So normally, uh, you know, you'd be paying that every single month uh, or a much higher rate. But with today's offer, we'll give you an extra two months for free. We'll throw in some additional bonus training too that we do normally charge for, but that's included uh, today for free as well with the Unleash the Power of Metastock. Uh, so metastock.com slash sales chat to get that. Uh, or you also have a trial option uh, at our package deal today, metastock.com forward slash APEC hyphen deal. Uh, and by visiting that page, uh, it has an option for a trial down at the bottom in case, say, um, you don't have Metastock and you're interested in the bundle, or even if you just wanted the trial, you could go there. Uh, if you didn't want all of this, but really, if you're looking to get the most value out of today, if you want to take advantage of all of the trading systems that we've shown so far, uh, then you can get that for basically 50% off. Uh, just about. So not an offer that you're going to find at any other time. Uh, this is one of my favorite bundles that we have ever put together here in our history of doing Metastock events. So really, I think it's a great time to take advantage of this. Uh, and you're looking at just $1,946 to get all those trading systems and all of the add-ons from today. That's a lifetime purchase. So you would own those uh, systems that we've showcased for life. You never have to pay for them again. Uh, depending on the plan that you have with Metastock, you might just have like a data subscription with us or something of that nature. Uh, but also keep in mind, we're doing a 30 day money back guarantee on this too. So really there's not going to be a better time to buy because there's basically no risk uh, considering that if it doesn't work out for you, we're so confident that it will, that we'll give you your money back if not. So check us out at metastock.com slash APEC hyphen deal to take advantage of that and we'll take care of you. Or uh, if you want even a little more personal assistance, I recommend the sales chat, metastock.com slash sales chat, and we can make sure uh, we're answering all of your questions first and taking care of you. That chat is only open um, to, today through 
uh, you know, for the next couple of hours while we're here doing these presentations. So if you really want uh, to get some help with that, I would jump in the chat right now. Otherwise, uh, the chat room won't be open again until Monday. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. I recommend going in there if you guys have any questions uh, or if you want to take advantage of this. Once again, I want to give a shout out to Stocks and Commodities Magazine for helping to sponsor today's event. Uh, also, shout out to the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine for rating us as the best analysis software for the over 30 years in a row. That's another fantastic reason to go ahead and give us a try if you guys don't have our platform already. Um, and now, I guess with all of that being said, I don't want to run over my time too much because I know that this next presenter, Daryl Guppy, is probably going to be even far more interesting to listen to. I always enjoy um, being able to sit in on uh, Daryl Guppy's talks. Uh, he's been a partner of Metastock for a really long time. We've actually incorporated um, some of his indicators into our most recent version of Metastock, and they're just included for free. So if you're looking at uh, you know, any of the offers or just trying out Metastock today, uh, you're going to get some of his uh, ATR indicators in there too. I am not wearing my headphones, so hopefully no one's been talking to me. Let me go ahead and put these back on. Uh, Hello, Bodie. Can you hear me? Hey, Daryl. Yeah, I can hear you there. Right. Thanks so and you much. can see me as well. Yeah, I can see you looking good as ever. <laughs> You're very <laughs> kind. I think I think you need yeah. to switch something to uh, to see my screen. Yeah, let's go ahead and make you the presenter. Uh, Daryl Guppy, apply. There we go. All right, guys. So I'm going to, yeah, just pass the reins off to Daryl. He's he's well known here at Metastock. He's well known in for doing these presentations. So I know you know what to do, Daryl, and I'll, I'll just let you take the reins from here. Okay. I just need to do one check. Oh, okay. Of course. Oops. Right. No, that um, didn't quite work the way I thought it would. Therefore, we'll go back somewhere yeah no okay worries. we'll work with this that makes life easy perfect okay you can see my screen uh we've got the four r's of trading for 2023 excellent shall we start yeah please oh it's all you <laughs> okay thank, thank you very much and welcome to this afternoon's discussion about what is a confused market. It's a difficult market. It's not clear in which direction this market is going. And that's a bit of a challenge. So there are four things that I want to briefly discuss today. Let's call them the four R's. The first is reserve bank or banks. We can talk about US banks and in this case also Australian banks. Are we in a recession? Are we going to be able to manage inflation? What does the market tell us? about those potential answers. And if we are coming out of a market fall, and many of the markets have reached their head and shoulder pattern downside targets, then what's recovery going to look like and how do we trade it? And last, of course, how do we manage risk? Now, as you might gather from the illustration, this is not my first rodeo. I've been trading markets for more than 30 plus years. So I have seen a number of examples of exuberance, as was once called, perhaps irrational exuberance, a number of market collapses from the tech wrecks to 1987 and so on. So we need to take the lessons that have been learned in this period and see how they apply to what we're currently experiencing and if they are similar or the same, because that will determine what our most effective responses are. But first, we need to develop a bit of an overview of what's going on, because let's face it, there's a certain amount of fear there at the moment in relation to banks. Are my, is my money safe? So how do we gear up for 2023, the year of the rabbit? I need to make one important point before we start. There are two ways that we can approach the market. The gentleman on the left is Nostradamus, very famous for his predictions of what was going to happen in the far, far future. 
That's one approach to the market. And the idea there is by using a set of tools or techniques that we can predict the future accurately. And if we can predict it, then there's no need to manage the future. Whereas the gentleman on the right with the cigarette stuck in his mouth, of course, has to be French. Albert Camus, an existentialist. And he says, look, we can't predict the future. So what we have to do is we have to manage our response as the future develops. And that's very much the camp that I'm in when it comes to the market. So when you're listening to what I'm talking about, remember to filter it through those two different approaches to market behavior. So reserve banks, how do they fit into the picture? How are they forming the background environment to the market and what impact does that have on the market? And let's start off with the collapse of SVB Bank and Credit Suisse uh, and other banks. Is this an example of systemic failure similar to what happened in 2008? And the answer is probably no. Certainly, there is potential for contagion amongst banks, but it's very different from the 2008 banking collapse, which led to the global financial crisis. And the key difference is the instruments, the difference between instruments and policy. So the trading instrument that led to the banking collapse in 2008 was collateralized debt obligations, shonky loans in other words. So the banks were using a particular type of trading environment that overextended them. It wasn't systemic policy that caused the collapse. It was the prevalence of this particular type of instrument within the American banking system. Today's banking collapses are different. They are examples of individual mismanagement. Mismanagement that took place with SVB Bank in California was very different to the mismanagement that took place with Credit Squeeze. And you only need to look at a chart to be able to understand that this is a matter of individual management rather than an overall policy failure. So Credit Suisse, quite clearly, Credit Suisse is in, surprise, surprise, a massive downtrend. It's fallen from $12 to $2 to 76 cents. Now, certainly, the rapid collapse from $2 to 76 cents was an acceleration of an existing downtrend, but it didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't unexpected. It was a logical continuation of mismanagement at a company level that had been going on for some time. And when we look at SVB, then we see the same types of things. And there is an increasing focus on the mismanagement and the regulatory failures that took place in relation to SVB. So what's that tell us? It tells us that there's not a general contagion. That individual banks in the banking sector will be performing strongly and some banks will be performing badly, just as we see a variation of company performance in any market sector. And we need to remember that in the United States, bank failures are a fact of life. They're quite common. So in the week that SVB failed, there were three other banks that also failed. So it's not something that's unusual. However, having said that, we need to consider the background that enables this type of individual company failure. And in particular in America, one of the responses that President Trump had to the COVID environment was to reduce to 0% the level of assets that needed to be held by a bank. Before that, the bank had to hold 10% in liquid assets to be able to manage any run on the bank. Trump dropped that requirement to 0%. And at the time, he was warned 
that this would make the banking sector and individual banks victims to any coordinated run on a bank. And that's what we saw with SVB. It was a classic bank run, but it was enhanced by the use of social media. So instead of driving past the bank and seeing all the people lined up to take their money out, you only had to look at your social media or Facebook feeds to know that there was a run on this bank. So it exaggerated and amplified the run on what was a relatively minor bank that was already being involved in substantial mismanagement. We need to also look at the broader financial situation because this impacts our economies. It impacts Australia, it impacts Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. And that is that the Americans have this massive IOU to the rest of the world. How big? The size of the US debt is larger than the combined debts of China, Japan, Germany, and England. It is 133% of GDP. That's pretty frightening. And furthermore, bills currently before Congress are designed to jack up that debt ceiling even higher. So the question becomes, how stable is that debt? Is there a growing risk of default in that debt? Is there a growing global appetite to no longer fund that debt? And they become key questions that are being reflected in the current instability and confusion within the marketplace. China is a good example. So in, for many, many years, China was either the first or the second largest holder of US debt, of US treasuries. However, since 2018, they have been steadily reducing the level of their holdings of US treasuries. It has two impacts. First of all, it means that America must pay higher interest rates to be able to borrow from other lenders on a global basis. That puts upward pressure on interest rates. So the potential for interest rates to fall is reduced by the fact that China is stepping back from the US Treasury market and that the US Treasuries have to add additional interest rates to make those Treasuries of interest. Part of what's driving this, of course, is US sanctions against a variety of countries. So China is a bit worried that perhaps the US may freeze all or some of US treasuries that China owns and slow down redemption. That's probably a nuclear option. But the important point is that as China, the second largest holder of US debt, unwinds its positions, it adds to the pressure to increase interest rates. And that impacts not just America, but the rest of the world. But it's important to remember, the US Federal Reserve has an obligation only to the United States, not to the rest of the world. Let me repeat that, because it's important. The US Federal Reserve has an obligation only to manage the US economy. It is not interested or concerned about the consequences for international banking systems or for the international economy. So in other words, we can't rely on the US Fed to be able to bail us, the Singapore economy, the Australian economy, out of trouble. Which leads us to the key questions. Are we looking at recession or are we looking at inflation? What is the probability of interest rates falling, in which case the market will go up, or will interest rates continue to remain at high levels along with high inflationary levels that impact on economic development? And I would love to be able to give you a clear and simple answer. Unfortunately, the market's not like that. The answer is far more confused and far more complicated, and that makes it a challenge 
to be able to trade effectively. Certainly, the tools that Bobby was talking about allow us to narrow down a set of stocks, a set of trading opportunities. But when we assess them, we need to assess them against this broader economic background. So what's the key contributor to inflation? We're told that it's oil. Well, that's an interesting distortion of the reality. A simple look, a quick look at the NYMEX oil chart shows you clearly that oil has returned to levels that it was trading at in 2021 and for most of 2020, 2020 to 2021, there was no inflationary pressure. There was certainly temporary inflationary pressure towards the end, in the middle of 2022 when oil hit $120 plus. But since the beginning of the third quarter in 2022, the price of oil has been consistently falling. The fall below this uptrend line B was followed by a rally where the trend line acted as a resistance feature and price continued to fall back to the historical support level around $61. So in listening to the public media, we need to assess what they are saying against what we are seeing in the price chart. The idea that oil is the primary contributor or a major contributor to the inflationary environment is wrong. The oil price is continuing to fall. It is testing support at around $61. There is the potential for it to fall below $61. And if it does this, then our next support level historically is around $40. So there is continued downside pressure on oil. It is not a major or primary contributor to inflation. That is monetary policy. It is the debt obligations, the servicing of those debt obligations. That becomes a major contributor to inflation. Inflation has two causes. One, on the left-hand side, is supply-driven inflation. And on the right-hand side, demand-driven inflation. And the differences are important because it determines the effectiveness of the response to control inflation. Supply-side inflation is where there is simply not enough goods to satisfy normal demand. Now, in Australia, for instance, you will know that if you went to buy a new car, let's say you went to buy a new Hilux, the most popular uh, SUV in Australia, the wait time for the supply of that vehicle was between eight to 14 months. I have a friend, he just bought himself a new sports car. And he has been waiting for just on two years for that vehicle to become available. So the re inflationary impact is not driven by price changes as such. It's driven by a contraction in supply. How we tackle that means that we need to increase the supply availability. In other words, we need to widen the net in this hourglass. That's very different from demand-driven inflation. Demand-driven inflation is where the consumer has lots of money and he is chasing a reasonable number of goods. It doesn't have to be scarce supply, but he's prepared to outbid his competitors. He's got the money to be able to do it. Demand-driven inflation means a lot of money chasing few goods. Supply-driven inflation means a normal amount of money chasing a limited number of goods. Two different pressures that drive inflation. Now, the inflationary impact or the inflationary period in the 1970s, the beginning of the 1980s was driven by demand inflation. It was not driven by supply inflation. The solutions we are applying now are appropriate for demand-driven inflation. But there's an important difference between the United States and the rest of us. 
controlling interest rates in the United States is an effective way of taking the heat out of the business economy. And it does that because high interest rates restrict access to capital, which is used for expansion. Because in the United States, housing loans are generally at a fixed rate of interest, not variable. So when you start playing around with interest rates, which is what the Fed is doing, the first and hardest impact of that decision is on business in America, not on consumers, not on households, on business. So you take the heat out of the economy by reducing businesses' ability to access capital. But in Australia in particular, interest rates, the variability of them, impacts most heavily on households, not on business. Yes, there's some impact on business, but overwhelmingly, the impact of rising interest rates in Australia falls on household consumption. So when we try to slow down or cripple the economy in Australia, the recession that we have to have, to use a statement from a previous Prime Minister Paul Keating, the recession that we have to have comes most heavily, the burden falls most heavily on consumers, on households. In the US, it falls on business. In Australia, because it falls on households, it means it then leads through to a lesson of a lessening of consumer demand that causes company collapses. So the solution for rising interest rates to tackle inflation, supply-driven inflation in the United States is appropriate because it mainly falls on business. It is not so appropriate in Australia because it falls mainly on households. So the result is a confused market. Our Reserve Bank Governor in Australia believes that he can tame the inflation dragon by using interest rates. And he says that we can't afford any wage increases, we can't put more money into people's pockets because that will simply feed demand. A great solution for 1975 or 1978. Not so appropriate for 2023. So how do we survive in this environment? What's the rational response? How do we protect our capital? How do we get a better return on capital when it's being eaten away by inflation? And the answer, we believe, is by trading the market. Now, every week we do a weekly newsletter and we highlight or we showcase particular trading techniques and strategies and approaches that are relevant to the current market situation. We judge our returns over the financial, the Australian financial year, which is from July to June. We use case study, port, uh, case study trade examples in our portfolio, trading particular sorts of techniques in contemporary time. The important part of this particular display is it shows the importance and value of being exposed to the market and trading the market rather than other asset classes. So since July 2022, our return has been 26.3% on capital. That's banked return. That's money in the bank from closed trades. That far outstrips inflation, which is running, depending on who you believe, at around 8% or 7%. But it's not a simple result to achieve. This is a complicated and complex market. So what are the impacts? When money starts to dry up in the market, because that's what's happening. This is not a bull market environment. Households are under pressure. Weekly grocery bills are going up. We haven't got money to spend on non-essentials and many people see the market as non-essentials. So when the market begins to dry up, what happens? What happens is it's the institutions, the fund managers 
that come to dominate the market. The speculative money, the money coming from retail traders disappears. Us poor little old guppies, the small traders, the independent traders, we become even more than normal at the mercy of the sharks in the market. So the question becomes, how do we protect ourselves in this environment to maximize our returns? One of the impacts of this domination of the market by sharks and the way that the little traders, the, um, the retail traders and investors have fled is that liquidity dries up. That delivers one opportunity. We call it drought and flooding rain opportunities. What it means is that because there is less liquidity in the market, it means that even a small change in volume, a little bit of rain, just as it does in the desert, can lead to disproportionate results. It can lead to a flood of price activity. We are more interested in identifying this type of situation where just a small change in volume is enough to dramatically increase price. This becomes one of the key trading opportunities that we're looking for. It's short term. It does require close attention to what's happening in the market. Not suitable for investors. This is a trading solution. The drought and flooding rain effect is the one that delivers short term profits on a relatively regular basis. But it's also difficult to identify. The other major impact in the market is high frequency trading. This is an unexploded bomb that impacts on the way that we trade. Because high frequency trading is designed to get between you and your order execution. You put your order in and before it's executed, you find that the order line changes. And this is increasingly happening. We, are know, we know that high frequency traders are active in the market when we see the buy orders for one stock. That is a testing order. As soon as that's hit, then the HFT order comes into place. And what was available suddenly disappears. HFT trading distorts market behavior. It makes it more difficult for you and I to trade against the sharks. But luckily, there is a solution. There's a solution that was not available 10 years ago or 20 years ago in these types of market conditions. The protection from the sharks today comes from exchange traded funds. Because the ETF captures sector behavior, we effectively eliminate individual stock risk. So if a HFT is getting into our individual stock, we can mitigate that risk by trading an exchange traded fund. This gives us opportunities that we never had before. We can look at sector behavior and rather than picking the individual stock, we can trade the relevant ETF, both from the long side and the short side. One word of warning though, the patterns that we see in ETF price activity, such as the double bottom shown here, cannot be validly applied to an exchange traded fund. Why not? Simply because the most effective chart patterns are measures of the psychology of the market. It's the sum total of all of the opinion of stockholders who hold an individual stock. And there are important ways to understand that psychological thinking and to either work with it or against it. But when we talk about an ETF, because an ETF aggregates all of the activity around the number of stocks that are in the ETF, then the ETF is not a psychological measure of an individual stock. Certainly it captures thinking around a sector, but not an individual stock.
So although we see similar patterns developing that we see on individual stocks, we can't interpret them or trade them in the same way. Sometimes the patterns do work out as expected. So the double bottom reaches the, the top of this pattern, an upward sloping triangle meets its price projection targets. However, that tends to be coincidental rather than correlated. So it's an important warning. When you're trading ETFs, you're looking at understanding the simplest trending behavior and managing risk as quickly and as effectively as you can. All of us are hoping that we're going to see market recovery. Is this a valid thought? Are these markets recovering? Is the rally that's taking place in the NASDAQ, S&P and the Dow, we're seeing in the um, Australian uh, stock market as well, is that reliable or is it just fake? How do we trade it? How do we know which of these stocks, which of these conditions are going to offer the best trading opportunities? How do we find them and how do we assess them? Now, the methods that Bobby was talking about give us a way to find them. However, once we've got a list, we have to sort through it to work out what or which is the most effective. When do we buy? What are the conditions that are setting up that tell us it is safe to buy a stock that has finished falling and has begun to rally? Can we just simply use the same tools that we've used in the past? Or do we need to modify them? Can we trust the rallies that are taking place? Now, one way to work this out is to look at the broad market behavior. We start with the Dow because, of course, whether we like it or not, the Dow sets the lead for global markets to a very large extent. The most important feature on the Dow is the head and shoulder patterns, A, B, and C. First shoulder, the head of the pattern, the second shoulder. There's the neckline. We measure the distance between the top of the head and the neckline and project that downwards, and that gives us a downside target. The head and shoulder pattern is a highly reliable indicator of market reversal. This is a weekly chart. This is where you identify these patterns, not on a daily chart, always on a weekly chart. So the target, the downside target has been achieved. The rally took place and it broke through the downtrend line. A lot of people went long here expecting that we would re-establish long-term uptrends. Instead, the market consolidated in an equilateral or symmetrical triangle pattern. This is a pattern of indecision. There is about a 50% probability it will break to the upside or a 50% probability it'll break to the downside. In other words, you might as well toss a coin because the probability of success is pretty much the same. It dropped below. It didn't use the downtrend line as a support level, didn't reach that low, but has now begun to rebound. Is this a continuation of the breakout trend? If it is, then we buy long and we stay long and we buy at any time when the market begins to pull back. The Dow, of course, is only 30 stocks. If we look at S&P 500, if this breakout on the Dow is to be considered accurate, then we would expect to see that also reflected on the S&P. S&P, we have the same head and shoulder pattern, A, B, C. Measure the distance between the top of the head and the neckline projected downwards, and yes, the S&P hit that downside target and then rebounded. However, the breakout that took place did not continue. When the market retreated, it used this downtrend line as a support feature. That suggests, typically, that the market is likely to continue sliding down this support line, using it as a support level, until it intersects this support target level. Once it comes to two major support features, then we can anticipate the development of a new and stronger uptrend. Until then, it's simply whipsaw type trading. 
short-term rallies and retreats, no long-term directional bias. In other words, not a long-term breakout into an uptrend. S&P captures, let's call it the traditional market. The NASDAQ, of course, represents the new 21st century market, the tech market. It's not quite true, but that's the way that it's often thought of. What's the behavior that we're seeing here? Again, the head and shoulder pattern exists in all of the US indexes. There's the downside target from that pattern. It has been achieved. The breakout, however, with the NASDAQ is much stronger. Despite the collapse of SVB Bank, which is supposedly the banker for most NASDAQ stocks, it has no significant impact. What we're seeing is a strong breakout that's confirmed with a guppy multiple moving average. Now, the GMMA, of course, is a tool, an indicator tool in Metastock. And what it does is it captures the psychological thinking and behavior of two important groups in the market, investors and traders. The red group of moving averages captures the way that investors are thinking. The blue group captures the way traders are thinking. We're not going to go into detail as to how it works and why it works. Suffice to say, it is a measure of complexity and captures fractal repetition across multiple timeframes. And that when we see a compression of agreement, then it usually leads to a significant change in the trend. This is a measure of the agreement, the assessment of price and value. So what does it tell us? That's what's more important. It tells us back here that these price dips were safe buying points for a continuation of the uptrend because the long-term group of moving averages investors were supporting the uptrend and they had strong support. Here, as compression developed in the long-term group, it told us that investors were changing their perception of price and value as it applied to the NASDAQ. On this right-hand side of the chart, we're seeing the long-term group compressing and turning up. This means investors are changing their assessment of price and value and are beginning to believe that the bullish move taken by short-term traders, in fact, is an accurate guide to what's likely to develop into the future. It tells us that investors who were sellers all through this period, and we can tell that because of the width and the spread of the long-term group, are now shifting to becoming buyers. The NASDAQ is the leading reliable indicator, not the Dow. The Dow does not reflect general market conditions. So the conclusion that we can reach from all of these US charts is that yes, there is a developing uptrend, which suggests that there may be a pause in interest rate rises. Does this transfer to other markets? Bearing in mind, of course, that our markets tend to follow the lead that is set by the US. Look at the Australian All Ordinaries Index. Now, there's a different set of lines on this chart. Why? Because the Australian index trades historically between well-established support and resistance levels. These are trading bands. And when you apply trading band analysis, what happens is that you measure the width of the trading band, project this upwards, that gives the next upside target. Project it upwards again, that gives the next upside target. Of course, the same applies in the downtrend. It sets the downside targets as well. So if we get a break above 7177, we get a break above Friday's close, then the next resistance level is 7,400. It also gains extra resistance from the extension of this uptrend line. This uptrend line acted as a support feature here and here, not exact, but it was still a support feature from the rebound and a support feature here. Now it changes its polarity. It will act as a resistance feature. If we fail to break above 7177, then the market retreat will take us back down to retest this support level. There is, however, 
one very significant difference in this chart compared to what we saw in US charts. Here's a shoulder pattern, rally and a clear change in trend, a retreat, followed by another rally and a retreat, a short rally and a retreat. So this is the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. This segment is the neckline. Measure the distance between the head and the neckline and project it downwards and you get a 6,600 target. Now we know, NASDAQ, S&P and the Dow, that the head and shoulders reversal pattern is first of all a reliable pattern that precedes a fall in the market. Second, we know that the head and shoulders pattern gives us a reliable downside target. It was achieved with the Dow. It was achieved with the S&P. It was achieved with the NASDAQ. So why should it be any different with the all ordinaries, with the XJO in Australia? This is the bear that sits in the background when it comes to the Australian market. Yes, this rally in the last week looks pretty good. But the overall market environment suggests that there is still further downside. So the danger is that we get a retreat from this resistance level, a retest of support and a failure of support and a move back towards 6,600. Now bear in mind, that may be just a sudden dip that temporarily hits 6,600 and then rebounds. And this of course is what we saw with the S&P, where there's just a single dip and then a rebound that takes place. So the conclusion we get from the XJO is different to what we're seeing from the leading indexes. Shanghai market, Shanghai market is interesting because it is trading sideways. It doesn't have anywhere near the same behaviors as what we're seeing on US or Australian or Singaporean markets. We simply have a sideways trading band. But most of the time, Shanghai market broadly follows what happens in the US. In this case, there is a disconnect. An inflationary environment, if inflation is going to continue, then we expect to see interest rates to continue to rise in the US and an increase in defensive stocks, commodities. We expect to see an increase in the price of gold. We are seeing a breakout in gold. It's the first breakout that's taken place for nearly three years. Gold has been trapped in a very broad sideways trading band. Now the gold bugs are really excited because the trading band says, if we measure the width of the trading band and project it upwards, then that sets the upside target. That sounds really exciting, but remember, it doesn't tell us how long it will take us to reach there. When we moved from the bottom of the trading band to the top, it was what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30, six months, basically, to cover that distance. So even if we do get a successful breakout, we're looking at five to six months before those upside targets are reached. The important feature of the gold chart is it tends to confirm the idea that inflation is going to continue and that interest rate rises will continue, which is a problem because the S&P chart and the NASDAQ chart suggest that the market believes that interest rate rises have finished. Someone's going to lose a lot of money here. Hopefully it's not us. What have we seen in the US dollar, which again is a reflection of strength of the US economy? We see it coming back to parity. It went as high as 115. This is the DXY index, the dollar index. Now we're coming back to around parity. So that suggests that market strength, which rides on the back of an expanding US economy, that the foreign exchange market doesn't believe that the US economy is going to strengthen. It runs counter to what the NASDAQ is telling us. Confused? Yep, that's the way it is. There are some markets where you can say with confidence, yes, this is a bullish continuation. Yes, this is a bearish environment. But here, what we're seeing across global markets, 
is a range of contradictory behaviors. What's the consequence for us as traders or investors when we don't have a clear answer? Part of the answer comes from our tool set. We all have a group of favorite tools that we like to use in the market, just as this woman's collection of shoes. They all fill the same purpose, but only particular types of shoes are relevant to particular types of events. You wouldn't wear this shoe, a running shoe, to a fancy ballroom. You wouldn't wear one of these to office work. So we have to look at our tool set and choose which ones we're going to use. Now, I prefer to use always a guppy multiple moving average. Again, it's in Metastock because it helps us to understand the way that investors and traders are thinking. I need to know that. I need to know the strength and stability of the trend. Here, we can see that it's a very strong trend because it's well supported by investors. That means that we could buy with confidence when the market pulled back. We could be confident that the trend was going to continue. We also use a trader's ATR. Now, this is a new tool in Metastock. It captures the volatility of price behavior. It's based on Wilder's ATR, but the display that we use is different. Key factor, if we are going long, what we're looking for is the long side ATR to cross above the short side ATR. And then the value of the ATR is used as a stop loss. Once it's closed below the value of the ATR line, the trader's ATR, then the trade is closed. You'll find that in the drop down menu on Metastock, and there are some notes on how to use it. It also applies to index trading and to Forex trading as well. And what we like to do is we have a confirmation combination. So we're looking for the GMMA relationship to tell us that the trend has changed. We're looking for confirmation from a downtrend line with closes above that to indicate that the trend has changed. Then we're looking for a crossover of the long side ATR and the short side ATR to confirm. And this gives us an entry area. Now, two things. First, this does not apply to every stock. No indicator does. We only apply this to stocks where the stocks are compatible with this technique. How do we know it's compatible? We test this against historical data going back for the last 12 months. If it gives reliable signals, then we can apply it going forward in the future with confidence. This is the combination that we use to identify fast trend breakouts because that's what's required in this current market. This market is about risk and managing risk. And in the brief time that's remaining, I'm going to give you a very brief rundown on risk. And I know that Harry's going, the, who follows me, is going to give you a much more detailed explanation. But these are the tools that I use in terms of risk. First, we take our broad range of stocks, use a meta stock exploration, narrow that down to 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 stocks. But then we have to run that through our indicator groups to find out which ones we're going to reject and which ones offer buy opportunities. My preference always is to use an eyeball. If it's not clearly developing an uptrend, if it's not a clear breakout, then get rid of it. Because out of the 50 stocks in that stock pool, we only want the best opportunities. So if it's not clear and it's not obvious, dump it. The danger is in these types of markets is that we lose touch with the market. And we know we're losing touch with the market when we apply previously successful trading techniques and the trades don't work out. Now, sure, some trades are not going to work out no matter what we do. But when the return rate, the success rate is dramatically less than it has been in the past, it tells us we're out of touch with the market and we need 
to step back to modify what we're doing so that it becomes compatible with the new market conditions. If we are going to stop the market stealing our profits, then we have to lock the door to catch the thief. We have to be particularly active on executing our stop loss conditions. We cannot afford to let losses run in this environment because the market will kill you. It's the key difference between this confused market and the clear bullish markets that we've had in previous years. Because when we trade, we can have, for instance, a 60% success rate. In other words, six out of our 10 selections deliver profitable trading results. But that doesn't mean that's going to happen on a consistent basis. Our overall return can be consistent, but the occurrence of those winning trades isn't consistent. So each of the red squares represents a losing trade. Each of the white squares is a winning trade. Which is the best return? The top line, the middle line, line number five, line number six. This line doesn't look good. It's got a whole lot of red in a row. This one's pretty ugly. This one's also ugly. So maybe it's one of these others. The answer is that each of these lines has exactly the same win ratio, win loss ratio, 60%. The difference is that the losing trades are clumped in some cases and not clumped in others. This is the one where we're probably at at the moment, where we're using old techniques that are not compatible with the current market. We're using old techniques that are out of touch with the market. And when we change those techniques, not the tools, when we change the application of those techniques, then we can be consistently successful. It's still 60% success rate over the same number of trades, but they clump differently. So how do we do it? How do we improve our trading in this environment? The most important way that we do it is by using mechanical advantage in the same way that using two pulleys a set of pulley blocks rather than one pulley gives us a mechanical advantage that allows us to lift heavier weights. So we take here, for example, a base set of returns. All of them deliver a 60% success rate. But we can change the overall portfolio return lifted from 11.69% to 38.96% simply by limiting our stop loss to 2% of total trading capital. This gives us a mechanical advantage. It's easy to lift our returns from the same number of trades and the same success rate by limiting our loss. On the other hand, if we try to lift our success rate to 70%, which is pretty difficult, sounds easy, but it's pretty difficult to lift it from 60 to 70. Remember. Most industry funds have a success rate of around 51 to 52%. In other words, just a fraction above 50% of their trades, of their investments are successful. Here, we're looking at 60%. Trying to lift from 60 to 70%, that takes you into market wizard territory. Pretty hard. And the change in return is very small. You get the best results, the best mechanical leverage from your existing trades, not by improving your trading, but by improving your stop loss. We have to be very careful that the guest does not take over as host, that the losing trades don't take over our total portfolio performance. That's where the guest, because every trade, every investment is a guest in our portfolio. If we allow those losing trades to take over, because we don't sell them, then our total portfolio returns will be dramatically reduced. So we have to capture a thief before he gets away. That means taking profits quickly 
We can't allow individual stocks to destroy our portfolio performance. We must not allow the guests to take over as a host. And we do that by making sure that the risk in a trade should not be more than 2% of the total trading capital. Sounds simple, but so many people misunderstand what this means. This is what it means, and it's magic. This is the real magic in the market. We assume that we've got a $100,000 total portfolio capital. That means that we're prepared to risk 2% of that capital, $2,000. Now, that doesn't mean that we only spend $2,000 on any individual stock. It means that when the trade starts to lose money, as soon as it's lost $2,000, the trade is closed. That's the 2% risk. So on a $10,000 size trade, a loss of $2,000 represents a 20% loss on the trade. Sounds terrible, but it's quite acceptable because that $2,000, that 20% loss on a $10,000 trade is only $2,000, 2% of total trading capital. On a $20,000 trade, it's a 10% loss on the trade. On a 30K trade, it's 6.7%, 40K, it's 5%. When you assess your trades, you don't assess the loss on the trade. Each of these trades is equally as successful, even though the percentage loss on the trade varies between 20% and 5%. They are equally successful because the loss is only $2,000, which is 2% 2 of total trading capital. It is the single most important rule that you can apply in the market. It doesn't matter what trading techniques you use. It doesn't matter what tools you use. It doesn't matter what stocks you select. If you do not manage your risk effectively, you'll die. Or certainly your capital will die. We also need to be aware when we're setting a stop loss point of what our flinch or freeze point is. So it's all very good to set a theoretical loss of $2,000 on a $100,000 portfolio. But if you freeze, after a $1,500 loss, a 1.5% loss of total trading capital, then your 2% stop loss point simply won't be acted on. You must understand at what level you freeze in the market where you will not take action. And that will change over time as you become more experienced. But if you freeze at $1,500 loss in this example, then you don't really get around to unfreezing until the loss grows to a tremendous level, $10,000, $20,000 or more. So know your flinch or freeze point. Yes, we are in a confused market. Here are some resources that may help you understand more effectively how we trade in this environment, particularly our newsletter that comes out once a week. I'm sorry, I can't give you an optimistic outlook. I can't give you a pessimistic outlook. All I can do is give you a confused outlook based on what the charts are telling us. Our challenge is to trade most effectively in that confused environment. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Hey, thank you so much, Daryl. Fantastic job as always. Um, you know, I know for a lot of our listeners, it's it's early in the morning or probably about 10 a.m. Uh, for me, it's starting to get late and you've helped wake me up. You know, I'm, I'm attentive to what you say. You really keep us involved. Uh, and we're thankful for having you on once again. Um, yeah, you always do such a good job. Thank you for the invitation, Bobby. Yes, of course. So here, I'll go ahead and uh, take over the presentation here. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Hi, Harry. Is that hi, you? Hi, 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 Bobby. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just going to uh, outro Daryl here and I'll uh, pass things off to you in about two minutes. Sure. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, just one moment. Um, yeah, so everyone, uh, just so that you know, to kind of touch on this again, Daryl Guppy, who just spoke, uh, Jeff, who's in the back here. Let me actually uh, turn on my webcam so you can take a look at me if you'd like. Uh, don't mind my hair, this headphones off and on. It really, really made me kind of cuckoo looking here. But uh, so Daryl Guppy, he has uh, an ATR indicator that's just fantastic that Jeff in the back was able to code uh, into our latest Metastock 18. So if you're interested in uh, utilizing his ATR indicator in Metastock, uh, all you have to do is, I mean, try it out. It's it's uh, included already within the platform, uh, and, and we're really excited to have that. Uh, also, uh, just kind of in between the speakers, I, I'd love to give a quick shout out to one of our main sponsors of today's event, Stocks and Commodities Magazine. Uh, so thanks again to them. Um, to all of you that are still on the fence about Metastock, I mean, some of the things we've touched on and you've learned today is that you can use our services to help you scan the market, uh, to test your trading ideas, to forecast probable price movements. We also have options for real-time alerts, commentaries, and signals. I mean, all of that starts as low as just $59 a month. And we're actually doing an extended trial offer that you can get right now uh, by visiting metastock.com forward slash APAC Summit 3 for 1, uh, or just jump in our chat room. It's going to be open for another hour here, uh, metastock.com slash sales chat. If you have any questions about any of the speakers or offers or things from today's event, uh, they'll answer your questions there for the next hour. Otherwise, uh, you might have to wait uh, until Monday for a live chat. Uh, but of course, we're available on email, or you can check us out on the web. Uh, also, I really want to plug the big promotion from today one more time, just because this is one of the best offers we've ever done here before. Um, the first three speakers that we had, some of our top rated partners, Steve Bigelow uh, with the Candle Profit System, we had Alex with the Go No Go, and Daniel Sunig uh, with the Power Bundle 360. I mean, normally if you're looking to get those three systems and uh, some of our premium training, you'd be looking at paying uh, just under $4,000, but with today's event, that's available for just $1,946, and it has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk option for you there. Metastock.com forward slash APAC hyphen deal to get that, or once again, the sales chat, metastock.com slash sales chat. If for some reason you're watching this later and no one's available in sales chat, it lets you leave a message and we'll get back to you. Um, so definitely go check that out. Uh, and with all of that being said, uh, yeah, I'm happy to introduce Terry. Uh, he is our latest partner here uh, with Metastock. Harry, I'm so thankful that you were uh, able to join us today, especially you know uh, with it being kind of on shorter notice. Um, I know we kind of were able to line things up just a couple of weeks ago, but we're really excited to have you here today. Um, and I guess with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the reins off to you and make you the presenter. Um, I know you might want to have me help uh, show some charts later on, and I'm happy to do that. I'll be here uh, listening in the whole time. So if you ever need help with anything, I'm your guy. Uh, but let me see if I can make you the presenter here. All right. Pop up, I believe. Is there a button that I can press to activate the camera? Uh, yeah, so if you have kind of the GoToWebinar dropdown, uh, there's a little like a little control. It has a mic at the top, which is probably green. I see the mic. So you can and hear right, me, right? So the mic works. Yep, and so right below the mic is a little like video camera, and you can click on that. <clears throat> that I don't see. Well, because I'm using a phone rather than a PC. Oh, you're you're on your phone. Okay. Yes. Oh, were you were you uh, were you planning on showing uh, like a PowerPoint or sharing your screen? Uh, that um, my partner Shomain will do. Oh, okay, perfect. So actually, I guess we want to make them the presenter. Um, yes, if you could. Thank you. So 
are they logged on right now? Yes, they are. Okay, I did see that you had two logins earlier, but I'm not seeing it right now. Jeff, are you seeing? Yes, additional... you're seeing it, correct. Oh, there we go. Very good. Well, it's not important to see my face. So uh, are you handing over to me now? Uh, yeah. Yep, it's all okay. we can see your screen now. So I'll go ahead and uh, remove thank my you. face and mute myself. Uh, but I'm here if you need help. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a wonderful thing to meet you all on a Saturday morning. It's normally at this time, I'll still be asleep because I follow markets worldwide 24 by 7. And, you know, I should be sleeping, but I'm very happy to be here today to talk about risk management on uh, how we can trade successfully. Now, to give you a little bit of uh, background, um, <clears throat> I'm a fund manager, and the way we trade is basically using a system like Matterstock, all right? Now, uh, we call it a FinTech approach to trading. To be honest, I will basically cover uh, the, uh, the ground I, I'm familiar with, uh, following through what Bobby and what Mr. Darrell Guppy has already talked about, but I'll be more uh, on a macro level in the sense that I'll be able to talk about how uh, a fund management company would be able to use the kind of tools that Bobby has explained to everybody uh, and about the tools that are already available on Metastock and how we combine all this into a, a fintech platform and at the same time utilizing many of the of the risk management principles, the stop loss principles, the take loss, uh, sorry, the uh, profit uh, taking strategies that uh, Mr. Guppy has spoken about just 10 minutes ago. Now, um, to give you a little bit more background, you can see on your screen right now that uh, there is a picture. The picture is actually of the funds that are under management by our group of companies. And that chart will show you a blue line, which is five years long. This is a five-year track record. Uh, and I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, make a make 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 uh, things look better than they are but this is the audited track record this is regulated in five countries so i cannot bullshit you even if i want to you know because i'll probably go to jail if i do that now but this uh, blue line shows you uh, a comparison against the two lines at the bottom one uh, the middle one is the s p 500 which is uh, an indication of how the stock markets perform uh, over the last five years, so we have, uh, you might say, beaten them quite handily. And the bottommost line is the performance of the uh, Barclays Hedge Fund Manager Index, which means that it is an average of many hedge fund managers put together. So, of course, it is distorted because it is an average. You might say, that the, the top performers in that average is probably very much like our own, all right? So I would say that in the last five years, we have probably be in the top 10% of all global hedge fund managers. And of course, in the average, it's also weighed down by the fact that there are many fund managers who didn't perform, who lost money. So in our case, what we have managed to uh, put together over five years is a return north of 15 percent net of all expenses net of all expenses yeah take home pay in other words and um, um that and in some of the five some of the years we have managed to do something like 25 percent so it ranges with 15 percent or 25 percent over the five-year period and this is not a um, an empty boats because we have uh, archive records to show archive audited records to show that we have done approximately 10 million trades in the last five years in other words 
we are not a long-term trader. So our track record is a collection of numerous, or shall I say innumerable, small trades, short-term trades, which is really very, very relevant to most people in this seminar because you don't want to get into a position whereby you put on the position and hope that it turns out well one year from now. I want to know that I put on a position today and it ends up well next week, you know, or tomorrow or by Friday. That is the kind of time frame that human beings psychologically can manage. If you tell me I've got a great idea that will make you a 100% in five years, I really don't care, you know. But if you tell me I can make 10% in the next two weeks, that is something I would like to know more about. So our style of trading is exactly that. Very short-term trading, very, very many trades. So in other words, we, we trade something like two, sorry, three to four times every month. In other words, the portfolio turnover is three to four times uh, a month, all right? So you might even put it down to we almost do one trade a week. So our, our favorite time horizon is a one-week horizon. Now, I must also tell you, that this track record is accomplished in the largest and most speculative market in the world called foreign exchange. Uh, <clears throat> while I personally do a lot of stock trading, uh, the, the fund that I manage or we manage with my partners uh, will focus only on foreign exchange. The reason for that is that in uh, the ways that has been discussed by Bobby and as well as by Mr. Guppy, the most, <clears throat> the best way to approach the markets is to be able to go long and short. I mean, otherwise, if you can only go long, you only have half the opportunities available for, to you. If you can go both long and short, it is far better. Now, not many stock markets enable you to go long and short. Most stock markets will allow you to only go long. Not only that, even if you can go short, all right, in the U.S. markets, there are certain restrictions, such as the optic rule. Uh, so so uh, the opportunities for going short are not as good as those of going long. As such, it is easier said than done to be able to say I go long and short at any time on the turn of a dime. The human psychology cannot take it, to be honest. All right? And trading is mostly about human emotion. You cannot go suddenly from a long orientation, uh, a bullish uh, sentiment, to suddenly going 100% the other way, or 180, 180 degrees the other way. Very, very difficult in my experience, all right? And I've been trading for 45 years, as you can see from my white hair. Now, <clears throat> so therefore, it is far easier to accomplish uh, to maximize the opportunities from our experience in the foreign exchange market. Because in foreign exchange, all right, to go long in one currency means to go short simultaneously in on the other side of the currency pair. So if you go long the dollar, you have to be short the euro. If you go long the dollar, you've got to be short the yen. So instead of saying, I go short the yen, I can say, I go long the dollar. Or if you want to go short the dollar, you can say, I can go long the yen. That makes it actually, to be honest, psychologically uh, easier for you to handle the, the, the quick change of sentiment uh, that you would need to be a successful trader. Now, the way we have done it, as I said, is a FinTech approach, which means that we build our systems on a platform like Metastock, and we allow uh, our, um, shall we say, a, a, a group of traders. Actually, our group of traders is not a small group. It's 500 uh, semi-professional traders. Many of them are just like you, uh, you know, trading for your own account. So we allow people to trade for their own account, and if they are very good, we will recruit them to join our team of uh, traders who will contribute to our fund's returns. So there are 500 people. Uh, traders, all right, on the system, all using basically, uh, I would say, mostly a technical approach, uh, and which means that they all use something like uh, Metastock. So I highly recommend what uh, Bobby 
I don't work for Metastock, by the way, but I highly recommend what Bobby has said. I mean, you will need a platform like that to be able to address all the opportunities that present themselves. <clears throat> Most importantly, in the foreign exchange market, uh, you might think, oh, there are only a few currencies. Not true. I mean, there are 200 countries in the world. Each country has a <clears throat> pairwise uh, relationship with another country. So there are actually 200 times 200, which means there are 40,000 currency pairs in the world. <clears throat> so you want to trade foreign exchange. You better have a good system to be able to track all the 400, 40,000 currency pairs. All right? That's not easy. Now, in fact, as a professional, I don't trade 40,000 currency pairs. Neither do I trade 50,000 stocks. You've got to zoom in on what you're familiar with, what you're comfortable with to do. In our case, all our 500 traders only trade approximately 25 currency pairs. All right. So we include the G7 currencies and the crosses among them. So that's about 25 uh, because we need the, the there's, there must be enough volatility to be able to make money. I mean, you don't want to buy something in like Hong Kong dollar against a US dollar and then you're stuck there for <clears throat> 25 years, you know, <laughs> which is where it has been a 7.75 or whatever for the last 25 years. So there's no point trading something like that. Or we don't even trade something like, uh, say, the Chinese renminbi against the dollar because, you know, it is contained within a very ne a narrow range uh, mostly because it is a controlled currency, all right? So we don't do things like that. But we like, you know, the euro against the dollar, the euro against the yen, the Australian dollar against the Canadian, the British pound against the Swiss franc, all of those things we trade. And besides 25 pairs, we go long and short. So if we go long the dollar, we are at the same time short the euro. But we can also go long the euro and short the dollar. So maybe we have 50 possible positions that we engage in now of our 500 traders they're all different all right some of them actually perform very well i've got a few who can generally perform at 100 percent success in other words every trade they put on they make money i'm not kidding you there are some magicians i call them all right high performers who can do 100 percent but that is not required to make money. To make money, our average, uh, shall we say, uh, trader will perform somewhere between 30 to 40% win. Now, you have heard Mr. Guppy said, 60% is a good rate. But from our own experience with 500 traders, over five years, each trading and one week horizons, we have got 10 million trades to prove. You don't even need 60% to make money. You need approximately 30-40% to be able to churn out a decent profit. Of course, you have got to be more profitable when you win uh, than you lose when you are having a bad trade. So that is one of the things I need to talk about in the course of this uh, presentation. <clears throat> now, but... Uh, uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that you don't have to be winning on every trade to make money. That is not required, all right? And if you are trying to be what I would call a good trader from our experience with uh, multiple traders over many years, all we need is somebody with a track record of 40% wins, 30% wins, but you must win more than you lose. <clears throat> Uh, on a per trade basis. The, the, in other words, the profit per trade must be greater than the loss per trade. And I guess that is only logical, right? But I cannot uh, overemphasize that thing, all right? Now, <clears throat> so to achieve the performance that we have had, well, like I said, it's audited, it's regulated, and you know, I've got the, uh, uh, by the way, this track record is based on $2.2 billion of assets under management. So it's not like I'm telling you, we have done it with 100 million or even 10 million dollars. No, it is done with 2.2 billion dollars over five years. Okay, so it's not a small fund, and it is global. I mean, we have we have got uh, <clears throat> investors from America, from Europe, from the UK, Australia, 
many parts of Asia, including Singapore, where I'm based. And my partnership is very international. I've got three American partners. I've got a German partner, blah, blah, blah. All right. So all of this uh, exists to make the fund work. And we've been doing it for five years. Now, you might, some of you may say this is pretty hard to believe. But, you know, if I'm bullshitting you, by now, after five years, <laughs> with hundreds of thousands of investors, surely somewhere in the world, somebody must have made the complaint to a regulator and say, you know, these guys are bullshitting us, uh, lock them up, you know, and I'll probably be locked up in some jail by now. Right? So, obviously, this is all factual, it's all true. And we are able to do this because we have applied uh, not magic uh, trading techniques. There's no such thing, to be honest. But we have applied it with a very strong view to good and robust risk management. And it is my job today to tell you what are the principles we use uh, in in our fintech platform to 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 uh, uh, have a very robust way of uh, managing the risk and come out with more profits than we lose. All right. Now remember, we lose the seventy to sixty percent, sixty to seventy percent of the time. In other words, when we have a trade, all right, at the time of trading, all right, until it ends, until it closes. There is a 60 to 70 percent chance that you will end up negative. Only 30 to 40 percent of the time will we end up with a profit. But obviously, the right thing we are doing is that we have pegged the take profits, the profit of each trade, to be sufficiently high so that even if 30 percent wins, we are able to make a net profit at the end of the day. All right. And if you uh, apply normal foreign exchange uh, margin. <clears throat> requirements, we are able to be uh, on top of the market. So it is not impossible to believe. Uh, not only is it seeing is believing those uh, in our audience and uh, some some among our investors, and I believe some of our investors are in the audience today. Uh, they will tell you that they have done this. They have invested with us for three, four years, and you know the experience has been rather pleasant. Now, to give you an idea, this year, all right, we are now at the end of March, first day of April today. From January 1st to now, we are already up 7.5%, okay? So we are quite happy with the performance. But, you know, 7.5% is what uh, most people deliver for an entire year, all right? And remember, in the five years that we have been operating, we never lost money. We never had a drawdown, all right? even on a monthly basis, okay? <clears throat> now, so what are our risk management principles? All right, the first thing, of course, is that <clears throat> don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have heard a thousand people tell you that throughout your life. But in our case, the way I'm going to tell you is that <clears throat> it's not just splitting up your capital into 10 different positions. I'm going to tell you that with today's digital technologies, spread your risk into a hundred positions. In other words, you've got to trade micro positions, micro uh, small lots. What do I mean by that? I give you an example, all right? <clears throat> Typically, when we take on uh, assets under management, people can give a million dollars to us. I mean, some institutions give us $10 million at a clip, right? But we don't trade each account uh, in the in in the way we receive the money, we split it up into micro accounts. So for us, our micro account is only fifteen thousand dollars, and it doesn't have to be fifteen thousand. It can be ten thousand. It can be twenty thousand. It can be thirty thousand. But it is a small number relative to the actual money under management. So let's say in our total, we have. 2.2 billion, I will tell you there are hundreds of thousands of standardized small accounts. Why do we have all these standardized small accounts? It's really simple. I mean, if you get half of them wrong, right? Or, you know, you're not at risk of losing 50% of your money. It doesn't happen like that. 
each position is very small. It's a micro position. And so with 50 different currencies, long or short, we have at any one time 50 different positions. And this is many or multiple uh, different positions are, are, first of all, different, which means that we have uh, a view on everything available in the market. All the opportunities, some of them move, some of them don't move, some of them move negatively against us. But at the end of the day, some of them, 30, 40 percent, will be in our favor. Listen, if you just toss a coin, all right, uh, you take a head, you toss a coin, and you say, I either have a head or a win, a head or a tail, all right, long or short. If you toss just a coin, you get 50 percent of them right for crying out loud, right? You don't have to be 100 percent right. Now, but if I say on a head, I make $1 and on a tail, I lose 75 cents. Then even if I get 50-50, I will be extremely happy at the end of the experiment. You know what I mean? All right. So first of all, micro positions is the main, uh, the first thing I want to tell all of you. And in today's world, don't think of putting on positions like, oh, I need to buy 100 shares. I need to buy 1,000 shares of a particular stock. Oh, I need to buy $1 million of leverage, of course, $1 million of dollar yen, or sell $1 million of Aussie against the pound. No, you don't have to do that. You can do a micro position, all right? Say in the case of stock, do one share. And if you have only enough money for 1,000 uh, shares, have 1,000 counters. All right. Now, it may sound a little bit absurd, but not really, because with the technology available today, such as through Metastore, it is quite easy to develop a strategy for each of these stocks. And you just apply a small amount of money to each of them, because at the end of the day, you don't know whether your belief that a particular stock will do well will indeed come out right or you don't know whether the screening that Bobby has demonstrated to you will come up with <clears throat> a continuing winning percentage or winning style, all right, until you get 100% wins. Don't dream of 100% wins. Dream of 30, 40% wins, but <clears throat> every time you win, you make a dollar. Every time you lose, you lose 75 cents, something like that. All right, and when you have 30, 40 percent, you'll be doing okay at the end of the day. <clears throat> now, you must have also have uh, not only many strategies. You can use MACD, you can use moving averages, you can use your own proprietary uh, uh, indicator if you want. You can go to fundamentals. Besides, you know, for our fund investors, we write daily commentaries, we write weekly strategies for our investors. <clears throat> so some people um, like that, some people don't, doesn't matter. We apply <clears throat> micro strategies to our trading and <clears throat> we do them across many products. Like I said, in our case, we have 50 different positions at any one time, <clears throat> all right? So the emphasis is that you must have small exposure to each product and to each strategy, as many as you can manage. I know it is a lot of hard work, but hey, who said trading was easy, right? It is a lot of hard work, all right? But a fintech platform such as Metastock will help you a long way. Don't try to, well, <clears throat> look at the chart and try to draw lines on it. No, that won't work in today's day and age, you know? Use computer technology to come up with the, let's say the 100 favorite robotic strategies that you should pursue and apply 100 stocks to those 100 strategies. <clears throat> so you have 100 times 100, you have 10,000 ideas, you know. With the 10,000 ideas, just take the top 100. And if you get 30% right, you'll be okay. I hope you get what I mean, all right? <clears throat> now, the other important thing that you're going to know is when I say you do 100 <clears throat> different positions on 100 different stocks with 100 different strategies. I don't mean that you bet 50% of your pot on five of these strategies, all right? 
because if those five are wrong, you're screwed. What we do is that we standardize all our positions. Every position that we have is exactly the same. In other words, if I trade a $10,000 position, every one of my 100 positions will be $10,000. Or to put it in better risk management language, the outcome of each standardized position should be about the same. For example, if position number one is expected to lose, say, 50 bucks, all right? I want <clears throat> position number two to either make or lose 50 bucks, the third one to also either make or lose 50 bucks, and you've got to scale the size of your position to produce a roughly equal P and L on each of those positions, whether it turns out to be either P or L. So, but all of them should be either plus 50, minus 50, all right? across the board across all the positions now that is very important because we should not imagine ourselves to be a george soros or a, you know a, a, a paul tudor jones right we are none of those great great stars remember we are none of those people we are just common ordinary traders all right and the rate <clears throat> we are not we are not likely to have a hundred percent a return or rather 100 percent win ratio forget about all those stuff we do i do see those 100 percent type winners but 95 percent of them are not them okay 95 percent of them are in the 30 40 percent win versus loss category so you should be in that category too on average and when that is the case you don't want the your five losers out of 100 to blow away all your capital Okay, is that simple? That's very important risk management. <clears throat> now, so standardize your uh, positioning, your your sizing, should I say. Your sizing should be standardized so that your net result of betting 100 times in a micro position or 1,000 times in a micro position will give you what I would call a probability exercise. Because if each of them are the same, that means if you do it a hundred times, you do it a thousand times, that's like tossing a coin a hundred times or a thousand times. Each either tail or tail, all right, but with the profit being greater than the loss. Now, if you think of trading, all right, across many, many instruments, many, many um, positions, many, many strategies in terms of a probability exercise you are going to be able to feel a lot more comfortable because you are not betting all, all, all your money on, uh, on a big idea, right? You don't want to do, have a hunch and bet a bunch, right? That will, <laughs> that will put you in the shithole, generally speaking. Now, how do you set, the next point that I'm going to make is how do you set the uh, take profit point versus the stop loss point. Now again, this is relative to what is your likely your, your your the portfolio of strategies and instruments that you have. All right, what is the winning ratio? For example, if you are uh, one of the better traders, you are close to fifty percent, and I agree with Daryl. If you are the fifty fifty win loss ratio, you are a super trader. Believe me. All right. If you are sixty percent, you should be in market wizards. Because normal people don't behave like that. Normal people are generally below 50%, right? And it's very, very hard to even achieve 50% win, 50% loss. And the same even with robotic strategies, automated strategies, and all kinds of newfangled uh, fintech that have been promised to you that will make you do better. Uh, you know, generally, they are not true, all right? But if you can size your trade so that the profit is, for example, at least um, one third higher than your stop loss, then I think you are in a position to benefit from the win-loss ratio of something like 40%. Now, of course, if your ratio is lower than that, you're 30%, then you've got to re reject your 
take profit in your stop loss to be maybe <clears throat> the profit is maybe 40 percent higher than your loss that is a process of experimentation which i encourage you and which i even say is a is a, a necessary thing for you to figure out all right use a spreadsheet figure out what is your winning ratio figure out what is the <clears throat> um the profit versus gain the gain versus loss ratio and you can come to a point whereby you might say to make 15 percent on the entire portfolio is more probabilistic, more mathematical, rather than uh, have a hunch and bet a bunch, right? The latter doesn't work for me. Working on a spreadsheet with all these numbers will drive you in the right direction. Now, <clears throat> there are also traditional ideas like let your profits run cut your losses short in my own personal experience all right i'm not that great right? when i see a profit i like to take it you know and it's very very hard to let profits run so the other risk management principle i want to tell you about that gives us our success is that our take profit and our stop loss uh, triggers are fixed in other words all right we set it by stops we don't even really have a stop loss set by a stop all right or oh, those of you who don't like mechanical stop you must have a a, a way in which that that uh, computer program will give you a signal so that you can physically press the button but we also have one for the take profit side in other words we treat our take profit in the stop loss just as rigorously it doesn't mean that, oh, let your profits run mean, well, when the, when the profitable trade gets going, all right, you get tempted to hold on, believing that you are smart enough to know when the profit will end or will reach its zenith. None of us are good enough to do that. It is actually more difficult to take profit than to stop loss. Trust me. Stopping loss is very easy. All right, you said a loss, that's enough pain, I'm out. But taking profit is fighting yourself. You're always greedy enough to wait. Let's wait another day. Let's wait another hour, you know? And it goes on, and that is the, the time when it turns against you. It's very hard. So the point that I'm trying to make is let your profits run is a silly idea. It's an idea that goes against human behavior. Your psychology cannot take it. I would recommend that you have a point, like a stop loss is a take profit point. It's fixed. When it reaches, you execute. Whatever happens, even if it goes out 200% more, that's it, you're out, right? And if you do that religiously, continuously, the regularity of that action will give you your 40, 50% win-loss ratio. That is how I think trading should be done. All right. In other words, our trading, uh, our success as a fund manager in trading a different commodity, especially in foreign exchange, but we can apply the same thing to different uh, commodities. We do gold, for example. We can do stocks if we want to, but you know, stocks just don't have the kind of uh, leverage. And like I said, stocks have this. Uh, uh, tendency to make shorting more difficult than going long. So we prefer foreign exchange for that reason. Now, but if you apply it religiously, then you are turning uh, individual, shall we say, uh, models or individual strategies into a portfolio of strategies and that portfolio of strategies and instruments and positions will effectively become a probability based game it's like betting against a casino if you know what your betting ratio is you can figure out a way by adjusting your uh, stop loss stop loss and your take profit adjust it to your winning ratio based on your you know a fintech platform such as metastock 
and you can figure out what kind of money you are likely to make. Make it mechanical, make it probabilistic, make it mathematical, rather than you know you have a gut feel that this will do well. I don't think that will work. All right, and like I said, if you don't have enough money, you know there's no such thing as not enough money. Nowadays, you can do micro positions. There's no such thing as one share is too small. All right, you can trade one share if you want. All right, one share can be five bucks, can be two bucks, whatever. All right. Of course, if you trade the heavy, the try to avoid all those stocks that cost a hundred bucks. You know, so with a hundred bucks, you can trade one hundred one dollar share, or you can trade fifty two dollar shares, something like that. All right. Now. The idea is to drive at consistency. You will see from our track record that I, that's still on the screen that our trading is extremely consistent. Month in, month out, we will make roughly 2% or a 30% or 40% win rate. That translates into a PL, a rate of return on capital of about 2%. Sometimes you go to 2.5% and you will take away all the expenses. We are probably at about, you know. 1.6, 1.7% net take home pay. So these are the principles that we have applied over the last few years, five years in total, all right, 10 million trades in total, over 500 traders, all right, on the mechanic, me mechanistic platform in which we archive all our data, all audited. So that's all I need to say. I mean, I mean, you know, the, our principles are not that difficult to follow. Uh, if you have taken notes, I'll be happy to answer questions after the seminar. You can contact me uh, via the Metastock platform. Or if you like, come for an even more detailed uh, presentation on what we do. We hold this probably once a month, not on this uh, particular seminar platform. We use Zoom. All you have to do is come to us. And we have people to take care of you as well. And if you actually sign up, we'll uh, be happy to provide you a free trial of our daily commentaries as well as our weekly commentaries, all free. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope it was useful. Thank you. Bobby, over to you. Okay, <clears throat> yes, great. Thank you so much. Um, you know, for being on today and for joining us and for going through all of that. Uh, you have a lot of um, good perspective there. And yeah, we appreciate having you today. And um, yeah, with that said, I'll go ahead and take over here, guys. All right. Let's see here. Oh, let me jump back into my PowerPoint. Okay, so that was Harry going over the tenets of successful risk management and trading. Um, just so everyone knows, uh, today's entire presentation is available on YouTube. Uh, we actually had to recreate the video link, so uh, but that shouldn't be an issue. If anyone wants to come back and watch this later or go back and review anything, if you're watching now, simply rewind. Uh, or if you want to watch it in the future, just metastock.com. Uh, sorry, actually, youtube.com forward slash metastock. And it's going to be, you know, one of the most recent videos in there. This was a live video that we did today. Uh, so you can look under the live video tab uh, to see the history in there. Uh, once again, just want to give a shout out to Stocks and Commodities Magazine for sponsoring the event. Uh, and also, uh, you know, of course, wanted to touch on, you know, all of the presenters from today uh, utilizing Metastock uh, as one of their preferred platforms. And with Metastock here, as you've learned from many of the speakers, you can use our platform to help you scan the markets, to test your trading ideas, uh, to forecast probable price movements. Uh, all of that and more. And it starts as low as just $59 a month, or you're looking at uh, $210 a month uh, to $265 plus for Metastock real time with the Zenith platform. And uh, if you really want to take advantage of the best offer we've had today, that offer is for a bundle of 
uh, many of the different uh, services from all the speakers you saw today. We got everyone to agree to do just a great offer where you can get everything uh, that includes the candle profit system, go, no, go, power bundle 360. All of these are amazing systems that can really help you to perform better. And if for some reason they don't, uh, you know, no problems. We'll work that out with you. And and if you didn't, if you don't like it for any reason, just let us know uh, and return it. But we're so confident that you'll like it, uh, that we're giving you this offer to save almost 50%. Plus we're including three months of premium subscription to learn Metastock. And you can get a trial of Metastock too, if you need it. You're looking at just 1946 for the full package. You know, for about the next, 15 minutes or so, we still have someone available in sales chat tonight, metastock.com forward slash sales chat. So you can go ahead and jump in there and ask any questions. They can stay a little bit late. They're happy to talk to you as long as you go into the chat room within the next 15 minutes. They can answer any of your questions about any of today's presentations. If you are interested in just a single system or maybe in just trying out Metastock, uh, you know, you can jump in there too. Uh, or for anyone watching the recording uh, or that you know might have to run, but wants to come back and take advantage of this offer, either the sales chat room or metastock.com forward slash APAC hyphen deal. We'll go ahead and just um, show you guys that real quick. If you pull that up, that's also going to give you an option to watch the recording right here. Um, if you hit play on here, you'll see there I am, but you can go through and find all the different speakers throughout here. It gives you a little bit more information on what we had to offer. Uh, if you want to get that summit pack, it's available right here to order now. Uh, you can also sign up for a trial of Metastock. Also, if you just want the trial and not the deal, there's an option for that here too. So I wanted to make sure you were all aware. Uh, thanks so much for sitting in with us. I, I guess I am still available if you guys have questions. Uh, happy to answer those. Um, but I think all of our speakers did such a great job today. And, and so we're thankful for having them all here as well as, of course, we're thankful for having you here uh, to join us too. Uh, it looks like maybe there is a question. Let's see here, pop this out. Yes, thank you back to all of you as well. And you know, I think that's gonna round things up for the night. So, all right. Well, everyone enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy your weekend. Um, and you know, if you haven't yet, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can catch future content like this. We appreciate it. It also helps us a lot, um, you know, just by you sharing that uh, you liked a different video or, or subscribing to watch in the future. So uh, click that button and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.